You know what? Screw it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so we're finishing up this trilogy today. I don't even know if like the audio is fine, like the, the music audio, I guess. Okay, um, we're finishing up the trilogy today. And it's gonna be a hoot, hopefully, anyways. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe we were already here. Like... This is it, after this. There's no more, no there is, there is, there is way more. <laughs> I remember Littlest Pet Shop. They have magnets, I can literally place it on my microphone. It's perfect. Hold on, wait, it's a bit, it's a bit far away from my mouth. Hey. Oh my god. So, yeah, last time we got to play as Edgeworth for a little while. Hi! <laughs> Which was a lot of fun. Yes, I am so ready to finish this. You know what? Let's just fucking just get right into it. Because... Yes, let's fucking go. Got my cheat sheet open. We're fucking ready to go. No! <laughs> I see where we where we are, and I'm not happy about it. I'm still up at this hour, reading through the trial record of a certain case. It was the first case my mentor, Mia Fey, had ever handled in a court of law. So this is like where we started the last case. Not this one, but the other one. Was there no other hospital? No, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> the horrifying truth that I refuse to accept is holding me hostage here within its pages. Dahlia Hawthorne. What I have read, I don't want to believe. What is written here? This isn't the Dahlia I knew. After falling into Eagle River, I was somehow miraculously saved. But I ended up catching a cold that seemed to knock me around the world and back. I feel dizzy, my ears are ringing, my throat burns, and my head is on fire. But I will recover. I have to recover by this afternoon. I have to meet with the most ill-tempered witness imaginable. But I know that he will be able to help me with them, somehow. The badge, I'm sorry, but like, the badge though. Huh. Right, are you sure you're well enough to be doing this? You still look a little green in the face. Maybe Viridian is in artist speak. Actually, my fever has gone down quite a bit. It's your temperature now. Only 102.2 degrees, nothing to worry about. I want to say that's like 38 degrees. <laughs> because any any more and you would be way too sick. Hold on, let me actually check. Thirty-nine! Thirty-nine! Bro, you still have a fucking fever! <laughs> anyway, I read today's trial record. You weren't bad, Edgeworth. Pretty impressive, despite the circumstances. You're not in the clear yet. Did he get it back? Did it? He did. Okay, cool. The main point of contention tomorrow is going to be the murder weapon. Yeah. In the end, the Shichishto did not l deliver the f deadly blow. Which means there must be another sword hiding out there that we don't know about. Another sword, huh? Don't you worry about a thing, pal. I'll dig up the murder weapon myself or I'll eat my coat. Thanks again, Edgeworth. I'll handle things from here. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is probably for the best. Actually, I was thinking about paying the old precinct a little visit. There's something I want to look into. 
And that is our client's background, naturally. You mean Iris, sir? I have a feeling that we met before. All I want is confirmation, one way or the other. And since I probably won't be getting that from you. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. I bid you adieu, adieu right? Take care. I guess I should get moving too. Why? Do you need to be somewhere? Yeah, I gotta get to work on this bridge, pal. I'm rigging something up so we can get across to the other side. Oh, that's right. Maya is still stuck at the, at, over at the inner temple. But don't you worry, pal. As soon as it's all set, you'll be the first to know. Thank you, Gumshoe. No problem, pal. Just try not to give me the cough of yours, okay? Alright, I'm off. Hang in there, Maya. I'll get you out, I promise. But in the meantime, I've got to continue collecting evidence. Please, it's for art's sake, I swear. There's only one guy I know who could be this persistent and high strung. I'm talking about the hero in here, the hero in my in my book. It'll make you famous. Ugh. Enough. A fool's fools <laughs> A fool's fool, fool's fools who foolishly accept the foolishness of a fool's fool. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Phoenix Wright? Huh? Me? Wait a second. I I know you. You're um ow! Your your reflexes and mind need to shape up. My brain's frying like a sunny side up and you uh, sunny side up. And you want to grill me over a name? Frenzy, you can't do that! Even as we speak, Nick's on the brink of death. Or so I'm told. With the dead horse. Isn't that one of your American sayings? No, it's not. And I'm not on the brink of anything. Come on, Nick. Tell her, would you? Tell her she needs to model for my new picture book, Francis Whippity Whip Trip. Before you ask me to model, learn to give at least semi-coherent testimony. Before that, you'll have to learn how to live a semi-coherent life, Larry. I don't care what anyone says, I'm telling the truth. I saw what I saw. She flew, I'm telling you. Whoosh, just like that dude with the red underwear. I don't think I'm gonna forgive you guys when you come crawling back to apologize. <sighs> Off he goes. Off he do go. Wait, did I? Okay. Just gotta. Ah, oh, shit. I turned down the fucking volume. Oh my god. Let me just plug in my phone real quick. Yeah. Huh. It's amazing how little has changed with you in the past year, Phoenix writes. Have you been in Germany all this time? That's right. Extending my perfect win record, naturally. Oh joy, sounds like she hasn't changed a bit. Has it really been a year since we first met? I am Francisca von Karma, the prodigy. I see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. Francisca was born and raised in Germany and became a prosecutor at the age of 13. Her father was the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. He had a perfect win record for 40 long years. But now, he's gone from this world. Wait, he fucking died? <laughs> I know he was in prison, but like you said, he's gone from this world, so he had to have died, right? Don't tell me you still hold a grudge against me. Because of what happened to your father. Phoenix right. you will fall, be fall before me. This, I promise. But it will be for my sake, 
not my father's. Are we clear? Yes, Crystal. In truth, I was shocked. I came back to America with the intention of defeating you. Instead, it was my little brother who was leading the defense. Edgeworth. Come to think of it. Edgeworth was pulled into being a prosecutor by Manfred von Karma as well. Miles Edgeworth taught me something very interesting, you know. He said this case has a, spe has a special significance to you. Because it does. And that's precisely why I am here. Your personal involvement will make crushing you into teensy weensy pieces all the better. It's probably the fever, but... She's so openly hostile that it's almost kind of cute. How? No smirking. No whipping the sick. And that foolish fool. Doing such a foolish favor for such a foolishly foolish fool. Much worse. Make no mistake, Phoenix Wright. I came here for one thing and one thing only. To pulverize you. It's not like I thought you were here to bring me some cold killer X, you know. I went over the whole case file on the flight over. You read the whole thing? Yes, every last word of every last sentence of every last paragraph. All the ridiculous things you did made it a very interesting read, you know. Attempting to cross a burning bridge? Did you even consider the dangers? No. The only thought in my mind was I have to get across. A fool who doesn't think is more foolish than a fool who foolishly thinks. Gongshu said he'd let me know once the bridge was repaired. Maya, she's gotta be okay. I just know it. Plus, I need to ask her about what really happened at the inner temple that night. Move to the main hall. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Who this? That was one long sigh. It's a sigh. Oh, it's bikini. Um, sister bikini. My, 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 I didn't know you were here. How are you doing? <laughs> oh. Um, you don't have to pretend to be in a good mood for my sake. I, I suppose I've made a terrible mess of things, haven't I? I let Mr. Galise die and then there's Iris as well. Mr. Galise? Now that I think about it. Hmm. And there's an acolyte stuck at the inner temple. And that poor little girl has gone missing too. That little girl. Y you don't mean pearls, do you? Yes, I'm afraid I do. She hasn't been seen since the morning after the incident. Pearls? She's missing? Why didn't anyone tell me about this? I must be getting old. I think I've seriously lost faith in myself. <laughs> Are you talking about your performance at the trial today? You believe me, don't you? I'm not a liar. I would never lie. I know what I saw. I saw Iris pull that sword from Mr. Galise's body that night. I'm certain of it. At least I was until this morning. I don't see any psyche locks, so she must be telling the truth. Um, so why are you so unsure of yourself all of a sudden? You know that artist who testified after me? So I was flying, her white hood fluttering. I felt like I might start flying myself. When I saw that man testify so fervently about something so impossible, I started to wonder if I had acted just like him when I was on the witness stand. I wouldn't take that guy too seriously. He's an artist, but all he draws is trouble and nothing else. If both Bikini and Larry are telling the truth, that can only mean one thing. They both didn't see what they think they saw. On the night of the incident, you met Iris at the inner temple, is that correct? That's right. I'm sure it was Iris. But Iris claims she was in her room in Hasakura Temple. I know I shouldn't have come back here that night. But because you did, Maya is stuck all by herself at the inner temple. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. The drafts in that place are nothing to shake a stick at. Winter is especially bad. I'll bet. The training hall looks like it's about to fall down any second. Eagle Mountain has always been prone to earthquakes, just so you know. Uh, earthquakes? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if the next big one levels the training hall. Gotta get Maya out of there. Fast. 
But still, there's really no need to worry. There, that area on the other side of Dusky Bridge is isolated like an island. It's like an island? How so? Well, the only thing on that side of the bridge is the inner temple. No one lives out there. And it's surrounded on all sides by the river of the for or the forest. I, I see. So a criminal would be trapped should they choose to flee in that direction. And as long as the bridge is out of commission, he or she will have to stay there. That means Maya could be stuck out there with a murderer and with no way of escape either. Oh dear! Yes, I suppose it does! Mm, please, come shoo. Get that bridge up faster. I'm curious about a few things if you don't mind answering some questions. Oh, do you need to know my measurements for your investigation or something? No, 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 no. I want to know a little more about the victim, Miss Elise Dunim. I'm afraid I don't know her waist size or her bust size for that matter. No, no, I'm wondering why she came to stay in a place like this to begin with. I mean, she told us herself that she wasn't here for spiritual training. My, 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 you make it sound like this place is some sort of dump, Mr. Wright. Mr. Galise was here to soak up the natural beauty of Eagle Mountain, if you must know. There. You did it again, Sister Bikini. I noticed you always refer to Miss Dunim as Mystic Elise. Oh? Yes, now, why is that? After all, she is not here as an acolyte. We address all our visitors as Mystic. It makes their experience feel authentic. And anyway, she is older than me. You must respect your elders, you know? How do you know that? How can you say for sure that she's older than you? Mystic right? <laughs> oh my god, they all fucking have five. Ugh. Hmm. It seems Miss Elise Dunim was no ordinary visitor after all. And there's Pearls. She was with Miss Dunim on the evening of the murder. And now she's vanished. It's all gotta be connected somehow. Why did Pearls have to get mixed up in this mess? Please, Mr. Wright, I know you're worried, but try to keep it together. Oh, man. My head's throbbing so bad, it's killing me. Pearls, she was with Miss Dunim on the night of the murder, remember? Yes, but I have a temple to run, you know. I was busy preparing for the training. I'm not happy with... Yeah. I didn't see the little darling even once after we'd finished dinner. The murder. It didn't take place right in front of her innocent eyes, did it? According to the detective, she hasn't turned up at her home either. Come on, keep calm. There's one place left where Pearls could be. She just has to be there. Come on, Gumshu. Tell me you'll be done with the repair soon. This is where Sister Bikini witnessed the incident. It's hard to imagine she was lying on the stand, so... Maybe there are some clues that have yet to be found. There isn't anything more. Hey! What was that jarring, inconsiderate, inconsiderately loud yell? So this is where you've been. Keep it nice and warm, I see. Detective! Have you finished the bridge? Yeah, I did. I told you that, you know. Well, 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 then I'll come along with you and- Sorry, ma'am. No unauthorized entry. Access is restricted to people involved in the case. What was that? I'm involved, aren't I? You couldn't get much more involved than me. Well, yeah, but that's not what I mean- Ah! It's been a while, Scruffy. It, it, it's- It's Miss Funkama! Sister, please leave the investigation to me. My, my, my. Well, you certainly seem to have everything under control. I am on your side. I won't do anything you don't want me to. As you work to pin the guilt of, on Iris. What are you daydreaming about, Phoenix Wright? Ow, that hurts, you know. Silence. I, Francisca von Karma, will personally guide you through your investigation. 
He wears gumshoe charger for prayers. He's a detective, not an engineer. He's good at arts and crafts. You know this. <laughs> he has to craft up the bridge. <laughs> so you will follow me. She's not seriously going to follow me around, is she? <laughs> With duct tape and glitter glue. Yep, yeah, exactly. Things have certainly become a lot more hectic than before. They must have commenced with the investigation. Oh, Mr. Nick! Voice! Pearls! Mr. Nick! Mr. Nick! So you were here ever since that night. I was so lonely. I thought I was going to die. When I woke up in the morning and saw that dusky bridge was gone, I I realized I was all alone. Why didn't anyone try to like yell over? Like, hey! Pearls! Are you there? Like <laughs> do they <laughs> She was all alone? It must have been very trying for you, little girl. Yeah. I am Francisca von Karma, the prodigy. There's no need to worry now that I'm here. Hey, yo, Pearl, are you alive? You're the prosecutor who was so mean to Mystic Mile last year. Well, I, I don't like you. You're nothing but a little girl without your whip. <laughs> Called up by a nine-year-old. Wait, is she nine in this, actually? Mystic Mile didn't do anything wrong, but you were so mean. I'll never forgive you. Yeah, she is nine, still. I... I... It looks like Pearl's words are getting under her skin. Yeah, why are you whipping me? I didn't even say anything. You didn't have to. The smile on your lips gave, it, gave you away. Anyway, Pearls, weren't you with Maya? Huh. I'm sorry. It's, it's all my fault. Huh? What are you talking about, Pearls? I... I... Hey, wait, Pearls! She just ran off. Ow! That was cruel, Phoenix Wright. To make a little girl cry like that is inexcusable. What's that all about? Pearls acting like that. It's giving me the creeps. I guess I better take another look around since I finally got a chance. A specialist in something about this place seems different from two days two days ago, yeah. Incinerator. There's a weird smell coming from that incinerator. The door is also open. Almost like it's begging me to look inside. Well, well. Let's see what stunning clue is concealed in here, shall we? Huh? It's empty. Francisca is 19. She's the same age as Maya. How naive of you, Phoenix writes. But it's a bit strange, don't you think? Francisca von Karma? You seem to remember. There was snow on this incinerator the first time I saw it. In other words, someone's been using it to burn something recently. Listen, Phoenix writes. It's impertinent to call people by their full name. I was only copying you. What's wrong? Why are you so quiet? Maya, she was supposed to be in here training. Yet it appears she's nowhere to be seen. What's that? That strange lock. It wasn't there two days ago. This whole room is really giving off some strange vibes. Hmm, in this store. When I was here two days ago, that weird lock wasn't on it. And those chains. It's almost as if they're guarding something inside that cabin. 
I've never seen a lock quite like this before. I have. I've seen locks and chains just like this before. They look just like the ones that, that, are, that guard this person's secret during a psyche lock. I wonder if this lock is guarding something too. Dark secrets in a dark cavern. What do you think this yellowish poster is, Phoenix writes? It's a scroll, not a poster. It's a picture of a woman who's actually... Hold on, wait. A woman. I don't see any woman here. There's a different atmosphere in this room since the last time I was here. No, it's not a different atmosphere. It's a different smell. It's gravy. What's the matter? This scroll, it's been completely covered in gravy. Ha, huh, yes, there is a very appetizing smell in the air. But, gra but gravy is a type of sauce. So when you run out of pain, you Americans use gravy as a substitute, I see. No, no one does that. For starters, it stinks. This must be the gravy that we have with the roast on the night of the incident. But why would anyone do this? Why this scroll? What took as long, who this? I thought even you'd manage to get here faster than this. Ah, Mr. Trite. Makes sense. Prosecutor Godot, I didn't know you were here. Prosecutor? How come you didn't show up at the trial today? Huh. I could ask you the exact same question. Huh? But I was... I had a cold, so... I have something slightly more important than a common cold to deal with. The importance of which is something you have no hope of ever understanding. Enough. I believe I have the measure of you. You are the very worst kind of prosecutor. What could be more important than a trial? This wild mare trite. This is Miss Von Karma. She was acting... She was the acting prosecutor in your absence today. Ha. Huh. Well, I guess I owe you one then. You can go now, princess. It's time for the big boys to take the reins. Just who do you think you are? This case is my... Hey, Philly. Know your role and shut your mouth. I can't stand women like you. Gado, please. <laughs> I'm only going to say this once, Lady Von Whipping Bar. <laughs> you really said go home. Do your homework. <laughs> Phoenix, right? Why are you hitting me for? Huh, you deserve more cracks of the whip than that, trite. W what? You still don't get it, do you? You don't realize that you've set something in motion that you'll never be able to undo. There's something different about Godot today. I'm getting such a strong sense of something from behind that mask of his. Is it anger? Or is it sorrow? You had some important business and that's why you weren't in court, huh? What was it? I told you once before. Perhaps you don't remember return from the depths of hell to do battle with you. You see, Trite, I've experienced something most have not. Death. You died? Well, of course, being extradited from hell is a tedious affair. The meticulous regeneration and adjustment of all your internal organs is, well, let's just say modern medicine allows us all to live to a ripe old age. Even someone like me. So, you mean that mask you wear is this ugly device? I promise it's not a fashion statement, my unenlightened friend. Without this, I can't see your frequently dumbfounded face. I... I didn't know. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. Still, I keep this worn-out piece of junk of a body going with the regular servicing. I'm sorry, but... You say you experienced death. How is that possible? What's happened? I mean, you... You can't be, like, announced dead and still wake up. It's it's very possible. <laughs> Why don't you ask him? Huh? M me? Yeah, that's right. You. 
You should know all about it. You know when my life ended. And who ended it for me. Well, Phoenix Wright, do you? I, I don't know what he's talking about. Although, to be honest, I do feel a little tug at the corner of my memory. I think I do know about how Godot was killed. It will all become clear in due time. Isn't that right, Trite? Earlier, you said you've done something I can- I, I've done something I can never undo. What did you mean by that exactly? The inner temple here on the side of, the, of Dusky Bridge is an isolated island. That's what Sister Bikini said too. And I wonder, Trite. Do you know what the police are doing here today? What do you mean? They're searching. Searching for any trace of an acolyte who went missing. M missing? As leader of the search party, I can tell you this with absolute certainty. Maya Faye is not on this side of Dusky Bridge. Huh? But, but that's impossible! She came here that night and- I won't say it again. The chances of her being here are nil. Excluding, of course, one very unique place. One? Where is that? The sacred cavern, the entrance of which we are standing at right now. This is the only place that the search party has yet to explore. Again, just fucking yell in there. Hope for a response. I don't fucking know. So they haven't searched that cavern yet, huh? Be aware, though, that the temperature inside frequently falls below freezing. Um, that is factually wrong. That is factually wrong. Inside of a cavern, it never gets any colder than, like... What is it? Four degrees Celsius? Well, I guess it depends, but like... I don't think it would get any colder than four degrees. Well, now you know. <laughs> Even if she were in there, the chances of her being found alive are slim at best. Nah, she's fine. <laughs> no! Which means, Trite, that you sent Maya Faye to her death. You fool! If that's the situation, why aren't you in there with a search party right now? You must have blinded us on my equestrian angel. Don't you see the big lock in chains? It's a trick lock. I'm making preparations to open it as we speak. Can't you just cut the chains? Well, Trite, once again, a woman dies because of you. Once again? What are you talking about? Don't tell me you've forgotten. It was only two years ago, after all. When the last unfortunate woman died because of you. Because of me? Do you know who that was? It was Maya Fey's sister. That's right, Mia Fey. M Mia? You killed her. No, we've been through this. It was red white, alright? It wasn't Phoenix. <laughs> it had nothing to do with Phoenix, really. <laughs> no, that's not how it was. It was two years ago. Mia Fey was pursuing someone, a man. But she bit off more than she could chew. She made a very dangerous enemy. Yeah, that's one case I'll never forget. But I got that guy, personally. Sure, Miss Faye's murderer was caught. But that won't bring her back. Yeah, neither will, will your fucking bullshit. <laughs> well, no, but you were with her at the time. You and no one else. It was your responsibility. You should have protected her. I... When he showed up, she was already fucking dead. If anything, this is Maya's fault then. If you if we go by your fucking logic. <laughs> Godot, please. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You say Mia Fate was your teacher. Well then, I'd say you've learned nothing, Trite. You robbed her of her life, and now... <sighs> you've let her sister suffer the same fate. I... I haven't sentenced Maya to death. No! What is this peculiar looking lock? Why don't we just break it open? It will be a simple matter of... I'm afraid we can't do that. This area has always been prone to earthquakes. Cut the damn chains! The chains are fine! This is just like the fucking first Saw movie! <laughs> but like, reverse. Like, there are several 
things you can fucking you can fucking break. You can break the chains, and you can also break like the bolt cutters. Do not cause an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> God. Sometimes these people are so fucking dumb. I wonder how they survive. But like, I don't know if you watched Saw or not. But like in the first, in the first movie, there are like two people that are are like chained down to like pipes and stuff, like old rusted pipes, by the way. And they uh, they're chained by their by their ankle. So at some point, they find this saw. And uh, how fitting. And then they try to like cut their way out of the chains. But it's like the pipes are literally rusted. Cut the damn pipes! <laughs> but no, these bitches would rather just cut off their foot. Like, bitch! <laughs> Can we fucking not use your head at least a little bit? I know it's like a stressful situation and your brain doesn't function properly. I know. I've been in I've been in a situation like that. <laughs> but <laughs> God. The repeated tremors have weakened the foundations of the training hall. Any excessive force used to break the lock open would well, let's just say the inner temple in the sacred cavern would be would be a thing of the past. You can cut away the chains. <laughs> I would think twice before cutting up my own foot. <laughs> Very well. Then dare I suggest the obvious solution of opening it with the key. The chains! <laughs> Why does someone take the chains? <laughs> huh. Sure, just show me where the keyhole is in this trick lock. There's no keyhole? That's right. An interesting puzzle, huh? The person who set this lock is the only one who can open it. And who was it? Simple. The accused. What? Iris? When an acolyte when an acolyte undergoes training inside the sacred cavern, the attending sister is responsible for locking the entrance. Obviously, the night of the murder was no exception. Maya Fane was to train in there. Sister Bikini did mention it a number of times now that, now that I think about it. <laughs> Hi, I'm 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 okay. <laughs> also, thanks for dropping by. Really appreciate it. She said that Iris was left in charge of supervising the early stages of the training. So Iris, the accused, is the only one who can open this lock. I've arranged for her to be brought here now. Iris is the only person who can open this lock? I hope she gets here soon. Hang on in there, Maya. Get you out. So, I should be getting back to work. Wait, Godot! How sure about Maya are you? There's no doubt in my mind. She's in the sacred cavern somewhere. It's the only place she could be. You better start praying. You better pray that friend of yours brings the accur accused back here soon. Edgeworth? There's an uptright. There's only one thing I want to say to you before I go. I'll never accept you. Never. I never ask you to! <laughs> You should choose your friends more carefully, Phoenix writes. That's what everyone says. Looks like I don't have much of a choice. I guess I'll just have to do what I can for now. I mean, you could also cut away like some of the sp sprinkle sprinklers. I mean, like what what are they called? Like the the, the things. <laughs> like in the door. F you could just fucking. Remove the door entirely and it would still be fine. <laughs> and you could like crawl under the lock. Like there are so many solutions to this. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. Should I or shouldn't I? Sounds like someone's talking to himself. <laughs> Are they so blind? <laughs> but where is that coming from? Yeah, I guess I better wash that off. That's what I'll do. No, but I can't do that. I'm a detective. Ah, oh, my brain. This is driving me nuts. Ah! Is something troubling you, Scruffy? Please don't whip me like that all of a sudden, sir. It was merely a simple greeting. A friendly tap on the shoulder. With my whip. So what's up, Gumshrew? Is something on your mind? How'd you know, pal? Perhaps you were trying to decide if you wanted to wash that off or not. How'd you know, sir? Oh, yeah, I nearly forgot. You can't go through that little gate there, okay? Um, you mean the one that says no entry on it? I am um, kind of already snuck in there. Is he trying to be clever or something? So what's behind this, Gruffy? Huh? A kind of garden-like garden. A garden? Yeah. Anyway, it's under investigation right now, so keep out. I'm not telling you. I'm asking you, pal. You got me? Isn't it normally the other way around? <laughs> we'll see you later. So, shall we adjourn this garden, Phoenix Wright? Of course. What else would we do? I really want to know what Gumshoe was thinking of washing off. There's a strange feeling in the air. I wonder what it is. Strange feeling? Forget about that. What's that strange writing on the stone lantern? Ah! What are you doing here, sir? I thought I said you can't come in here. Don't you know, Scruffy? A phone karma will always show up wherever there is a clue. And there are plenty of clues to be found here. B but... So how's the inner temple investigation going? We have the best forensic team in the world working the place. Forensic team? And what was the outcome of the scientific study? Nothing, scientifically speaking. The place is as clean as a whistle. That's simply not good enough, Scruffy. Do you think I'll let you get away with that? Uh-oh. Well, there were a couple of things that bothered me when I first got here, sir. But that stone lantern and the surrounding area that's not covered in snow, correct? It looked kind of fishy to me, you know, scientifically, scientifically speaking. So I got the lab boys to look them over. The results were... It's kind of hard to say, actually. I guess I better look into them myself. Um, about Maya. Oh, um, did Mr. Godot tell you yet? Yes, we heard. He's got a search party out looking for her, but there's nowhere else she could have disappeared to on this side of Dusky Bridge. All we can do is wait for Mr. Edgeworth to get here, pal. Edgeworth? He's escorting Iris, the defendant over here. We'll have to wait, since she is the only one who can open the door to the sacred cavern. Well, I think Mr. Edgeworth wants to talk to you about something too, pal. Huh? I wonder what it is. Just don't be expecting any good news when you talk to him. When I spoke to him, Mr. Edgeworth sounded so down, I felt like I was drowning. Sounds... pleasant. What the heck is that? Uh-oh. You spotted it, huh, pal? Are you kidding me? It couldn't be more obvious. It says... Maya. Yeah, before you ask, it's written in blood. You will answer all our questions now, Scruffy. Without exception. Y yes, sir. Well, this is odd. There's no snow on the ground here. Edge is so sad he needs to talk to Phoenix. And it's an almost perfect rectangle. It couldn't have happened naturally. Yes, it appears as though someone has carefully cleared away the snow. No doubt it was you, wasn't it, Scruffy? Uh, no, it wasn't me, sir. It was already like that when my men and I got here to start the investigation. If it wasn't the police, then who did it? Well, yeah, there's something I need to tell you. Just between the three of us, okay? What is it? 
it's top secret. You can't tell anyone, got it? Understood. When I was a kid, I got knocked out of the local wrestling contest, you see. I was so disappointed, I just picked up my mouth guard and cried all the way home. Man, I got in so much trouble when I left, the left it on the couch. Is that it? That's it. Ugh! Whoever cleared the snow away must have had a reason. Though I can't even begin to imagine what that reason could be. There's a charm or something poking out from the snow. It looks pretty old. There's a leather cord tied to it too. Apparently it belonged to the victim. To Miss Elise de Nîmes? Yeah, there was a broken leather cord around the lady's neck. The ends of the cords found on both the victim and on this charm match exactly. Sounds to me like... This little trinket is going to be my ticket to getting some very big answers. Maya, so these letters are written in blood? Yeah, what's worse, it's, it's the victim's blood. Huh? This is Mr. Nim's blood? We haven't done a detailed analysis yet, but it's looking that way, pal. Hmm, most interesting. Phoenix Wright, I presume you know, don't you? Why Maya's name is written upside down. You know what? That was really bothering me too. But I just came up with the answer, the re result of my own special gumshoe investigation. Really? Do tell. Well, on the night of the murder, that stone lantern was upside down. <clears throat> anyway, there's really only one logical explanation to this mystery. Miss Elise de Nim wrote these letters herself, in her own blood. You must be joking. Brilliant deduction. That's impossible. From the writing in the victim's blood and the other clues left behind. It seems pretty likely that this garden was the scene of Miss Elise de Nîmes' murder. At least, that's our current theory on how the events took place, pal. What? So Miss de Nîmes was killed here. However you want to look at it, that's what people are saying now. Then... What Sister Bikini saw in the courtyard at the main temple was... Well, what was it? If that wasn't the scene of the crime, then what did you see? What did she see? What do you think, Miss Von Karma? Surely a special gumshoe investigation would reveal that answer, no? Wait a sec, the bloody writing and all the other clues here. Someone could have easily set all that up after the murder, right? Sorry, but that's not an option, pal. Why not? How quickly you forget, Phoenix Wright. Ever since the incident occurred, this place has been completely inaccessible. Because Dusky Bridge was completely burned out. Yeah, that's right, I fucking fell through that bridge. You got a point there. I was overseeing repairs to the bridge the whole time. No one came over here before me and my men. Which means no one could have planted all this stuff here, pal. I can't think of a counter-argument to that. I knew it. I should have washed the blood off the lantern as soon as I got here. If this really was a scene of the crime, then I need to figure out exactly what it was that Bikini actually saw. It seems you have a visitor. It's all right. Iris, I'm really glad to see you. Godot managed to mobilize the police by claiming a state of emergency. Not him again. Never mind him. We've got to hurry and unlock the sacred cavern. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. It's my fault someone so important to you is locked in there. Miss Redworth, can we finish our conversation later? All right. Let's hurry to the inner temple then. I'll see you later, Wright. Wait, Edgeworth! I'm coming with you guys! Sorry, Wright. I can't allow you to come with us. What? I hate to be the one to break it to you, but... Maya Faye is in a rather delicate position. What do you mean by a delicate position? This isn't s simply a rescue operation, Wright. It's also an investigation. That being the case, we can't allow members of the public to interfere. 
Come on, Edgeworth. If anything happens, you'll be the first to know. Please understand, right? But it's Maya! Mr. Wright, all that matters is that Mystic Maya is rescued, correct? I... Listen to the voice of reason for a change, Phoenix Wright. From now on, consider everything beyond the Dusky Bridge to be off-limits. We'll be going now. Excuse us. <laughs> this is no time to be standing around, Phoenix Wright. Aren't there other things that demand your attention? She's right. Thanks for reminding me. Sister Bikini looks like she's shrunk, shrunk some since I shrunk some since I last saw her. We love a team. Don't be so rude, Phoenix Wright. What's wrong, Sister Bikini? My, my, my. Hello, you two. How are you doing? <laughs> oh. From the sound of that sigh, I guess she's still pretty down. Iris was just here, you know. She was accompanied by that handsome crimson-clad prince. Is she talking about Edgeworth? It was just a courtesy call. I wasn't allowed to talk with her at all. Oh dear, it's all my fault that this has happened. Poor Iris. She was worried about my back, would you believe? What have I done to her? Only what you had to do, sister. You bravely and truthfully testified about what you saw. There's no shame in that. And we'll see to it that your testimony wasn't made in vain. Well, I don't hear anyone else saying that. Mr. Blue Suits doesn't seem to share your opinion, I see. Huh? Me? Ah! Oh, yes, you did great, Sister Bikini. Absolutely spectacular! <laughs> you two are the only ones who've said that to me! I can't shake the feeling that I just became a shield to a shrew. Do you have a problem, Phoenix Wright? Sure, she was brave to testify so truthfully like that. But I know she's still hiding something. I guess it's time to break those psyche locks of hers. Yes, let's fucking... Let's fucking go... If <laughs> Phoenix hears the words handsome and prince in his mind, immediately goes to Edgeworth. <laughs> Sister Bikini, the truth is becoming increasingly increasingly clear to me. I am convinced that Miss Elise Dunim had a special significance to this temple. As to why she had a special significance, I believe it has to do with her true identity. What on earth are you talking about? She she was Mr. Kelis was an author. Just an author of picture books. To be honest. I had my suspicions almost immediately after I met her. S suspicions Yes, but I didn't have any evidence to support my theory, though. But now I do. This piece of evidence proves Miss Dunim's true identity. Miss Dunim had this charm with her at all times. Oh, where did you- This isn't some cheap good luck charm, either. Uh, uh, then- What do you think it is, Mr. Wright? What could a talisman like that possibly mean? It's a talisman, is it? Interesting. Oops. This thing speaks volumes about who Miss Dunim really was. This talisman and the other item unequivocally prove Miss Dunim's true identity. The painting is obscured by this gravy stain at the moment. But this scroll shows the master of the Kurain channeling technique. The crest at the top is, is a sign of that honorable title. The very same crest that adorns the talisman the victim carried with her. Oh! This crest is reserved for the master of Kurain. Who on earth told you that nonsense? I I've got no idea what you're talking about. The new master, Maya Fey, told me. What? Y you mean that acolyte is Mr. Fey's... Daughter? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. In fact, since her eldest daughter passed away, Maya is Misty Face's sole successor. M Mystic Misty! <laughs> hmm. 
Mr. Galise graced us with her presence about a week ago. When she showed me the talisman with that mark on it, well, I nearly fainted. No one had seen her since she disappeared 17 years ago after all. What is the significance of this talisman, sister? The Kurain talisman is a symbol of the Master of Kurain. The bearer must carry it with them always, until their death. Until the death? So at least the name wasn't really Maya's mother, huh? She was Mr. Fei, the master of the Kurain channeling technique. That was easier than it looked, yeah, for sure. The truth comes out at last. It looks like we're making some headway here. Tell me, sister. After 17 years, why did you choose to show herself now? Because something happened that called her out of hiding. What happened? Well... What's happening? It can't be. Earthquake! Ah! Oh my goodness, the inner temple. This kind of tremor might- But what about Edgeworth? Edgeworth has a fear of earthquakes. The inner temple? The sacred cavern in the trading hall. It might very well cave in. What? Maya! Does someone hold Edgy? It seems to have passed. Well, we can't just stand here and do nothing. Let's go. What? Where? To the inner temple, of course. Where else? Sister Bikini, we'll finish this later, all right? Of course. You're right along now. <laughs> Not my you did with Edgeworth. People may have been hurt. I must get some first aid kits ready. Come on then, Phoenix Wright. They won't bar you from entering as long as I'm with you. Thank you. Right at that moment, I had the worst feeling in my gut. We just had an earthquake. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fucking knew it! I wonder if he's alright. You look worried. Are you thinking about Miles Edgeworth? Come on, let's go. Gotta hurry to the inner temple and... Right. Huh? What are you doing here? Uh -huh. Could I have? How do you expect us to understand if you don't speak up? Yeah. Hey, why am I the one getting whipped? She she's gone. N no! The defendant, Iris. She's gone. Gone where? She fled. She escaped. What? So it was just now, during the- It's easy to see Edgeworth's one and only weakness. His fear of earthquakes. I should have known better than to escort the defendant alone. As soon as the ground started shaking, everything went dark before my eyes and he stupidly passed out. That incident haunts you to this day, doesn't it? It's no excuse for letting the suspect get away. Listen, you can't- You can't just pretend you don't have childhood trauma. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I can't believe I let it happen. Right. The inner temple area is a dead end, so she could have only escaped to this side. We haven't seen her. Then we need to get a manhunt underway now, and search Eagle Mountain from top to bottom. One thing I don't understand is that how we got here so fast. Like, how long did the earthquake last? It didn't seem like it lasted that long. And it takes 15 minutes from the bridge up to here. How fucking fast did this man's run? <laughs> also, why is he here? <laughs> of, of like, all the places this man sprinted, he fucking... <laughs> he just went all oh, Usain Bolt. <laughs> Faster than Usain Bolt, yeah. Wait, Edgeworth, have you thoroughly checked the inner temple yet? Be ridiculous. Why would I? The inner temple is like an island. There is no way to escape but to cross. No, that's not it. Iris isn't the type of person to run away, Edgeworth. What are you talking about? Sister Bikini mentioned something when we were with her. 
She said that the sacred cavern might, might have caved in because of the quake. Then you think Iris might have gone to the inner temple to check on the situation? Listen, Edgeworth. I'm sure she's at the inner temple. A manhunt is not necessary. Right. Let's not waste any more time. We need to get to the training hall's sacred cavern now. Just because Phoenix was here. It's like, where's Phoenix? <laughs> Gotta run to Phoenix! Uh, I accidentally hit the button, so I couldn't read what it said. Well, let me... <laughs> there we go. Oops. Here. And it's not necessary. Okay, right. It's not wasting any more time. We need to get to the trading hall, sacred cavern. Okay, I read that. I just all right. Let's go. That's it. Okay, cool. I didn't miss anything then. I wasn't sure. I thought I missed something. Not that it would have been a big deal anyway, but whatever. Fortunately, the sacred cavern hadn't caved in. But what we found was something none of us could ever could have ever expected. How can there be again? Just cut the damn chains! <laughs> Whenever Edgy gets afraid, his phoenix senses tingle. Even more locks. What is the meaning of this? Iris! Iris, please tell me! What the hell is going on? That's the first investigation. It took me about an hour. Here's a bolt torch. Blow, blow torch. Or bolt cutters. Yeah. Huh. No, that's too easy. We gotta make it as difficult as possible. Right. Is this what Godot was talking about? Yeah, the trick locks. Now then, Iris. Please remove these at once. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm afraid I can't. It, it's not possible for me. What? During the earthquake, when the cavern was in danger of caving in, Iris escaped. And I know that there was only one lock when it last came here. So you're saying that you can't undo the new locks? Yes. If only I was stronger. Edgeworth, how are you feeling? You look a little pale in the face. Like you want to talk with your face all green. Miles Edgeworth, go and get some air. I'll watch over the suspect. You go and get a grip on yourself. Don't be ridiculous. I'm perfectly f mm. There's no telling what sort of mistakes you could make in your current state. Go and get some rest. That's your only concern now, Miles Edgeworth. Understood. No, but he's pale. Phoenix is green. <laughs> I'll handle the investigation in the garden. You take care of things here. Edgeworth. He's got so much pride that he's probably off crying in the corner. <laughs> Pride is simply another trap that hinders us in our lives. That said, one must have pride to be effective on the job. At any rate, it seems that this is where we part ways, Phoenix Wright. I'm going to stay here and see if I can help. S if I can't help solve these bothersome puzzles. You see, well, thanks for your help. Now then, do you mind if I ask you a few things, Iris? No, oh, not at all. Why did you make a run for it, Iris? I, I'm sorry. I heard the inner temple had been severely shaken by this, the strong earthquake we had. I, I was so worried. I just had to come and see. In other words, you didn't run away to escape the law. At least we're clear on that. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw the sacred cavern was all right, but... But what? When I saw these change there. 
I saw all these extra locks that someone had put on the sacred cavern's door and... Hmm... Who in the world could do something like this? These trick locks are a sacred treasure of the Kurain tradition. There are hundreds of ways to set them. That's why only the person who set the lock can open it. And you want the one who set these locks. I don't think it's that simple, Francisco von Karma. When we were, when we were here, the, here the first time, there was only one lock. But now, somehow, there's five of them. What does that mean? It means that someone wanted to secure the place even more. And they wanted to secure it before you got here, Iris. Presumably because they wanted to make sure Maya couldn't get out. This means that Iris can only open one of these locks. The first one. Yes, that is correct. What? Iris, try to think, please. Isn't there any way around this? <laughs> they think they have sickness part of the wedding while we're seriously... <sighs> well, like I said, there are hundreds of different ways to set these locks. Only hundreds? I suppose if I went through every combination with each one, I could remove them, but... It will take time, won't it? Yes, about a day if I had to guess. A whole day? Well, that's better than leaving the locks in place. Will you do this for us? Sure, I'll do whatever I can. We've gotta wait another day? Hang in there, Maya. You're going to have to call on your inner strength now. You know what, Iris? There's still one thing I don't quite get. What might that be, Felix writes? I think it's obvious. Iris, on the night of the murder, where were you? Please, Iris, don't give me that look. You told us that you were in your room at Hasegura Temple at the time of the incident. But you were seen that same evening at the inner temple. And then... You were spotted at the scene of the crime in Hasegura Temple too. Being spotted at both Hasegura Temple and the inner temple. It's as if you were... Well, Iris... I think it's about time you told us the truth. I knew it. There's something going on here that we don't know about. Only three locks, yeah, but I can't open them yet. I'm finally getting to the bottom of this case. Encounter an iris to break those locks, so I should try to gather more clues from Sister Bikini, Edgeworth, Gumshoe, and Pearls. It's weird that there's no one around all of a sudden. It sure gets quiet up here in the mountains when you're all on your own. Speaking of alone, I guess I should go check out the shack just down this path. Maybe I'll find Larry there sulking again. Nope, wrong way. Oh, Mr. Nick! Pearls, what are you doing here? N nothing What about Miss Maya? Is she alright? Um, well, we don't know yet. Pearls, <laughs> for someone afraid of heights, he sure does cross that bridge often. He sure does. Hey, what do you think you're doing here, Nick? Larry. This is the loser shack, where losers get together to lose themselves. This is the what? And we find comfort in each other's failures, okay? You got a problem with that? Look, Mr. Nick, Mr. Loris did a picture of me. That's, um, great, Pearls. We're going to gather firewood now. We'll be cooking some half-rotten potatoes over a miserable little campfire. So stay out of our way. I don't believe this. Why can't you try getting fired up over becoming a better man? No one believes a word I say anymore. Listen to me, Pearl. You don't want to trust this kind of guy, okay? He'll only let you down. Oh, Mystic Maya. Larry, is there something you want to tell me about this picture? <laughs> I got nothing to say to you, Nick. My life's here now. The Pearl, two losers cooking potatoes together forevermore. What am I going to do with him? 
All right then. What do you think about this picture, Pearls? I, I think it's really well drawn. I can't draw at all, so I think it's really amazing. See, someone appreciates it. It's tough getting in the flames to look like that, you know? It's supposed to be Sister Iris flying through the air, isn't it? I love it! It's like a dream, a wonderful fantasy! No, 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 it wasn't a dream! She really flew! I'm telling you, Iris really flew that night! But Mr. Loris! Now you two, please don't look at me like that, Pearl! Don't look at me like I'm some kind of nutcase, I beg of you! I guess this picture really is a representation of what Larry thinks he saw. Guess I was half asleep when I was here that night. But I was wide awake after the lightning struck. And I saw what I saw. It was exactly like I drew in the picture. And it looks like I don't have any choice but to take the sketches at face value. Hey, what's with the look of doubt in your face? Um, pearls. Y yes, Mr. Nick? I've been meaning to ask you about the night of the murder. Where were you? And what exactly were you doing when it all happened? Oh, wait, let me... Oh. That's a bit better. I... Um... I... I was just... Well, I'm just a kid, you know? I'm sure it wasn't... It doesn't really m matter what I was doing, does it, Mr. Nick? Sorry, Pearls, but yes, it does. On the night of the murder, you were supposed to be in Mr. Nim's room, reading a book together. But Mr. Nim was murdered, and you, Pearls, were at the inner temple. Uh -huh. Just what exactly happened that night, Pearls? I'm really sorry, Mr. Nick. Oh, okay, it's just five. I thought it were way more. Girl, that's why I'm being punished. What are you talking about, Pearls? My spiritual power it has disappeared. What? Her powers have disappeared. What do you mean your powers have have, have your power has disappeared, Pearls? It is very cozy. Cool. I I wore this when I went to Japan two years ago. <laughs> it also kind of looks like I'm wearing um. A hijab. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Which I find kind of funny. But it's just because wearing my headphones the way I do, it really hurts. <laughs> well, thank you. It's... it's all over for me. A spirit medium who can't channel spirits is like a painter who can't paint. Hey, what are you looking at me for? Pearls, did you try to channel someone's spirit right here at Hazakura Temple? Tried but failed, perhaps. Huh? Way to go, Nick! You made her cry! That's, that was really cruel of you! Uh, uh. Just as I thought. I'm going to have to break her psyche locks to get get the truth out of her. Can't do that yet. We gotta go to the main hall. I wonder if Sister Bikini is back at the main hall yet. I haven't seen Gumshoe around for a while either. Maybe they're having a cup of tea together somewhere. I bet Gumshoe is Sister Bikini's type. Ma'am, are you okay? You're shaking. You're vibrating. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking of the video I showed you last night. <laughs> Where Edgeworth was just set to vibrate. <laughs> oh, she asked about the, the inner temple. It looks like it survived, but we have a bigger t problem now. <laughs> Vibrating edgy. <laughs> Tell Sister Bikini all about it. About the five locks that were stopping us from getting inside the sacred cavern. But who? Who could have done that? The only people who know how to set those trick locks are those of the Kurain tradition. 
We have Iris at the Sacred Cavern trying her best to open them for us right now. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to talk with you about, Sister Bikini. Oh, yes, we're in the middle of a chat, weren't we? We were in the middle of a chat, weren't we? Yes, you were telling me how the Master of Kurang disappeared 17 years ago. I want to know why Misty Faye suddenly appeared at this temple. It was about a week ago when Mystic Elise, no, I mean Mystic Misty, arrived. After she showed me the talisman that proved she was the master, she said, Someone is trying to destroy the Kurain. 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 Someone is trying to destroy the Kurain tradition's main family line. I am here to put a stop to them. Someone was trying to destroy the main family line? There is only one heir to the title of master at any time, and it's usually the eldest. That child becomes the new master of Kurain and her daughters, the main family. All other mediums become branch family members with no hope of controlling the clan. That's why nothing has changed throughout the history of the clan. Branch families always have and always will plot to erase those of the main family line. Is the power of the master worth this much bloodshed? You believe in the technique, don't you, Mr. Wright? You know its power is real. Yes, I do. It's been two years since I first met Maya. In that time, I've seen her channel the spirits of the dead plenty of times. During the Mask the Mask case. And during Maggie Bird's trial, too. Thanks to Maya, Mia's always on hand to help me out when I need her the most. The Kurain trick technique has made a huge difference to the world, you know. I mean, the ability to commune with the dead. That's true psychic power, you know. Members of the tradition have always been there, behind every important leader. We wouldn't respect such a tremendous skill. I suppose so, but... With all that power and influence, I kind of expected you'd be really rich by now. Are you saying we're poor, Mr. Wright? Oh, ho, ho, ho. You're very direct, aren't you? People don't believe in it anymore, you see. All because of one little mistake. A mistake? What mistake? It was 17 years ago. That's when everything came crashing down. Ah, uh, of course. It's during the DL6. All because of that incident. That incident? Is she talking about what I think she is? I'm sure the records still exist if you're interested. Locked up, of course. It was called the DL6 incident. Yep. That's the name of the file. The DL6 incident. I knew it. The DL6 incident. I know it well. I handled the related case just two years ago. Oh, that's right. So it was you who was a defense attorney on that case. A murder that took place 17 years ago. It was, it was the first time in the country's history the police ever used a spirit medium. The idea was to channel the sp victim's spirit to learn the identity of the murderer. And the medium who performed the channeling was Misty Fay, Maya's mother. Through Mystic Misty's channeling, the name of a certain man surfaced. Armed with that as evidence, the investigators were spurred into action. But that man, he was found not guilty, wasn't he? That's right, he was. And the case remained a mystery. In other words, we failed. It was the first case the world had ever seen the Kurain tradition openly involved in. It was all over the media, the public, the judiciary. The judiciary, maybe, I don't know. The people of Kurain village. Everyone judged her. Everyone said Miss Mystic Misty's power were a sham. And then she just disappeared, vanished while everyone still thought of her as a fraud. But I know the truth. Misty Faye's spirit channeling wasn't a sham at all. Of course it wasn't. And since you managed to reveal the truth, we're finally making a comeback. The Kurain tradition is starting to recover at last. But with a new master wielding the power of the clan. Does she mean Maya? The spiritual power of the Kurain channeling technique is in the blood. Maya's told me the exact same thing before. We, the women of the Fate Clan, have always been spirit mediums. 
It's because the power to communicate with spirits flows strongly through us. According to Maya, only the women in the family can inherit that po inherit that power. And the main family's bloodline stems directly from Mystic Ami, but with each new generation, only one daughter becomes a new master, and the ones who don't become branch families, right? That's right, and it's always the cause of tragedy. You know, Maya had a sister too, an older sister named Mia. Oh yes, I've heard of her. What? You know about Mia? Of course. She became a lawyer in the hopes of discovering what happened to her mother. And lost her life. As a result. Do you know what Mystic Mia is rumored to have said? She said it wasn't only because of her mother that she became a lawyer. She also didn't want to fight with her sister over the leadership of the tradition. Really? Well, she saw what had happened to her own mother, Mystic Misty, as she grew up. I guess Mystic Mia got tired of seeing all the rivalry between her mom and her aunt. That's right. Misty Fay had an elder sister too. Misty, having superior powers, managed to usurp the master's seat from her. Mystic Misty's sister is Mystic Morgan, as you probably know. Morgan? There's a name I know well. It was a year ago now, at Maya's home, Kudain Village. What she did was terrible. It was all so she could make her own daughter the next master. I suppose if you know about Mystic Morgan's daughter, then you must have already realized that Iris... Huh? Iris? What's Iris got to do with any of this? That Iris is... Mystic Morgan's daughter. Iris is what? Is she kidding me? Iris is Morgan Faye's daughter? Did you just say that Iris is Morgan Faye's daughter? Oops, I thought you already knew. It sounded like you'd met one of Mystic Morgan's daughters already. I, I have. I know her very well. Oh? Yes, Pearls. Pearl Faye. But I always thought she was an only child. You just that child. She's Mystic Morgan's. I had no idea. Mystic Morgan. But she's in prison now, isn't she? Yes. Ever since she was found to be a co-conspirator in a murder case last year. Their names all start with M. Well, except for Pearls, I guess. It was all done to set Pearls up as the next master. I see. So I've been wrong all this time. Mystic Morgan had three daughters, not two. Wait, what? Th three? Yes, Iris, her twin sister, and Mystic Pearl. What? A a twin sister? Oh, didn't you know? It all happened 20 years ago. After the clan leadership was taken from her by her sister, Mystic Morgan's life crumbled. It wasn't many years later that Kurain's reputation hit an all-time low. When Mystic Morgan's husband realized his wife would never become the master, he left her and the village, taking their twin daughters with him. How awful. He was a jeweler, you know. In the end, he remarried, and that's when it happened. He decided to give one of his girls up. To be looked, at, looked after by us here at the temple. That was Iris, you see. It's unbelievable. If Iris has a twin sister... Could it be? Um, could you tell me one more thing, Sister Bikini? What was the name of Iris' sister? I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I just can't remember. All I can recall is that her father was a jeweler. Well, that's a clue, I guess. Hmm, a jeweler. Thank you very much. You've helped clear up a lot of details. Pearls had two elder sis older sisters, huh? Yes, that's right. No doubt it was all because of Mystic Morgan's anger towards the main family. Anger? What do you mean? Her twin daughters were taken from her by her jeweler husband. But even that couldn't destroy her dream that a child of hers would one day, would one day lead, the lead the clan. Yes, no spoilers. <laughs> That's why she had pearls. It 
seems that the incident here was a result of Mystic Morgan's anger. It was able to break free of the bars that confined her. So Iris has a twin sister. The plot thickens. But this is from Oh Huh? Eh? <laughs> Dylan Coolman555, thank you so much for the follow. My <laughs> The confusion. <laughs> Thank you so much. Huh. But this information will be useless unless I can flesh it out a bit. I need to ask more questions and get some more info. Hi. Oh my god. Sounds like someone's happy. What tune is that they're humming? Motive, no crime. No motive, no crime. <laughs> Sing it with me. No motive, no crime. No motive, no crime. I remember when we used to search in the channeling room in Kurain. <laughs> I'm doing okay. How about you? Whoop. I love my job. Who cares if the clues I find are no good? That's not what investigating is all about. The investigators investigate. The investigator investigates for the love of investigating. It's a passion. Good cases we have. Good cases we've lost along the way. I would have never guessed that Gumshoe was into reggae. Ah, I see it's reggae. <laughs> Every case is gonna be airtight. Okay, cool. Hey, pal. Huh? Who? Me? How long have you been there? I just got here. Oh, okay. So what are you up to, detective? I'm investigating, pal. I made a promise to Miss Regworth. I promised I would find the real murder weapon. The real murder weapon? The barbed sword thing turned out to be a false lead, right? I'm giving it my best shot here, but I still haven't turned up any clues. I just found these weird scraps of paper. It looks like a letter or something. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the case, though. A, a letter? So, how's the investigation going, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know if I should be telling you, pal, but I guess it can't hurt. Looks like the murderer took place in- Murder took place in the inner temple garden. And they're taking that bloody writing on the lantern pretty seriously back at HQ. What? You mean- I don't have the details, pal. All I know is if you don't find Maya down in that sacred cavern, we're gonna be faced with one ugly situation. What kind of ugly situation are we looking at here? You got me. I don't know. They're not my words, pal. Then who said it? Mr. Godot. Godot? What did he mean by that? About that letter you found. Don't remind me, pal. I'm busting a gut here trying to find the murder weapon. And all I find is some burnt up old letter. Burnt up old letter? Yeah, it wasn't that incinerator right outside the inner temple. The incinerator? I knew it. I knew I wasn't imagining it. <laughs> Maya should get a trophy for most frequent murder suspect. <laughs> True. There was snow on the incinerator when I first saw it. But after the incident, the snow had melted away. Which means someone used the incinerator on the night of the murder. What's up with you, pal? Got it right here if you want to take a look. Can I? Do you mind? Sure, go nuts. I don't want it, pal. Who can have it? It's all spirit mediums and masters and stuff. I bet it's got no relation to the case. Spirit mediums? It's gotta be important if it mentions spirit mediums and masters. I better give it a good looking over and some serious thought. Make sure you chuck it in the trash when you're done. Littering's a crime, pal. Hold on. Let me take a look at it. Be careful, once night falls, should be there. As soon as you hear the lights, Outbell, you must channel her spirit, leave everything up to her. Her name is, she is our all, the whole. <laughs> Here is a picture of her, use it when you channel her. I know you can do it. Once this is, burn the, also make, tell anyone about this letter. Bravely roast the master in the fires of Hades and bring our vengeance to fruition.
So, what do you know about the real murder weapon so far? Well, it wasn't the Shichishto that was found impaled in the victim's body. Miss Regiburst proved that in court today. Yes, that's true. In which case, it must have been another blade. And that's what you're running around like a headless chicken looking for now, huh? Yeah, and man, is it tiring work. But let me tell you something, pal. I'm no chicken. We've got the feather of forensics in our cap these days. We're using the department's secret weapon on this. Secret weapon? What's this secret weapon of yours? You wanna know? You gotta think scientifically, okay? Alright. The murder weapon was a sword. Swords are, scientifically speaking, made of metal, right? Any questions so far? No. I know what he's gonna say, but I let him look smart. So it was the perfect tool for the job. Ta-da! A metal detector. Raise your hand if you didn't see this coming from a mile away. Well, you wanna give scientific investigation a go? Huh? M me? I've been using this thing for hours now. It gets pretty boring after a while. Why don't you give it a try? I don't know. Should I help Detective Gumshoe out or not? Sure, why, why don't we? Come on, pal. It's good fun, I'm telling you. Alright then. I guess I'll give it a go. Like I said, this is the department's most advanced gadget. The absolute best. I don't really know uh, about metal detectors. <laughs> Maybe? I don't. So sensitive, you could make it cry. It's so high tech, you could skydive, skydive off it. Oh bother! So now I'm gonna tell you how to use it. It's possible the real murder weapon is around here somewhere, right? Sure, that's what we're trying to find out. Right. So first, let's turn the detector on. That's the sound of the metal detector's signal bouncing off of something metallic. Next, move the detector around and give this courtyard a good looky see. Well. And don't worry, this babe will let you know when you've hit on something metallic, and when that happens, press the A button to give the area a good hard stare. This thing picks up metallic objects that are hidden from sight too. Take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay pal? That's a ladder. Sorry, that's a step ladder. Mizugami also. Here or something. This looks like... A wallet? Aha! Uh -huh. That's where it's been! Is it yours, detective? I'm always dropping it, so I put a bell on it. But you still dropped it anyway. Yeah, but now I found it again, pal. Your wallet is completely empty. Well, I drop it all the time, so I don't put money in it anymore. And how come the metal detector picked it up? It must be because of the bell, I guess. Alright. What's this? A pen? Hey, I've been looking all over for that, pal. Huh? It's yours? Yeah, my old man gave it to me when I qualified as a detective. He told me it'd be good for sticking in suspects' faces. That makes you detective sound really nasty. It's my dream to stick it in your face one day, right? Now go losing it. What's oh, this? Looks like there's something round buried in the ground here. Don't touch that, pal. Huh? What is it? It's a trap! People set them out to catch us detectives. They're real nasty. A trap? For detectives? You mean like those fierce traps with sharp teeth that are supposed to snag your leg? Yeah, those! I got my finger caught in one of those ones. Y your finger? Okay, I'll examine the step letter. Fine. There was this bit of cheese and it looked so tasty. I reached out and then BAM! I'm not sure I know how to respond to a story as stupidly pitiful as that. Look, a ladder! That's a step ladder. What's the difference? Looks like a normal ladder to me, pal. Surely everyone knows the difference. I mean, they're pretty ordinary objects. I met plenty of guys like you, always picking on the smallest details. The vegetable store guy near my place does it all the time. He even corrects me when I ask for a head of lettuce. That's a cabbage, he says. I'm telling you, they're the exact same thing. No, they're not! They're completely different! You have to plant both of them firmly, firmly in the ground before they can grow, don't you? Listen, you gotta take a step back and look at the bigger picture sometimes. Otherwise, you could miss a really important clue. That's advice from a pro, pal. The last person I need advice from is this guy in front of me. 
That's odd. This sled's made of plastic. It says bikini number one on the side. Maybe there's something under it. Hey, what's this? A, a badge? Aha! Uh -huh. I've been hunting high and low for that. It's yours, detective? That thing's priceless to a guy like me, pal. A cop can't be a cop without his badge. I'm sure glad you I put that diamond there now. How did you manage to drop your badge here of all places? I know. I bet it happened this morning. I was playing around with the sled and... Stop right there. I don't need to hear anymore. This is Miss Dunim's staff, isn't it? Scientifically speaking, they're usually made of wood. But the detector is reacting to it. Yeah, but wh however you look at the look at it, the thing's made of wood, alright? I don't bother investigating an anything unless it looks like it might be metallic. Isn't the whole point of a metal detector to find metal where you can't see it? It's weird that this thing is causing a racket. Here, let me take a look at it. Hey, hands off! Examining evidence is a job for the- Ah! The top is coming off! Look what you've done! You've damaged a really important piece of evidence! Ah! Th that's a... a... A sword... Inside the staff. Is this... Could it be... The murder weapon? I'd never have guessed there'd be a sword concealed in the victim's staff. They call this kind of thing a sword cane, pal. This one's a real gem. The workmanship is really something else. Thank goodness it wasn't a cane sword. Or else the victim could have stabbed her own foot. I officially gave up on trying to figure out how Gumshoe's mind works. If the real scene of the crime was the inner temple garden, then why was the sword used to kill the victim found in the main hall courtyard? Hey Gumshoe, who knows about the hidden sword? No one. Even the police didn't know about this until I discovered it just now. Well, as they say, there's no team in Gumshoe. It doesn't look like there are any traces of blood on it. <laughs> Gumshoe is the de definition of my last two brains. You, you have two? My, my, you're lucky. <laughs> doesn't look like there are any traces of blood on it. And I guess this isn't the murder weapon, huh? No, no, no. I I'm sure someone just wiped it off after the murder. Yeah, of course. This thing is definitely the murder weapon. Great job, pal. It's about the same length as Chichisto too. This must be the word murder weapon. Okay, I'm gonna run over to the forensics. There's gotta be some traces of blood left, even if most of it has been wiped off. See you later, pal. Every case is gonna be airtight. Every case is, case is gonna be airtight. Wait up, detective! Huh? What is it, pal? I'm a pretty busy guy right now, you know. I'm going to get that staff analyzed, right? Would you mind holding off for just a while? Huh? What are you talking about, pal? Please. Just until we find Maya. Maya? What's this got to do with her? I don't know, but I'm starting to get a really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. Oh? How so? Look, Maya's trapped inside the sacred cavern right now and... Well, we don't even know if she's okay or not. The more evidence and testimony I hear, the more uneasy I feel. Y you don't think? Maya's been murdered. Please, detective. Let's just wait until we can get inside the sacred cavern. You're looking kind of viridian there. Okay, okay, just stop it with that face, pal. One thing, though. The staff's secret trick. Let's keep it between you and me, all right? If it gets out that we knew about it and didn't say anything, we're finished. I understand. This is just a regular, run-of-the-mill staff, you got it? Okay, now you take good care of it, pal. Thank you, detective. Don't worry. She'll be fine. Come shoo. You know, there's a place at the base of this mountain that has some really good pasta. How about I take you there when you find Maya, huh, pal? Sure. Thanks. I can't help but wonder, though. What was Elise Dunim doing with a staff like this in the first place? Hmm... Um, yeah. Oh my god. But speaking of brain cells, though, uh, like... Maybe it was like last year or something. I literally 
had one brain cell. That was like all I had to go on and it was awful. Like my brain literally did not function. I usually like joke around and say like, huh, I don't know how to brain, but literally at that time, my brain just would not function. I couldn't think. <laughs> it was just really awful. I could feel the one brain cell just doing its best. I wish I was joking, but it was <laughs> very specific and mm. Yeah. The cops are still combing the place. They look pretty nervous. I'd be nervous too. It's gotta be a tough job. Especially with someone giving you the evil eye the whole time. Mm -hmm. Could've done that. I can't believe it's still bothering him. Edward? Ah! Hey, don't you dare run away! What do you want, right? What do I want? If you came here to laugh at me, then get on with it. Go on, laugh away. I was ready to hug it out with him, but he's just the same prideful Edgeworth. You went back to the criminal affairs department, right? You said you wanted to look into something concerning Iris. Y yes. Thanks to what I found, I was reminded of something terrible. You guys are putting a lot of effort into the investigation of the garden here, huh? There's high chance this it, this is the actual scene of the crime. That's why. You mean because of the writing in blood and the talisman in the, in the snow? Exactly. As you know, those things couldn't have been planted here after the murder. But surely, you don't suspect... Maya, do you? We have to treat everyone as a suspect. Maya as well as Iris. It's our job, right? That one brain cell floating around like the TV look on the screen. <laughs> and you can only like think properly once it hits the corner perfectly. Ugh. And yeah, he wanted to hug it out. Eh. Hey. So. I guess you still haven't gotten over your fear of, er fear of earthquakes. Well, it's not that easy. <laughs> Though I guess maybe that's not so easy for, for Phoenix to see, considering he has apparently gotten over his fear of heights. <laughs> considering how many times he just runs across that fucking bridge now. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No. Well, thankfully, my nightmares have stopped. But still, if the ground gives even the slightest tremor... I find myself short of breath. Well, it's understandable. <laughs> 17 years ago, when we were little school kids at the same elementary school. Edgeworth found himself in the middle of a murder. It all started with that big quake that hit the courthouse. Yes, I was stuck in the elevator with my father, who was the defense attorney. We were deprived of oxygen and we passed out. That's when it happened. A single gunshot shattered my whole life. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I lost everything that day, all because of that earthquake. My dreams, my family, and myself. For more than 17 years now. And that case was finally resolved two years ago, right? You think I don't know that? I was there. But it was such a shock. I never imagined I could be so wrong about myself and my life. I'm sorry, right? There's nothing else I can say. Not after you chose to become a lawyer for my sake. And not after you saved me. It's worth. You're stronger than you think. So no more of this self-pity, okay? There was something that bothered me about her from the moment we met. I felt like I'd seen her somewhere before. No, wait. Not somewhere. I felt like I'd seen her in court before. So you went back to, to the criminal affairs department to look in, look for a file. Yes, I checked over every case file I've ever worked on. And I was right. I had seen her face before. Six years ago. Six years ago? It was my first appearance in court. And as cases go... It was my worst nightmare. So? Who is she? I'm sorry, right? 
You can't give that information away to a member of the general public. What? Why not? It might be the crucial piece of this puzzle that, that solves the case. The woman I knew was the daughter of a jewelry store owner. She had nothing to do with Iris and Hasekura Temple. And neither did the case. No, that woman is completely unrelated to this murder. Unrelated? Yes, I can say that with complete confidence. You're wrong, Edgeworth. She's totally related to this case. I need to fill Edgeworth in. I need to explain the connection between Iris and the woman Edgeworth knew. Hey, Edgeworth. Did you know that Iris had a twin sister? What? A, a, a twin? I can't be serious. Sister Bikini told me, but... The problem is, she didn't know the name of this twin. There was nothing about Iris having a sister in the files I checked. Well, technic... No, no, not Iris, sorry. Well, Iris was taken in by the temple when she was really young. Apparently, her sister was raised by her father. A jeweler, I think. Jeweler. Right, I... Just might know who this twin sister of hers is. I had a feeling you'd say that. Let me guess. Her name is Dahlia Hawthorne, right. Yes, exactly. Please tell me what you know about her, Edgeworth. Yes, it was Valerie. It was my first court case, six years ago. I was a greenhorn, and due to my inexperience, the, in the defendant died. You're talking about Cherry Falls, right? You know about that case. You're not the only one who noticed something about Iris and Dahlia Hawthorne. I checked one of Mia's old files from six years ago, and that's why uh, the the Turnabout Memories case exists, because it's him looking back at that case, because it relates to this case. Yes, Dahlia was a key witness in that case. Dahlia and Terry Falls conspired together to stage a fake kidnapping 11 years ago. They stole a jewel worth $2 million from Dahlia's father, a jeweler. Five years after that, she murdered her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne, to keep her from talking. Her sister? Well, her stepsister, actually. They weren't blood, blood related. Valerie was the only daughter of Dahlia ha Dahlia's father, second wife. Oh, and this is when she entered my life. The woman who tried to kill me. So, after Terry Falls died, what happened to Dahlia? Did you check that out? Does it really matter? Like I said, Dahlia isn't connected with this case. Why are you so sure about that? Simple. Dahlia Hawthorne is dead. What? Well, her met metabolic processes are so Processes are a matter of interest only to historians, so to speak. What do you mean by Dahlia Hawthorne is dead, Edgeworth? Right. I must confess that in, writing her f in reading her file, I came to know of the murder case you were involved in during your college years. Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty. Thanks to the persistence of Mia Fey. At the time, Dahlia... It's like she was possessed by a demon or something. It's been almost five years since that guilty verdict was handed down. And her sentence was finally carried out. She was executed. Last month. Executed? I'm sure that's a bit of a shock for you, right? And for more reasons than one. But do you understand now? She can't possibly be connected with this case. She's dead, and when someone is dead... There is no way to revive them. There's 
there's no way to revive the dead? Hmm, I wonder. It seems you're not aware of the of one other connection yet, Edgeworth. And what is that? It's about Iris and Dahlia, Hawthorne's mother. <laughs> don't don't question it, alright? What's their mother got to do with any of this? She's Morgan Fay, spirit medium from a branch family of the Kudain channeling technique. You say Kudain channeling technique. Do you know something about it? Yes, I know it's connected with a fraudulent spirit medium. Fraudulent? I was involved in another nightmare 17 years ago. We already been over this. I was caught up in the middle of a murder investigation. The police didn't have any leads. They were stumped, and that's when they called her in. She was a very famous spirit medium and the master of her channeling school. But you know what happened? As a result of her efforts, an innocent man was accused of murder. She and her powers, they were all fraudulent. Edgeworth, go to the police records room. It's all in there. All you have to do is check the DL6 incident case file and you'll know. Of course, how could I forget? Edgeworth was the victim in that case. Edgeworth, you'll understand someday. And then you'll see that the Kurain channeling technique is real. Oh cool, now I can unlock these fucking No. Though to be fair, I don't feel like she should have been executed. She killed several people. She should have just been in jail to rot, honestly. Execution is getting off way too easily. I think it's time you told the truth about what you were doing on that night. You said you were in your room at Hasakura Temple the entire time. You still claim that to be the truth. Yes, that's where I was. Iris, I believe you're innocent. That's why I want to believe that you're what you're telling me too, but I can't. Yeah, no, me neither. Because this person saw you somewhere else on the night of the murder. That's Bikini. I'm talking about Sister Bikini, of course. Sister Bikini. Her testimony in court today was very clear. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... Well, as you can see, my backlight likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and return to Hasekura Temple. Sister Bikini didn't just see you, she spoke with you. I don't believe we have, like, death sentence here in Norway. Like, even the fucking biggest terrorist... In the history of Norway. He wasn't given the death sentence. How many people did he kill again? I don't remember. But a lot of them were kids. And I know that a lot of people disagreed heavily with that. Because of what a terrible person he is. Yeah. Yeah. We don't- we believe in, like, reforming them, I believe. Something like that. Because our prisons are also pretty luxurious, like... Like, uh... The prison here in Norway, with, like, the tightest security... lets you have, like, fucking, um... Gaming consoles, you have a TV, like... It's just very luxurious. <laughs> and that's also something people are mad about because, uh, like, elder people don't get the same care as prison inmates do. Which is kind of ironic.
Sister Bikini didn't just see you, she spoke with you. You two talked about Maya's training that night. So you see, Iris, you were there at the inner temple on the night of the murder. <laughs> That's kind of wholesome, though. News article about how, how a guard forgot to lock a five inmates and they spent the night making club kaka <laughs> in the kitchen and watching TV. Oh, that's amazing. Well, yeah, prison here is like a really safe thing. So, of course, why the hell would you ever leave? <laughs> That's very impressive, Mr. Wright. Acolyte's actual training was due to start after 10 o'clock that night. I left the main hall early so I wouldn't be late. What time was that? Let me see. It takes about 20 minutes to walk between the main hall and the inner temple. So, I would have left at about 9.40pm, I think. I'm sorry, Iris, but lying just doesn't suit you. Huh? Now, you say you left the main hall at 9.40pm, but what you say doesn't add up to this. You, you, you yourself testified to the contrary, don't you remember? You said you rang the lights up at 10 o'clock that night. Huh. Plus, only moments before you rang that bell. You were seen at the main hall by the most reliable witness I have. Who's that? Me. Mr. Wright. We even spoke a little that evening. That's when you gave me this. Surely you haven't forgotten. N no, that's right. I remember. And that brings us to another puzzling fact, Iris. At 10 o'clock on the night of the murder, you were seen in two different places at the same time. It's time you told me exactly what's been going on, Iris. So far, I've managed to prove two things. First, on the night of the incident, you were at the inner temple. And second, at the exact same time, you were ringing the bell at Hasakura Temple. There's only one possible explanation for this apparent impossibility. There were two of you. On the night of the incident, you were seen in two different places at the same time. Which means, there must have been two of you. Can't think of any other explanation, Iris. But that's crazy! How could that be? There's only one of me! It's impossible! Impossible? I wonder. The way you're trembling certainly seems to suggest otherwise. Well, you're seriously trying to suggest there's more than one of me. Then show me the evidence. Show me something that proves there is more than one of me. I have a firm grasp of the situation now, Iris. You have a sister, don't you? A twin sister, perhaps. <gasps> and that's right. Dahlia Hawthorne. A woman I know only too well. I had no idea you knew of her. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. But she's no longer... Yes, I know. Her sentence was carried out recently, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Thank you. There's no need to explain now, is there, Iris? The second you was here at the, at the temple on the night of the murder. It was your twin sister, Dahlia Hawthorne. You just said it yourself a second ago. My sister's dead. Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten this, Cyrus? This is a channeling dojo, a training ground of the ch Kudain channeling technique. That night, someone channeled Dahlia's spirit, and you knew about it. And that's a secret you've been trying to hide from me. I was in my room in the main hall that night. As soon as I heard that I'd been spotted at the inner temple, I knew. I knew it was my sister. Talia, the other half of me who passed away last month. Just as I suspected. The iris that Sister Bikini saw at the inner temple on the night of the murder. It was Dahlia Hawthorne. But 
Didn't you tell me this before? Because... Because my sister always does the right thing. Excuse me? Because I mustn't get in the way of what she's trying to do. I already betrayed her once before. I can't do it again. You betrayed her? What do you mean? That's why I... I have to accept I may be found guilty. Is this the only way? What is she talking about? I know about it, don't you, Mr. Wright? About the fake kidnapping that took place here on Eagle Mountain 11 years ago. It was the start of it all. It's what started her down... It w it's what started her down that twisted path. She started to commit crime after crime, and in the end, she... She lost her life. It's all because I betrayed her. How did you betray her, Iris? It was no coincidence that Eagle Mountain is where the exchange was to take place. After all, I... I helped plan the whole thing. What? But I got scared, so I ran away. What are you talking about? Why would you help her? Stealing two million dollars from your own father. That's awful. But I promised... I promised that I'd help. And she didn't do it for the money. Huh? It was revenge on her father. Re re revenge What do you mean by revenge? He was a hideous man. He threw her mother away and then sent her to hell. Her mother? She must be talking about Morgan Fay. Her mother was the eldest daughter of the main branch of the, of the Fay family. The main family had a lot of influence in many businesses and business and political circles at the time. As the eldest daughter, her mother was set to inherit all of that as the next master. That's the reason her father married our mother in the first place, for power. But his plan backfired, because our mother's sister took it all from her. She took over as the master of Kurain. That would be Misty Fay, Maya's mother. Before long, the credibility of the Kurain tradition hit rock bottom. The new master, Misty, Misty Fay, made a terrible mistake. It was during the investigation of the DL6 incident. After that happened, our father took me and my twin sister away, leaving our mother and our home behind. He hated the place, he said it was a hick dive, and that he had no reason to stay there. And that's when you came here to Hasakura Temple. Yes, the woman my father took as his next wife already had a daughter, Valerie. I, I had no place in this new family, you see. Oh. And I haven't seen my mother since mo once since then. Having the master's seed stolen from her and being rejected from, by her own family. I've heard she's been very battered spiritually, spiritually and emotionally. I think I'm finally beginning to see how the pieces fit together. I have asked her everything I can in my capacity as a prosecutor. This incident, everything related to it, goes back to the history of the Fae clan. That's what it looks like. Iris, there's just one more thing I want you to tell me. What is it? During the incident in which your sister, Dahlia Hawthorne, poisoned the lawyer, she began a relationship with a certain college student in order to hide the evidence. That college student. Have you heard anything about him? Well, I did hear one thing. She said she hated his guts. I see. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Hurry up, Phoenix Wright. There's still much to investigate. Leave these stocks to me. I'll open them for you, I promise. Thank you. I suppose I better continue my investigation. There's still one giant secret left to unlock. Pearl's Psyche Lock. button did, 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 did. wrong way this way this way and this way and heavenly hall look at that they really did make a fire right in the front of the shack oh it's nick <laughs> you're too late nick if you came here for one of our potatoes we've already polished them all off i think i've pretty much got all the evidence i need now i just need to find out what pearls is hiding
after dinner on the night of the murder. You were supposed to be in Elise de Nim's room, reading a book together, correct? Yes, I was so happy when she invited me. But I didn't go in the end. You didn't go? No, there was something else I had to do. There was somewhere else I had to go instead. I was so worried. I, I had to go. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was so nervous. So Pearls never went to Miss Nim's room. Because she was too worried about something. Or someone else. Pearls. On the night of the murder, you went to this place, didn't you? You went here, didn't you, Pearls? Looks like she's still not going to open up to me. This is where you went because you were so worried, right? And the next question is, who or what were you so worried about? Now I'm going to take a guess and you can't tell me if I'm right or wrong, okay? You mean you know? If I'm right, will you tell me the whole truth? Okay. You went to this place for one very simple reason, and that is this. That. It's obvious that you were so worried about what you were so worried about, Pearls. It was Maya, wasn't it? He knew the training Maya was undertaking was dangerous. After all, it was a special course. Sign up for your special course! Well, my, 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 quite brave of you considering how cold it is. Young people can be so reckless with their health. Don't blame me if you become one of those... One with those you channel. <laughs> Sister Bikini scared you with what she said, didn't she? And because it was you who introduced Hasakura Temple to Maya in the first place, you felt responsible, didn't you? Thinking about what could happen to Mystic Maya made me more and more worried. I couldn't sit still at all. That's why I decided to go and find out how she was doing at the Inner Temple. And we're clear now that you went to the Inner Temple that night, Pearls. What's not clear is what happened after that. About what time was it when you headed over to the inner temple? It was probably around 9.30 when I left the main hall. I heard the real training was supposed to start at 10. I wanted to get there before it started. And there was so much snow, so I didn't get there until after 10 o'clock. Until after 10? How did you know what time it was? Because I heard the bell ringing for lights out. She heard the lights out bell. The Hasagura temple's bell is pretty small though, isn't it? You must have really good hearing. I was really trying to pick up the sound of that bell is all. I didn't want to miss it. That would be terrible. She was trying to hear the bell? Tell me, Pearls. Why were you so worried about hearing that bell? Huh? Oh. You think I know why. The reason you were so worried about that bell was because of this. Oops. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> You were given some instructions to follow for that night, weren't you? I presume you recognize these pieces of paper. Oh, why did you- In the incinerator at the inner temple. Pearls. You were following the instructions in this letter that night, weren't you? That's why you couldn't afford to miss the sound of the lights out bell. I'm speechless, Mr. Nick. You're amazing! These instructions that were found in, found in the incinerator. I believe they were written for you, Pearls. For me? I... no! As you can see, a large portion has been burnt, but the last section is still fairly legible. As soon as you hear the lights out bell, you must channel her spirit. Who was it, Pearls? Whose spirit were you supposed to be channeling? Taking into account the, the author of the note and their purpose for writing it, whose spirit would Pearls have been trying to channel? Don't overthink it, Phoenix. It's pretty obvious who Pearls was supposed to channel. The person you were trying to channel that night for Pearls was... Dahlia! Dahlia! It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? That was the name that was in the letter. It's just as I suspected. It wasn't Iris whose sister Bikini met at the inner temple that night. It was Dahlia Hawthorne. Ghost Dahlia strikes again. She just can't fucking leave anything alone. God damn it. Fucking Dahlia. Do you know anything about her, Pearls? Do you know about what kind of a woman Dahlia Hawthorne was? Um, no. 
I never heard of anyone by that name before reading those instructions. I thought so. Pearls doesn't have a clue. She doesn't know that Dahlia is her sister. I thought the instructions in the letter I found, Pearls. Who wrote them? Whoever it was asked you to channel the spirit of someone you'd never heard of. You must have quite a lot of respect for them. After all, you followed their instructions without question. So here's my next question. Who wrote this set of instructions for you to follow? Well, who else but her mother? Pearls. I have to wonder about something. You didn't have any idea what those instructions meant, did you? But you followed them to the letter, regardless. Why? Because it was your own mother who asked you. That's why. How did you... I figured it out. The person who wrote you this letter was your own mother, Morgan Fay. <laughs> Alright, Pearls. It's time you started telling me the truth. <laughs> why is she holding back from me? I don't like this. Don't, don't underestimate me just because I'm a child. Huh? If you're trying to say I followed these instructions, I'd like to see some proof. What? Because I... I don't think you have any... <clears throat> She'd say anything rather than admit to carrying out those instructions. I guess I'll have to produce some more evidence then. More things should do it. Alright, Pearls. We both know someone carried out these instructions on the night of the murder. But you're right. There's no evidence that proves it was you. I, I knew it! However, I do know that whoever did it was a child. <laughs> that... It couldn't have been an adult. No adult would have made a simple mistake like that. A, a simple mistake? What do you mean by that? I'm sure you thought you were carefully following the instructions you've been given. But you mis misunderstood some of the words, and this is the evidence that proves it. Oh, no, he's here. It was you who splattered gravy on this hanging scroll, wasn't it? Huh? What? Why would I do something like... Do you remember what was written in that letter? Gravely roast the master in the fires of Hades and bring our vengeance to a fruition. But you didn't know how to read the words gravely and roast, among others, right? How that? Remember the conversation you had with Miss Dunim on the night of the murder? Perhaps we can read some books together. Really? I'd love to! I, um, I'm not very good at reading. <laughs> well then, would you like to practice reading with me? Um, Mr. Leaf? So, for example, how do you read this? It says, gravely. That's kind of a tough word. Okay, it's there to make this make sense. Maybe it makes more sense in Japanese, I don't fucking know. Sure, Mr. Nim taught you how to read gravely and roast, but what she didn't teach you is what they meant. Gravely sounded like gravy to me, and the only roast I could think of was the food. And that's why you did it. That's why you covered the picture of the master in gravy from the night's pot roast. To be honest, I did think it was a bit strange. I guess I really did get the wrong idea. Just a tiny bit. I really am useless. I couldn't even burn the letter properly as my mother had asked of me. Such a simple thing. I couldn't even do it right. Oh, this is the last one. And then we move on to the trial. I... After dinner that night, I did go to the inner temple with a pot full of the leftover gravy. The gravy? I saw the picture on the hanging scroll there in the, near the sacred cavern. I was sure it was the master of Kurain, like it said in the letter. I see, and then? Well, it was already way past 10 when I got there because of all the snow, so I went to the inner temple guest area. The guest area? Yes, I thought I could wait there until the training was over. Why didn't you just go to the training hall? Because the Sigmaya's main training had already started, and I couldn't interrupt it. So I just stayed where I was and prayed for her to get through it. But then, I... Pearls, 
Did you fall asleep? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I just couldn't help it. Hey, don't worry about it, Pearl. Who cares if you fell asleep? I, fall I fell asleep waiting for Iris, too. It happens. Anyway, then you found yourself trapped at the inner temple. Yes. When I woke up, it was morning. I tried not to cry, but... Dusky Bridge wasn't there anymore, and there was no one in the training hall. I thought everyone had left me because I overslept. I threw the letter into the incinerator, then I heated up the leftover gravy and... And let off some steam by chucking the gravy on the scroll while you cried. It must have been pretty scary for you, Pearl. I know what it's like. Nick used to leave it behind when I fell asleep at school, too. Don't equate something so trivial with her experience, Larry. It was written right in my mother's letter. Letter. It said, as soon as you hear the lights out bell, you must channel her spirit. I was on my way over to the inner temple when I heard the bell ring. So you channeled Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit? No. I tried, but I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it? I never failed at channeling someone. This is the first time it's happened. I tried and I tried and I tried. Yesterday, this morning, the whole time. But I just couldn't do it. Don't let it get you down, Pearl. It'll all work out. If you want, I'll come flying through the sky for you. Whoosh! Just like that. So she never managed to channel the spirit. Is that why you think your spiritual powers are gone? Yes, I... I don't know what to do. Isn't there any other explanation for why you couldn't channel a spirit? I suppose there's one other possibility. It's not very likely, though. Could you please tell me what it is anyway? It could happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. Someone else? What do you mean? Well, there's only one of each spirit, right? Yep, it's like dating a girl, Nick. You can't see a hot chick if she's already taken. And that would mean on the night of the murder, someone else channeled her spirit before C Pearls could. I'm just ignoring what Larry said, by the way. I'm just like, shut it out. Someone else channeled the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a failure. I couldn't even grant my mother's final wish. Her final wish? Yes, this letter. This is my last wish, she said. So make sure you follow the instructions carefully. Hmm, this letter. I definitely need to find mo find out more about it. My mother has gone to a place called the penitentiary. Yeah, I know, Pearls. I visit her every month. And last month she told me. And the time we've been waiting for has come, Pearl. There's something I need you to do for me. I hid a letter for you at our home before they brought me here. I want you to read it and do exactly what it says. It's for the good of the Fae Clan, my angel. You'll be doing a great thing. Now listen carefully, and I'll tell you where the letter's hidden. My mother is always nice to me. I like her very much. Pearl. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Yeah, moms will do anything for their kids, right? She said it was for the good of the Fae Clan, so I knew I had to help her. I mean, Mystic Maya's part of the Fae Clan, so it had to be good for her, too. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Nick? I... I guess so, yeah. There was a picture with her letter, too. A picture? Of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Usually a picture is enough to channel someone's spirit, but this time... Pretty weird, huh? Like Larry knows anything about this stuff. There's something else that was strange about my mother's letter. The seal on it was broken, as if someone had already opened it once before. But sure, it's pretty strange. Someone had opened it already. Thanks, Pearls. You really helped me out. You're very welcome. My mother is watching over us, so I'm sure Mystic Maya will be alright. Look at that innocent smile on her face. What am I supposed to say to her? Finally figured it out, have you, Trite? You finally realized how terrible of a crime being painfully How terrible of a crime being painfully ob oblivious is. Gado! The entrance to the sacred cavern looks like a freaking puzzle workshop. I guess he's talking about Iris and the lock breaking effort. But it is all a waste of time. Why do you say that? 
Because Maya Fey isn't coming back. What? You don't know what you're talking about. How can you say something like that? It was your job to protect her, Trite. Can you fucking shut the fuck up? <laughs> Godot? Just like it was your job to protect Mia Fey. Two sisters, caught up in the worst circumstances. I... I realize that, but... You were the only one who was by their sides. You were the only one who could have saved them. Godot's more like it. <laughs> but I didn't know anything about what was going on. Ha. Huh. What did I just say, Trite? Being oblivious is a heinous crime in itself. Tomorrow. We'll settle everything in court tomorrow, once and for all. Oh my god, I'm like... <laughs> Mr. Nick, is... is what that man just said true? It'll be alright, Pearls. I'm sure Maya's alive. See for yourself tomorrow. I... yeah, that's right! I know I can trust you, Mr. Nick! Uh-huh! My dear Pearl, you've done so well, my child. My Pearl. It's better that you don't know what you've done. I knew this day would come for you. The blood of the main family is no more. Now finally, after all this time, the master seed is yours. My last great wish. It seems I was just in time. Hicking Morgan Fay. Fuck out of here. Okay. Now we just have the trial left. Except it's like three parts, but that's fine. We can survive that. Good morning! Oh, are you by yourself? Ah, morning, Pearls. <laughs> Please tell me what's going to happen to Mis Mystic Maya! I'm sorry. We don't know yet. The investigation is still going on, so I wasn't allowed to e plowed into the inner temple. Oh, I see. So, Sister Iris still trying to remove those trick locks in the training hall? No. She's the defendant in this case, so she can't be at the inner temple. She's required to be here in court. Uh, then how come she's not here in the defendant's lobby? I have to admit it's kind of strange. This has to be Edgeworth, right? If you're looking for Iris, she's in the prosecutor's lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Edgeworth! What's Iris doing over there? She's going over today's testimony with the prosecutor as we speak. Today's testimony? You heard me. Iris is going to be testifying as a witness for the prosecution. Wait, what? The prosecutor is squeezing her for a confession. Or so I heard. Your edgy senses are strong. <laughs> You might as well just call me Phoenix, right? <laughs> Francisca from Karma? What are you up to? I know what you're thinking, but Francisca isn't going to be the prosecutor today. What? Then who is? Who else would it be but Godot? G Godot? You know, it would have been so good if just... It could drag Edgeworth with him into the court and they would both stand... Behind the defense's desk. I'm sorry, I would love that. <laughs> Francisca is engaged in some important work at the Sacred Cavern. The Sacred Cavern? <gasps> you don't mean that she's... Exactly. She has been out there all night, trying to remove these trick locks. With the head nun's assistance, naturally. We estimate that the last of the locks should be taken care of in, in about three hours. I hope everything continues to go smoothly and we we'll receive some good news soon. Yeah, thanks, Edgeworth. Prosecutor Godot intends to nail this case shut today. Be, pre be prepared to fight like there's no tomorrow. You don't have to tell me that. Touché. I can already see it in your eyes. You're not the same fever-ridden frantic maniac you were yesterday. It's strange. On the way here, I decided that day would be the end of all this. 
Almost immediately after I made that decision, I felt myself getting stronger. Interesting. Maybe you've passed your cold onto someone else, literally. And with that, I leave the rest in your capable hands. Partner! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm sorry, did you see? Did you see his face when he said that? I'm sorry. Subtext hooms. <laughs> I still don't have answers for most of the riddles plaguing this case. He really said, partner. <laughs> like, <laughs> the circumstances around the murder of Miss Elise and him. No, I mean Miss Misty Faye. Impossible flight Larry claims to have seen. And what that woman is really after. I will solve them all and bring this whole tragedy to an end. Court is now in session for the trial of Iris of Hasakura Temple. Um, your honor? What are you... Who? Me? Well, my little brother came to visit me in my chambers earlier this morning. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, he developed a scorching fever and fainted. And therefore, I'll be standing in for him. I see, your honor. So they're brothers. That explains a lot. My poor brother. He looked a bit pale, not to mention sad that he couldn't be here. It is impossible to predict what the future has in store for any of us. And this is precisely why people feel the need to judge the past. And we of the court have been charged with the solemn duty of passing such judgment. Well said, Mr. Godot. I understood exactly what you said, at least up until the end anyway. Now then, Mr. Godot, please proceed with your opening statement. Humans are fragile, fickle beings. Our hearts change with the shifting of the tides. There is only one thing that remains a constant in this crazy world. The bitter darkness that lies at the bottom of the smug. So then you mean... Um, forget it, what do you mean? During yesterday's trial, the accused refused to admit her role in the crime. But today, she has had a change of heart. Sister Iris of Hasakura Temple has a confession to make. C confession the defendant? Iris. Why didn't she discuss this with me first? Very well. This court will now hear the defendant's confession. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, I always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. You and your fucking rules, shut the fuck up. Um, my name is Iris. I'm but a simple nun undergoing training at Hasakura Temple. Witness, is there something that you want to confess to? Yes. But first, I want to apologize to Mr. Wright. I, I can't continue lying to everyone every, anymore. It, it's alright. What is it? Mr. Wright, I have to admit that I... I did play a part in this terrible incident. Are, are you actually confessing? Are you saying that you were the one who murdered Mr. Lee's Dunim? No, I'm not, Your Honor. But I dealt with the cover-up after the murder took place. After her spirit left, I took the lifeless shell of Mr. Elise and carried it to the Hasakura Temple Courtyard where I desecrated it. What? Uh, order in the court. Order. Witness, are you, are you saying that you were an accomplice to the murder? Yes. That's correct. What? Three minutes in court and I'm already covered in the cold sweat. Huh. Everyone in the planet is an accomplice to something. It just happens to be that in this case it's to murder. Isn't that right, Mr. Trite? Ah, Gado. So this is the confession they were conferring about. Pains me to say this. But it looks like Iris's testimony was all a lie. Now then, little lady, if you don't mind, I've got a question for you. Whose crime were you trying to cover up by your actions? 
I was supposed to cover ring for someone? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely up the creek without a paddle. Or a life jacket. Been in Hasakura Temple ever since I was a little girl. Hasakura Temple is run by one of the branch families of the Kurain tradition. One of our missions is to protect the main family. I'm sorry, but main family? Yes, and that's why I would dirty myself, if need be, to protect her. The daughter of the master of the Kurain channeling technique. Mystic Maya Fei! Huh? Wake up and smell the coffee trites. Sh she's naming Maya. Order, order in the court. So not only did you witness the murder, you know the name of the murderer. I'm terribly sorry, but it's true. I saw her commit the crime with my very own eyes. And I cleaned up the area to try to protect her. That's ridiculous. Maya could never do such a. The defense will refrain from commenting commenting until the appropriate time. Now, witness, let's hear your testimony. What exactly happened on the night of the crime? Yes, Your Honor. I thought I was prepared for the unexpected, but I never imagined the case would wind up going in this direction. Sorry, I'm still reeling over the fact that Hedgeworth called Phoenix his partner. I love that for them. I went to the inner temple that night and saw it all happen in the garden. I saw Mystic Ali strike Mystic Maya with her staff. While Mystic Maya was still stumbling, Mystic Ali moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Mystic Maya tried desperately to defend herself and stole the weapon. It was only in self-defense. You can't blame her for it. Character development. He seemed so proud of himself by calling him partner too. That was so cute. That was like... That was amazing. So it wasn't self-defense? Yes. Mystic Elise was the one who attacked first. Hmm. That's why I tried my best to protect Mystic Maya. You moved the victim's body to the temple so that Maya wouldn't be suspected. Isn't that right? Not bad. You've got the instincts of a true criminal. Something's not quite right. I'm sure it was established yesterday. But Iris never went to the inner temple that night. And that the person who did go was... That woman. Iris even admitted it. Now then, Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Hmm, okay. She moved in to deliver a fatal strike. I'm sure of it. She threw down her staff and reached into her robe for a weapon. Wait a minute. What was this weapon? It, it was some kind of dagger. A dagger, huh? And at least Denim tried to stab her with this weapon. To kill Miss Faye. Yes, exactly. Huh. You look like I did after I mistakenly took a swig of Worcestershire sauce. God, it's so- it's such a dumb- It's such a dumb word, but that's actually how it's pronounced. It's Worcestershire sauce. But it's like, written like Worcestershire. But it's pronounced Worcestershire. No, Worcester. Worcestershire. That's it. It's so confusing. I- I can never spell it. It's- W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R-S-H-I-R-E -E -E. What's the share? <laughs> you have a problem with the testimony we're hearing from your client, lawyer boy. Hmm, do I have a problem with Iris' testimony? Uh... There is one thing. Your Honor, I have a small problem with the witness's testimony. Y you do? But this witness is your own client. Yes, well, nevertheless, that's fine. Witness, let's add your last statement to the testimony. Y yes, sir. Hey, just 
just a moment. It's my job to say that. Listen, Gramps. I won't say it again. Final judgment will be rendered by me. <laughs> okay, now. Let's continue. She threw her stuff away and pulled a dagger from inside her robe. Where the hell is the fucking staff? There it is. Sister Iris, there's something strange about your version of events. Huh? Miss Dunim throwing her staff away makes no sense at all to me. But, but all you can do with a staff is hit someone. Naturally, you wouldn't know this, Sister Iris, but the victim's staff had a special feature about it. As you can see, it's a sword. <gasps> if Elise Dunim really had wanted to kill Maya Fey, she wouldn't have needed to use a separate dagger. Not when she already had a beautiful blade in her hands already. Well, Sister Iris, what do you have to say? Uh. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of investigating trite. I never could have thought there was a sto- I wouldn't have- never would have thought there was a sword hidden in that staff. But even so, how should I put this? A long sword is unwieldy, and thus quite ineffective in close quarters combat. Maybe that's why she chose a dagger over her blade. Um, well... Anyway, the type of weapon she chose to use isn't what's important. The important thing is that she tried to kill Maya Fey. As long as there's nothing strange about that, there's no problem with her testimony. There is something strange about this whole testimony. Well, Mr. Wright, the prosecution has a point. Very well, Your Honor. The defense will now present evidence to back its argument. Mr. Wright! I have here another piece of evidence that shows that this testimony can't be trusted. Because Miss El Elise Denim would never attempt to take the life of Maya Fey. Elise Denim would never have attacked Maya Fey. How can you be so sure? Because the victim's real name was not Elise Denim. Her real name was... Misty Fay. Fay? No. Misty Fay. Who is this Misty Fay? Is she related to... Misty Fay is the master of the Korean channeling technique. She is also... The mother of Maya Fay. Huh. Are you serious? Is it really true? Is it right? Was Lisa Nim actually the great Mystic Misty? There's no doubt about it. Looks like Iris had no idea. I can hardly believe it. The idea that she would try to kill her only daughter, one she hadn't seen in 17 years. Perhaps the prosecution can offer some explanation for why she would do such a thing. Ha. Huh. Get wrecked, goggles boy. Order! Order in the court! Upon first hearing the witness's testimony, it seems natural enough. However, in light of some facts that have just been presented. One, that the victim supposedly threw away a sword during a fight. And two, that the two people battling to the death were mother and daughter. Despite the facts being unbelievable when taken on their own. When taken together, the entire story seems difficult to believe. Listen, there is nothing in this world that's impossible. Except for one little thing. Yes? Oh, what is this one little impossible thing? Huh. You still don't get it. You think maybe my beans are under-roasted, but you have no idea, Gramps. Um... Could you get to your point? I heard this witness's confession this morning. Just as I had taken the first sip of my eighth cup of morning coffee. You're going to ruin your health, my friend. Anyway, after hearing this woman's confession, I had a detective who loves to investigate sent to the scene of the crime. And... He discovered this little beauty. Is that the dagger the witness testified to see? Obviously, Your Honor. But do you not notice something else? Now that you mention it, if you look closely, there appears to be blood on it. Where did you find that? I didn't see that when I investigated the crime scene. Did you investigate the pine tree at the crime scene? Huh? The pine tree? 
The pine tree, that's a bonsai, but okay. I guess pine bonsai is, exist. <laughs> but, but still, it's just funny that they call it a pine tree. Pine trees don't look like that. The dagger was stuck on the, in the backside of the pine tree. When the last blow was struck, ending the violent battle between the two women, this little baby was thrown in the direction of the back of the pine tree. Which means... The blood on this dagger belongs to the victim, correct? Ha. Huh. Were you even listening, old man? I first heard this confession this morning. Just as I had taken the first sip of my 13th cup of morning coffee. Didn't you say it was your 8th just a few minutes ago? Birch? <laughs> I didn't have enough time to get the blood analyzed on such short notice. In any case, the court will accept the dagger as evidence. Furthermore, I order that a blood test be performed on it immediately. This is my sweetheart. Make sure you treat her right. Bailiff, get this piece of evidence to the crime lab for testing immediately. Now then, the testimony we've just heard had numerous unbelievable aspects to it. However, after having found the very dagger the witness spoke of, I believe we can consider her testimony to be credible. Cute girls never lie. Ever. Explain Dahlia Hawthorne, please. Please, please explain Dahlia Hawthorne to me. Sir, sir, can you please explain Dahlia Hawthorne to me? My, my little sketch of figure fell down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, little, little guy. <laughs> Gado. Gado, please. Gado, you're so wrong. Yeah. I'm palms. <sighs> My God. In any case, witness, if you could please testify again to this court. Pom poms! Um, about what, Your Honor? About the incident you saw. The battle between the two women. Y yes, Your Honor. Mystic Maya stumbled briefly after being hit over the head with the staff. But then she dodged Mystic Elise's next attack and stole her weapon. Suddenly, Mr. Elise was the one on the defensive, with her back to the stone lantern. That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Mystic Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then she collapsed. That was a very heartbreaking story. I don't know if they were. Whoa! I disappeared! <laughs> Magic trick! <laughs> it really looks like I'm wearing a hijab. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stop thinking about it. You are a wizard. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> I don't know if there were any bad feelings between them, but... It happened 17 years since Mystic Mistis. <laughs> Why is that so hard for me to say? Mystic Mistis disappearance. Perhaps they simply didn't recognize each other anymore. Hmm. That seems reasonable. Now then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross examination. Oh, I will. No, here. That's one. And the autopsy report. Objection. Something about you just isn't right today, Iris. Huh? Until now, I didn't think you were the type to make such a careless mistake. However, the testimony you just gave contains quite a few contradictions. Well, what do you mean? What's so wrong about my testimony? According to you... 
Maya Faye stabbed the victim while she had her back to the stone lantern, correct? Y yes that's right. But in that case, the victim would have been stabbed in the stomach, right? Yes, I think so. But according to the autopsy report, the cause of death was due to a blood loss from a stab wound in her back. Huh? This proves that the victim was stabbed from behind, not from the front. Sister Iris, it appears another seed of doubt has sprouted from your testimony. What? What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? Huh. It's simple. People are like books. We've got all, we've all got a front and back. You get my drift? Um, and is that all you had to say? I can also say that darkness loves to play with the human mind. Could you please knock it off with the cheesy proverbs? Proverbs and illogical metaphors already. The point is, too much of this testimony just doesn't make sense. Throwing away a useless, useful staff, the people fighting being mother and daughter. And now, she falsely claims the victim was stabbed in the stomach. Hmm, there certainly are some inconsistencies. Well, Iris, how about it? Well, it's just... If you ask me, you're just being too naive about the whole thing. What do you mean? There are 253 distinct types of bitterness in coffee. But to pick out each one requires total concentration and the use of all the senses. Were you really concentrating on that on what this witness actually said? Prosecutor Godot, explain yourselves. Yourself. He's one person. <laughs> Not like Iris. <laughs> The witness was quite unambiguous about her own ambiguities when she said that the garden was dark and she couldn't see clearly. A human needs one thing to see clearly, and that is light. Light. By the way, did you know, Hasekura has a rule that on nights when an acolyte is, in, is at the inner temple training, the stone lantern in the garden must be kept lit. Hmm, I did wonder what that stone lantern was there for. Well, if that's true, shouldn't the witness have been able to see the crime more clearly? Normally, yes, Your Honor. But according to the head nun, Sister Bikini, on the night of the crime, it was impossible to light that stone lantern. Impossible? It hadn't been used in a long time and the wick was no good. In other words, it had to have been nearly pitch black in the garden that night. There could have been a faint light coming from this training hall, but that's all. It was about to say, but what about, like, uh, the night sky? But then I was like, oh yeah, that's right, it was snowing, first of all. And then there was also thunder and lightning, so yeah. No, it wouldn't have been that easy. Most enlightening. Yes, that illuminating fact has chased all the contradictions away. If the staff was dropped, it would be difficult to see. It also explains why they didn't recognize each other. We can't see the demons that lurk in the night. That's why humans are weak. Isn't that right, right? <laughs> no! Order! 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 Here, your honor. Let me present the stone lantern into evidence. Maybe it will rekindle the flame of truth in your mind. Why is the judge just sitting there with that look on his face? What's wrong, your honor? Was that flame too hot? This lantern. There's something written on it. Why? It's written in blood. Oh boy. So the judge didn't know about that yet. Written in blood? It, it says... It says Maya upside down. What the? Oh yes, that's right. After being cornered and then stabbed by Mystic Maya, Mystic Elise didn't fall down right away. She must have been writing that on the stone lantern behind her. With the blood that was draining out of her body. Hmm, it certainly looks that way. Hang on, 
Hang on just a minute. What are you talking about? What do you mean, what are we all talking about? We're talking about the message written in blood. Huh, nonsense. This lantern. It's as clean as a whistle. C could it be? He can't see the bloody writing at all. Now that I think of it, he did say something to me yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. So that's what he meant by that. In any case, this is obviously an important clue. We now know that the crime scene was dark. And that the victim scrawled this message on the stone lantern. Well, Mr. Godot, anything further? M Mr. Godot? Uh, um... Okay then, let's move on. Godot is literally shaking, and somehow I don't think it's from the caffeine overdose. And I believe- sorry. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the- <laughs> I believe it has now been established that Mr. Nim was killed by Maya Fey. Th that's just wrong. No, it's time to turn our attention to you. Yes, sir. After the victim died, you did something, didn't you? Let's hear it. We're all ears. After Mystic Elise died, I called out to Mystic Maya. I thought it was my duty to protect the future of future master of the Kurain tradition. So I removed the body from the inner temple by myself. I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Then I used a snowmobile to carry it back to Hasagura Temple and... I used a shichisto to alter the way the wound looked. So you moved the body? Yes, I was raised at Hasagura Temple. I owe a great deal of thanks to the Fae Clan. But even so, I never imagined... That at least the Nim was actually Misty Fae. I... I've committed a terrible sin. Hmm. And a terrible trick of faith. Fate. I believe you're looking for a twist of fate, Your Honor. I intended to return to the inner temple after taking care of the body, but... You were spotted by the head nun, correct? Yes, and that's why I couldn't go back. Your story makes sense, I suppose. Mr. Wright, go ahead with your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. The snowmobile? I knew that would show up late sooner or later. Yes, I had the key. I used the snowmobile to travel from Hasakura Temple to Tuski Bridge. This is the part that was in question the other day. Should I ask for more details? Tracks. If you really did move her body by snowmobile, then there should be tracks left in the snow, right? Well, yes, naturally you would expect tracks. And this picture was presented at yesterday's trial. Are these the tracks from that ride? Y yes, I think they are. But I can only see one set of tracks here. I don't see what's so strange about that. Snow was still falling when they left Hasekura Temple. I see. Snow was still falling, huh? And then when the murder took place, it had already stopped. That's why there are such fresh-looking tracks. Hmm. And how about it, Mr. Wright? What do you think about this testimony? Important, apparently. When the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. It doesn't make sense if you stack it up against the other evidence. Your Honor! I like the statement Iris just made added to the testimony. B but... Does it have something to do with the case? All will be made clear if you allow her statement to be allowed to be added to the record. Ha! Huh. This should be fun. Oh, it's it's the ball. Right, it's the orb. You, let's get the snow business cleared up, shall we? Yes, sir. By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Uh, na, 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 na. Nope. That's not it. Sorry, I went to press it first. It. 
There have been a lot of contradictions in your testimony so far. This time, are you sure it's all true? Yes, I am. When the murder happened, the snow had already stopped. According to you, that's why the snowmobile tracks were so clear. That's right. I'm certain of it. I think I've trapped her this time. I see how you think. Snow, huh? What is going on here? If the snow really had stopped by the time of the murder... I didn't mean there's a bigger hole in her story than that movie, The Grid, Revelation. Is it fucking... The Matrix? Really? <laughs> huh. Well then, Mr. Trite. Perhaps you'd like to share your theory with us. Let's see what's up with your... What's up your sleeve. Or rather, at the end of your index finger. I don't want to believe it. But I don't think my logic is failing me. Iris is trying to pin the murder on Maya. Why would she want to do that? There's only one reason I can think of. Mm. Uh, then the weather data. Okay, I see. You claim that the snow had already stopped when the murder occurred. But I'm sorry, Iris. That just isn't possible. Oh, well, it's the orb and also the fact that there was no snow, like, around the lantern. What? This is the weather data from th the night of the murder. According to this, the snow didn't stop until 10.50pm. But you couldn't have crossed Dusky Bridge at that time. Well, why do you say that? Because five minutes before the snow stopped, Dusky Bridge was struck by lightning and had caught on fire. What did you say? The, the bridge... it was on fire? You don't mean to say you didn't know about it. It was because of that lightning strike that the bridge burned down. What? But it can't... it can't be... It looks like you still haven't figured it out. No matter how hard you try to deceive or conceal the truth, you can't pull the wool, wool over the eyes of, of a real defense attorney. Order! 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 The bridge was already on fire when the incident took place. That's right. The inner temple was already totally cut off from the outside world. There's no way you could have crossed the bridge. Body or no body. <gasps> Witness, even my patience has its limits. Any further lying and I will find you in contempt of court. Do you have anything to say for yourself? The only person here that is truly contemptible is you. Old man. Me? How dare you! Whether this witness lied or not does not mean squat. Doesn't mean squat right now. S squat? The important thing now is to find out the truth. Isn't that right? Y yes, of course, but whether it was, a s it was snowing or not snowing, or whether the bridge was burning or not, there are true facts that can't can't be disputed. First, the body of Elise Dunim was discovered in the Hasakura Temple courtyard. And second, the head nun, Sister Bikini, witnessed Iris desecrating Elise Dunim's body. He makes a good point on both accounts. That's right! I'm not lying! What are you claiming this time? I wasn't myself at all that night. So my memory is still somewhat hazy. You have stood at that witness stand and testified this entire time. Are you telling us now that your memory of that night is hazy? It is only human to err. If you're so perfect, Trite, maybe you can explain this for the court. What is it? When the murder happened, the bridge had already burnt down. But somehow, the body traveled across the bridge and was found in the temple courtyard. Perhaps you have some kind of perfect explanation for this magic little magic trick. Ugh, well, not exactly, no. I know there must be some other way she got across that burned out bridge. Unless I can somehow demonstrate it. I'll never know the truth. It looks like the defense is not prepared to offer a suitable explanation. See what I mean? In other words... You're in no position to suggest that this lady's testimony isn't the truth. Ah! 
All right, then. Witness, let's hear your testimony once more. About what, Your Honor? You've admitted that you've moved the body victim's body. Nevertheless, your prior testimonies contained a la rather large inconsistency. Please add an explanation for that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Will this be her final testimony? Yes. <laughs> Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. So I... I must have just... gotten confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling, or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? Why are you saying that there is a way to cross a burning bridge? Hmm, so it was just a misunderstanding. I see. This is a photo of Dusty Bridge after it burned down from lightning blast. From the lightning blast. It was taken on the morning after the incident. You fly, of course. It certainly was burned to a crisp and one of the suspension wires even snapped. It's amazing the whole bridge didn't fall. Clearly, it would be impossible to carry a corpse across the bridge in this condition. Unless I do something to discredit this testimony, it's going to be deemed as the truth. Maya will be accused of murder. Trite. I'm not only going. I'm only going to say that one more time. It is only human to err, and only humans can spot the errors of our ways. The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. All right, Mr. Wright, please begin your final cross-examination. <sighs> okay, cool. Just gotta... Objection. A dead body flying over a burning bridge. I wouldn't exactly rule out the possibility. W what? Huh. You're saying it's possible. Don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. I don't know about that. In any case, we have a witness who did see it happen. Preposterous! Who is it? Who is this witness? I can't chicken out here. I gotta keep on the attacking. Go, go, go! Miss Elise Denim's brilliant and highly gifted apprentice. Larise Dunim. Brilliant. Highly gifted. Apprentice? Remember what he said in his testimony. That night he was at the mountain shack, Heavenly Hall. And that's when he witnessed the event. I think you've all seen this sketch before. It's an exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Now you're serious. Today is not April Fool's Day, is it? Mr. Wright, are you seriously claiming that the victim flew through the air? And you're using this pathetic scribble to support your argument. Uh-oh, the judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. Huh. <laughs> well, Trite, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, does this sketch prove anything? I yes, I'm pretty sure it does, and I'm going to prove it. Listen, I know your tricks. You're trying to turn this whole thing upside down. If you're so eager to turn this case upside down, why not start with this sketch? Upside down? Why did Godot say that? Alright then, let's hear the defense's theory. What exactly is this sketch trying to show? I don't think old Whiskerface is going to forgive any more mistakes. All right, Phoenix, look carefully and think it over. The sketch drawn by Laurie's the Nim is... Apparently, this is, this is a fun one, so let's try this. Something is obviously funny about this sketch. I'm no art critic, but even I can see that. No, 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 that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Larise de Nim stated it over and over, that this sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, if we're to believe his testimony, then the sketch contradicts reality as we know it. Uh, 
Oh no, wait. This is this is the correct one. It was the other one that contradicts reality? Huh. This is getting interesting. Looks like you're back to that finger pointing thing again. Okay, trite. So what exactly contradicts reality as we know it? I mean, this. This flying figure, naturally. After all, people haven't learned to fly yet. Or did I miss something? Mr. Wright, that answer just now... It was lethal. Mr. Wright, after dragging us all the way to this point, the, that answer was embarrassing. Okay, cool, whatever. It was so embarrassing, I'm actually blushing. Blushing only suits women, not the elderly. Anyway, what now? Point to something else. Your Honor, please give me one more chance. I'm in a tight spot now. What I really need to do is turn this case upside down. So it's time for me to flip things around and get them straight again in my head. Do you know what you're saying this time? Larissa the name stated it over and over. Yeah, okay. Exactly as you saw it, I know. This wire connected to the bridge. The wire? Huh. Is that the thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. Then show us the reality it, suppo it supposedly conflicts with. Show us something that will point out how the sketch contradicts reality. And that's a photo of the skip bridge, correct? Yes, now compare the sketch and the photo for a minute. In the sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. But on the actual dusky bridge... Jumping Jehoshaphat! The wires are below the guard wires. What?! Order! 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 This sketch is somewhat different than what's depicted in the photo. However... Isn't it likely that the artist just saw it wrong? Or perhaps he just drew it wrong? Either way, it sounds like you're just wrong. With someone like Loris, I admit a- <laughs> Why is he actually calling him Loris now? I admit a mistake is a definite impossibility. But then that begs the question. Why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? Listen, think back, all right? Remember what R Loris was doing when he witnessed this event. He was at Heavenly Hall, waiting for a lover that was never going to come. But like, this, this, the angle of this doesn't make sense. Oh no, you're wash. He waited and waited, and finally he laid down. But then, lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge aflame. Now ponder what sort of position Loris must have been in at the time. He was lying on his back, which is why he remembered the scene the way he did. He was lying on his back? I can't see how it relates. But it does, your honor. That is the reason why the wires in the sketch go up instead of down. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, no way. Loris did him witness the event while he was lying on his back, face up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually upside down. So then, this sketch should actually... I think you finally get it, Your Honor. The correct way to view Loris Dunim's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. That's right. Just like a pendulum. Ridiculous! Order! 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 Of all the things to say, pendulum. The bridge was burning to a crisp, there was no way to get across it. But if the body had been found at the inner temple, it would have caused problems. This is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. They used the burning bridge to get the body across to the other side. And a pendulum was the only way to get it done. But what if it failed? <laughs> Let's think about this for a mi minute, shall we? The dusky bridge is about 20 yards long, which means it's about that far from the inner temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds right. 
in order to cover that distance with a pendulum. You'd need a rope at, at least at least 10 yards long. To get a rope that long, you have to plan ahead. The lightning strike that night can only have been an accident. So it doesn't make sense that the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then... They didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just a matter of using what was already there. In that case, Mr. Wright, please give us an explanation to support your theory. What makes you think the criminal had the rope on hand to create a pendulum? Yeah. And the meaning of this is, if you want to know where the rope came from, it's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard. Huh? This, this is one of the wires from the bridge. When the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire, one of the suspension wires came loose from its anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to waste, so they tied the wire around Elise Denim's body. Because there was simply no other way to move the body. Mr. Godot? Hmm. And it seems that Mr. Godot is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. And it seems that the odds of a rope being readily available were very high. So I suppose that it's not Im an impossibility after all. Possible or impossible? That's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? Trite. I wonder if you can prove what happened to us. Do you have any actual evidence that the body was swung over like a pendulum? Oh yeah, her autopsy report, right? Because she fell 10 feet. Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo, one of the wires snapped. Looking at the map, we can see it's, it's the one that was in front of the inner temple. Okay, yeah, that is actually long enough. But still, you'd need, you would need a lot of momentum. To um, to get it to, to go the way you wanted it to. What if it failed? What if it just ended up dangling down there? So then, that was the spot where the criminal... Yes, precisely. Now let us consider the body's movement by looking at the overhead map again. If the body was pushed from this point here... It would drop on the opposite bank at approximately this point. Did you say drop? Well, they must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. What? What makes you think something like that happened? Because I have evidence that should just suggest her body dropped some distance. What kind of evidence? Take a look at this. Autopsy report. It says here that her body fell about 10 feet after her death. 10 feet, huh? That's most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body overswung due to the forward momentum but then came loose and fell about 10 feet. Okay, they actually do address it. And then as a result of the landing impact, this crystal sphere was knocked loose. That's... Yes, this bloodstained amethyst crystal. It's the one that came off of Miss Elise Denim's staff. And even more important is the place where this crystal sphere was found. In indeed. I believe it's already marked on this overhead map. The crystal was found. <laughs> Precisely, Your Honor. In the very spot where the pendulum would arrive if given the right amount of speed. This explains your theory quite well, Mr. Wright. You have provided us with a way the body could have been moved that night. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. He just got coffee in his face again, didn't he? Yep. Thought I heard something. Mr. Wright! 
I thought this cold coffee might help cool you down. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Godot? Where do the coffee cups come from? That was a dark and bitter guess you that you made, Trites. But you forgot about one thing. Oh, and what would that be? The aroma. Huh? The coffee's most reliable accomplice is its deep and profound aroma. Um, the rest of the court doesn't speak coffee knees. Can you elaborate a bit more? If the criminal had sent the body to the other side, like you say. But naturally, there must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So who collected the body? What do you have to say about that, Trite? Mr. Godot is correct. This can be the work this can't be the work of a single person. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. The body couldn't have made it to Hasakura Temple without an accomplice. Very well then, if you please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person that received the body on the Hasakura Temple side? Um. Iris. It can only be you, Sister Iris. Huh? Ah! But I... I... I don't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Bridge is by snowmobile. But with her bad back, Sister Bikini could never pick up a body like that. You're the only one that could have managed it. Trite, were you even listening to the witness's testimony? On the night of the crime, this little cutie pie was on cleanup duty in the inner temple garden after the mother-daughter mother bloodbath. I haven't forgotten, but have you, Mr. Godot? This witness was also seen at Hasakura Temple, desecrating the corpse of the victim. Hmm. Strange indeed. It's almost as if, on that night, the defendant was in two different places at the same time. Sister Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? M mention what? The pendulum, of course. Using the sketch drawn by an eyewitness. I have established how the body was moved using the burnt-out bridge. Which means it's now a fact that this occurred... This occurred, something you should have already known. N no! I, I had no idea! I, I didn't know anything about a pendulum! But the body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. So you should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about this whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? What? What kind of nonsense is this? You, you're saying this witness isn't Iris of Hasakura Temple? Are you serious, Trite? You mean, this woman is... There's no one besides Iris that could, could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it. Now I know why I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why your whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. And why she's trying to pin this murder on Maya. The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... I never thought I'd have to utter your name again, let alone see you. It's been a long time. Dahlia Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you were looking at her. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings some bells. Distant bells, but bells nonetheless. Huh. It's just your imagination, Gramps. This file contains all the relevant data about Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh yes, I remember now. In that case, five years ago. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all mine. But, but according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead. It says her execution was carried out last month.
so what? Death has no meaning in this courtroom. What? Order, order, order. Wait a moment. How can you? My sister, she's already dead. What, what kind of? You of all people should already understand. After all, the blood of the master of the Kurain channeling technique flows within that body. The Kurain channeling technique? Now where have I heard that? That's right, you're not Dahlia Hawthorne herself. You're the spirit of Dahlia, currently inhabiting the body of a spirit medium. What an exciting story. Exciting, but quite impossible. You're asking us to buy that Dahlia Hawthorne just happened to be channeled by someone. On the very night of the murder to a temple where her twin sister Iris was. Well, if you're going to put things that way, then yes. We're supposed to believe a coincidence like that just happens. Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written right here in these instructions. Huh. What's that? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay. And part of the plan called for and part of the plan called for Dahlia Hawthorne to be channeled. That night, there were two irises at Hasakura Temple. Two of them? Even the time when the channeling was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell, in other words, 10 p.m. However, Iris was seen before dinner time. And that means the Iris that was at dinner was the real Iris. And the Iris who gave me this hood in the main hall was also the real I Iris. Meaning that the Iris sister Bikini saw the inner temple, dinner temple, was someone else dress dressed as her, namely one Dahlia Hawthorne. Do you even know what you're saying, Trite? This whole channeling the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne business. Yes, it's true that you found plans that talk about it. However, there's one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness... In the witness stand is the real Iris. Wh what? Oh, it was the dinner temple. <laughs> Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dahlia Hawthorne that had been channeled would have been stranded at the inner temple due to, due to the lightning strike. It was later that the body was moved by pendulum. That's right. Naturally, that would mean that the iris that received the body was the real iris. Are you with me so far? Yes. After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hasakura Temple's main hall. Listen, I know this. I know this. FPS in that cutscene, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've done this case, like, twice. And I'm still confused. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what was, what was, like, what happened here? I was like, huh? Like, I know what happened, and I'm still confused. <laughs> After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hasekura Temple's main hall. There, they found Iris in her room and arrested her. And ever since, she's been under police supervision at the, det at the detention center. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly! So... It for some reason, it just does it, and it's not that it's a forgettable case, because it's not by any means, but you just forget for, for some reason. Like, you, you've you played the trilogy once before, too. Haven't you? Well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> yeah, you do remember what happened in the last game? Well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> But you, you just don't remember. For some reason, you just don't remember. <laughs> like, I had forgotten all about the pendulum. And I recently played this case. Last year. I swear, I started replaying the trilogy last year on my 3DS.
And I already forgot. Well, it's either last year or it's like the year before. I'm not too sure about that, but I remember I was in the old apartment, so I... when I, At least when I started, maybe when I finished too, so it's... Maybe a, a year or two ago, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Can't deny any of that. Goodness! It looks like he's finally convinced. Something still seems off. Way off. <laughs> the last time I played this game was June 22nd, 2020. Wait, let me go grab my, my 3DS real quick. I can check too. Okay, let's see here. Here is the activity log. Ah! And the suffer library, I guess. That's the spirit of justice, that's not the one. Trilogy. Last played. Okay, so it was in uh, 2019. I see. Well, yeah, actually, that makes sense, but still, I... Damn. Interesting. Even more interesting is that I first played it the 11th of November in 2016, and I last played it, uh... 7th of July, 2019. <laughs> but it, it, it's kind of good though that you don't remember like some of the twists. <laughs> Type it. Still not convinced that the iris here is the same one from the other night. Huh. I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. Exactly, it makes it worth it to replay it. And I, I remember that I didn't remember this the last time I played it either, so like... Like the, like the real iris and the spirit of Dahlia somehow switched places. Which places? To be perfectly honest, there are still quite a few things I don't understand, but I do know that unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. Iris doesn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia. Which means... They must have switched places somewhere. Well, Mr. Wright, I'm like in just a giant question mark right now. I'm like, eh? <laughs> I remember this. Mr. Wright, since the time she was arrested at Hasakura Temple, have there been any chances for Iris to switch places with Dahlia Hawthorne? There was one. Your Honor, I think there might have been one chance. Oh, explain yourself. Yesterday, for a few minutes, Iris, Iris's whereabouts were unknown. Unknown? What do you mean? What I mean is... There was a span of time in which Iris was able to move, up, move about freely unsupervised well who was it who would give a murder who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that i'm sorry i know you didn't mean to it wasn't your fault the person who gave iris a chance to freely move about was edward this is mr edgeworth isn't it your honor there was a fairly large earthquake yesterday, was there not? An earthquake? Hmm. Earthquake! Oh my goodness, the inner temple! This kind of tremor might... <laughs> C 
could a spirit medium channel the spirit of another spirit medium who is currently channeling another spirit? I don't think that's how it works, unfortunately. Could I have... She fled. She escaped. We went to the inner temple right away. And it's true, Iris was already there. However, they had already switched places by that point in time. When I arrived at, arrived at the training hall, I was met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. Th th that's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here, no judge in his right mind would consider the idea of spirit channeling. Be quiet. It's been a long time, Mr. Judge. Th th that voice. Guess I'll have to ask again. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, I always ask for her name and profession. It's one of my rules. Dahlia Hawthorne, in my current profession, permanently retired. Huh. So you're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. There's really nothing you can do to punish me. What is going on here? Talia Hawthorne. I never thought we'd meet again, and I never thought we'd meet like this. But this time, I'll end it. For her, and for myself. Okay, sweet. I need to go get some chocolate because I'm getting kind of... Hungry? I guess... I guess cup ramen really isn't like the most nutritious, huh? <laughs> I'll be right back. ただいま。ね。It's a Norwe Norwegian version of Kit Kats, except they're better than Kit Kats because Kit Kats are tasteless. Norwegian chocolate is where it's at, or Swiss, I guess, but Norwegian chocolate is what I have access to, so. Norwegian milk chocolate, though. It's amazing. Hmm. Okay, second part of the trial. Hmm. Hmm. Now then, let's continue where we left off, shall we? Well, witness. <laughs> yes. How can I help you, Mr. Judge? Well, it seems that if we were to uh, that if we're to learn the truth, we'll need to hear your testimony. I have no problem with that. But when you see what I have, sometimes the truth is better left unknown. In any case, let's hear your testimony. Tell us about the plan that was carried out that night. Listen, I don't fucking know. The whole plan began with my death. A stupid plan hatched by Morgan Fay to install her own daughter as the next master. But for it to work, 
Maya Fei would first have to die. The idea was for me to kill Maya and then have the blame pinned on Iris. The plan went wrong, but it seems to have succeeded anyway. Hmm, so that means you... Wait a minute! Did you just say the plan was to kill Maya Fei? Yes. You have a problem with that? Don't give us that nonsense. There's no way that... Watch yourself, Trite. If you got a problem, solve it during cross-examination. That's one of my rules. Mr. Good always correct. And by the way, that's one of my rules as well. Kill Maya. Could it be true? Oh, I forgot to switch to the next page. You were executed last month, correct? Yes, I was hanged. It wasn't exactly pleasant. I don't think people do that anymore. <laughs> Ma'am? Huh. No, I believe hanged is the correct term. Or the connect, um, correct, connect, correct, um, tense. Dun, dun, dun. Um, the penalty, Japan. Capital punishment is a legal penalty in Japan. It is applied in practice only for murder, and executions are carried out by hanging. Well, <laughs> I guess the more you know, <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Apparently they do. I did not know about that. That's terrifying. <laughs> How did you manage to discuss the plan? When did you talk with Morgan Fay? Last year. She was transferred to the same detention center as me. Since I was in death row and she was my mother. It was actually pretty easy to meet with her. I see. So that's when you discuss the plan. Huh. Are you crazy? At first, that woman was planning to kill me as well. Even though I'm her own daughter. Ultimate Pearl Fay, the master of Kurain. She's a cold, twisted woman. She thought she could finally regain her lost honor. The honor she lost when her younger sister, Misty, took her place as the master. Ever since that day, she's been working on this plan. Hmm, a plan, huh? We're talking about Pearl Fay, is that correct? I have to press everything. Yes, though at first she had high hopes for the two of us. You and your twin sister, Iris. That's correct. Fortunately, neither of us had much spiritual power. That's why we were abandoned by her, along with our father. A abandoned? The only person I ever cared, really cared about in life was myself. My sister was a nuisance, so I convinced my father to leave her at an old temple. You mean Iris? Yes, my father and married a woman who also had a daughter. The less children you have, the more money there is to go around, right? And, to, and on top of that, my father had absolutely no interest in children in general. How horrible. The really horrible one was that woman. That bitter, vengeful woman. It was her stubbornness that gave birth to that child, Pearl Fay. She was born with an abundance of spiritual power. Unfortunately for her... Morgan heaped all of her broken hopes and dreams onto that poor child's back. No 
all because of her pathetic dreams of having her bloodline become the main family. Oh my god. Maya would have to die, but why? For a bloodline to succeed as the main family, thus making Pearl the new master. The remaining descendants of the current master had to be taken care of. But Pearls would never agree to a plan like that. She adores Maya. How sad. You still don't get it, do you? What Pearl wanted had nothing to do with it. Morgan didn't care one bit about Pearl. The only thing she cared about was the position of the master. That's all. That's ridiculous. She was willing to sacrifice anything and anyone to achieve her goal. The life of her daughter. And na naturally, the life of Maya Faye as well. How could anyone do that? You, you were going to kill Maya? Pearl didn't need to know anything about it. All she had to do was to follow the instructions in the letter and channel me. Then I would have, then I would have simply used her body and finished the job. In any case, I'm already dead, and there's nothing any of you can do to me. <laughs> So the plan was to blame the crime on your younger twin, on Sister Iris of Hasagura Temple. She and I look absolutely identical. No one can tell us apart. If someone were to witness me killing Maya, naturally they would think it was Iris that had done it. And the witness in this case was the head nun, Sister Bikini. I never would have guessed she was going to return to Hasagura Temple that night. But she wound up seeing Iris's crime anyway. Except for the hair color, of course. You don't mean you dye your hair in, like, a few seconds? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, like, trying to, like, imagine her, like, walking around with, like, this hairspray. Like, this, not, like, this, uh, like, hair color spray. Which is basically just, basically just hair color with, like, paint, no, hairspray with paint in it. That's pretty much it. But not, like, paint paint. You know, it's like paint that's able to get washed out. I tried, I have like a white one. I tried to put it in my hair once, but it was just, it just turned out sticky and just awful. And I was like, mm, no, I don't think so. But why would you want to pin the murder on Iris in the first place? She's your twin sister, isn't she? Twin sister? Don't make me laugh. She's nothing but a backstabber. I couldn't care less about her. Stabber? You just don't understand. You never will. Anyway. Y you think the plan was a success? You heard me. Just as that woman had hoped. Maya Faye's dead. Now the title of the master will pass on to Profe. That's absurd. Maya is just... She's just trapped. Trapped inside the sacred cavern. Really? You're as foolishly optimistic as ever, aren't you? My darling Feeny? Do you want to know the truth? Ever since we met, I've despised you. Your sniveling naivete and your pathetic faith in other people. I just want to know one thing. What did you personally think of Morgan Faye's plan? I told you already, didn't I? It was a stupid plan. I had It had no point, no value other than fulfilling her own greedy desires. Also, I have a, an, uh, like an orange spray like that too. <laughs> I was gonna use it for Halloween, but it just... It never happened. <laughs> yes, it was certainly nothing to be proud of. That's how you feel. Why did you help her carry it out? Why would you do it? Why would you kill Maya? You may not understand being the kind and gentle soul that you are. You may not be able to appreciate why someone like me would help a woman like that. So tell me, why? Isn't it obvious? I'm not like that woman. I only act in my own self-interest. The reason I helped her was for myself. For my own personal satisfaction. What did you say? So this woman, Dahlia Hawthorne. She had her own reason for wanting Maya dead. Do you understand why I would kill Maya Faye now? 
But my goal was... Could it be that your actual goal had nothing to do with Maya Faye herself? As I said, none of you have the power to punish me anymore. Because I'm already dead. Well, I have the same problem, you see. You can't punish the dead, and you can't take revenge against them either. Y you wanted to take revenge on someone. I was sentenced to die because of that woman, Mia Faye. Somehow I knew this was it. I wanted to send her a message. It was at her hands that I suffered my first hum humiliation. I wanted her to feel the same pain she made me feel. Sadly, when I realized revenge was impossible, I gave up. And the reason it was impossible was it perhaps because Mia Faye had already died. Yes, and I realized there's only one way to take revenge against the dead. And how do you do that? Even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. I wanted to take away the person that Mia Fey loved most. I wanted to kill her with my own hands. That would be the one and only way I could take my revenge against Mia Fey. Oh, don't mind. That was the reason I helped out with that woman's plans. Just for that? For that you would kill Maya? Your goal was no different than that of Morgan Fay. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. What a cruel plan. Cruel, cold, and heartless. Huh. Don't waste your time preaching to the dead. I've already told you, there's not a thing you can do to me. <laughs> At night... At about 9.30 p.m., I materialized into this world. I quickly pinned my hair up and put on a demon warding hood. Then I picked up the staff that was by my side and left Hasakura Temple. So, it was Elise Dunim who channeled her after all. That ridiculous head nun never noticed a thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. The way her face just fucking... <laughs> She left Maya Faye at the inner temple and wobbled back, clutching her poor old back. What did you do then? That kid was easier to handle than I had hoped. I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out the dagger I got from the storeroom and... Her face looks like it's made out of jello. Mm -hmm. So then you... You're saying you... Stab Maya! It's strange, but... I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. What does that mean? No clear memory? I don't know. I think... I think I was stabbed. You were stabbed? At the last minute, Maya Faye must have stabbed me. I'm sure of it. It's not like her at all. Maya wouldn't stab a french fry with a plastic fork. Anyway, I suddenly lost consciousness. But before I did, I scrawled her name on the lantern. Just as I was passing out, I roped Maya behind my back. I had hoped it would cast suspicion on her. I can't believe she was thinking of that until the bitter end. Hi again. That's where my memory temporarily stops. It it stops? I don't have any memory of actually killing Maya Faye with my own two hands. My very last memory was... Maya's terror-filled eyes. When I woke up after that, I was in the sacred cavern surrounded by darkness. You were in the sacred cavern. The entrance was sealed with one of those trick locks. Somehow I had been trapped in there. But how did you wind up in there? I'd like to know that myself. Anyway, I was worried. I didn't know whether or not Maya Faye was dead. And I swore I wouldn't return to the underworld until I knew I had killed her myself. Hmm. For a ghost, you're one tough cookie. I wanted to get out of there and make sure she was dead. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out. The trick lock stopped you. Huh. I didn't know how to remove it. So then you're saying... You were actually confined against your will inside the sacred cavern. Yes, I wanted to get rid of that annoying lock as soon as possible. 
But it wasn't easy. I kept getting interrupted while I was working on it. Interrupted? It was early in the morning. But someone came into the training hall. What? Who? Could it have been... Maya? I thought the same thing. But I couldn't see. Why not? If someone had spotted me, I would have lost my chance to take revenge. So I made sure to hide myself well at the back of the sacred cavern. Morning. Only two people could have gone into the training hall. Maya and... Pearls. Pearls went there to cover the hanging scroll in gravy. Still, I managed to remove the lock. But... It was too late. What do you mean by that? The flies had already started to gather. The bridge had been fixed and the police had started their investigation, correct? Naturally, I couldn't go out. So instead, I returned to the cavern and put the lock back on myself. I realized I wouldn't get a chance to see Maya's corpse as I had hoped. But just then, Lady Luck showed up. Lady Luck? After that big earthquake, she showed up all by herself. real iris she said she'd come to make sure the sacred cavern was all right stupid girl i came out from the sacred cavern and got a feel for the situation and i locked her away in my place i had finally learned exactly what had happened it was then that i learned that the plan had actually succeeded what do you mean your plan had succeeded? I had misunderstood one thing, you see. That night, the one that had summoned me. I had assumed that it was Pearl Fay. Well, of course you would have assumed that it was written in the instructions. But I was wrong. The person that had actually called my spirit back was... Misty Fay, the picture book author. Wh what? Well, that's really the only possibility, isn't it? After I lost consciousness in the garden, it was her body that was left lying there. My Fay, I wasn't able to kill her with my own hands after all. But even so, I made her commit the most vile sin a human can commit. And that is? Matricide. The sin of killing her own mother. <laughs> no way! Order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of this? It's true that I was the one who attacked Maya Fay, but even so, the murderer who had actually snuffed out Misty Fay's life was none other than your darling little Maya. R ridiculous! It's nonsense! Are you sure about that? Just think about it. There's even evidence supporting these facts, isn't there? What? What do you mean? What is this so-called evidence? The fact that Maya Fey has disappeared is evidence enough, isn't it? Huh? The idea that she's still in the sacred cavern is just ridiculous. She wasn't able to escape from the inner temple that much that much is obvious. In that case, there is only one place she could be. Where? Do I have to spell it out? The bottom of Eagle River. Where else? E Eagle River. Faye killed her long-lost mother. Can you imagine the guilt she must have felt when she realized that? That's why she threw herself into the Eagle River. Most bodies that wind up in there are lost forever. So, what do you have to say now? Beanie? Mm. Uh. Oops. Sorry. It's my phone. What kind of ringtone is that? Godot here. Okay. Thanks. Was it something important? It's a nice ringtone. Yeah, I think so too. Soothing. I mean, yes, both her and Phoenix survived the jump, but listen, in Phoenix's case, 
it makes sense. Hers was just dumb luck. It, but in Phoenix's case, it makes it makes mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> we just finished removing the locks from the sacred cavern. That's great. What about Maya? There was a woman in the cave. Was it Maya Faye? It was the accused, Sister Iris. Huh? Don't look so surprised. I locked her in there yesterday. I just finished telling you that. So, what about Maya? Where is she? There was no one else found inside the sacred cavern. No, it can't be. I told you, didn't I? She's dead. No. No! It seems that this case has come to an end. A tragic end. Count your spit of clear mediums. Oh my god. Sadly, it appears the killer of Elise Denimis, also known as Misty Faye, was her own daughter, Maya Faye. Overcome with guilt for what she had done. Maya Faye jumped to her death into the raging waters of the Eagle River. It can't be. Huh. Oh, it's you. Huh. I mean, I'm sure to figure. Trites, have you ever heard this one? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. No matter how improbable it may seem. Well, what is that supposed to mean, Prosecutor Godot? According to this witness, Maya Faye threw herself into the Eagle River. However, is that really the truth? Remember, this woman testified earlier that the bridge was already on fire when the murder was taking place in the garden. Which means if, if Maya had thrown herself into the river, it must have been from the inner temple side, near the bridge. That's right. That's where she jumped from. means I should jump luck. <laughs> but that's impossible. It's impossible to jump into the river from there. Wh what? Don't get your panties all twisted up, Trite. Just relax and think through the whole thing again. This is the same as uh, in uh, the turn about memories, I guess. So it's impossible? Maya couldn't have thrown herself into Eagle River? Well, Mr. Wright. Miss Hawthorne claims Miss Faye threw herself into the river from the inner temple side. Do you have any evidence that refutes this claim? I mean, it's the map. It's impossible to jump into the Eagle River from the inner temple side. No one knows that better than this witness. What did you say? Eleven years ago, you jumped into the very same river. Just take a look at this overhead map. As you can see, below the cliff on the inner temple side, is a big rock shelf. Oh, oh, you're right, you're right. She wouldn't have reached the river if she had jumped off from there. In other words, if she had jumped, we should be able to see her body in this photo. Huh, huh. so you finally figured it out. You... No! Uh, order! Order! You... You're just playing with me! Maya Faye's body is at the bottom of the Eagle River. There's nowhere else she could possibly be hiding. Miss Hawthorne, have you ever heard this one before? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Yes, just a few minutes ago. They fixed it, obviously. It was 11 years ago. Obviously, they must have fixed it at some point. Maya Faye wasn't inside the sacred cavern. We now know that she didn't throw herself into the Eagle River. Correct. That eliminates all the most likely possibilities. Now, although it seems improbable, there's still one other place she could be. What? What is this one possibility you're talking about? Th that's obviously a bluff. So where is her dead body then? 
Finally, I think the pieces are falling into place. Normally the living have no way of, to punish the dead, but I think there is a way to give Dahlia Hawthorne the ultimate punishment. Shall I tell you, Miss Hawthorne? Shall I tell you where Maya is this very instant? Maya Faye is in this very courtroom. There's only one possibility left. Namely, she's right here in this very courtroom. What? Maya Faye is here? You say she's here in my courtroom? Yeah, it was a flashback case. Dahlia Hawthorne, I seem to recall that you said I had misunderstood one thing, you see. So what? But I think there's one more thing you misunderstood. What do you mean? Tell me something. At this very moment, who is channeling Dahlia Hawthorne? Why that? It's obvious. It's Pearl Fay. That pathetic little sniveling runt. You're wrong. Pearl's tried, but she couldn't do it. Also, by the way, Pearl's is here. I never feel that channeling someone. This is the first time it's happened. Isn't there an explanation for why you couldn't channel a spirit? It could happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. You mean this Pearl's? <laughs> someone called me before Pearl did, but who? Pearl's even tried again on the day after the crime, but she couldn't do it. What could that mean? I think the truth is becoming clearer to you right about now, am I correct? <laughs> it wasn't Pearl's that channeled you. It was someone who called you before she could. This is an easy one. Pearls couldn't do it, and Misty Fay is gone. There's only one possibility left. Come on already. I can't stand the tension. <laughs> Lifts Pearls up Lion King style. Yeah, pretty much. Also, I can't really see the I can't really see the chat sign. I'm like looking through like this like gap in my mic stand. Which is why I do this whenever I look at the I mean I can also do this, but <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne. The person channeling you right now must be Maya Fey. What? what? But, but how could that be? Remember that what this witness Dahlia Hawthorne said about her goal. She said that her goal was to kill Maya Fey. Yes, that's right. But if Maya channeled the spirit of someone that was trying to kill her. Huh. Well, Gramps, what would happen? Could it be? It looks like you finally understand, Your Honor. Well, I don't. What are you going on about? What I'm going on about is the reason Maya channeled you. And there's only one reason. To protect herself from you. To protect herself? From me? Yes, on the night of the crime, you were only interested in one thing. Killing Maya Fey. The path back to Hasakura was closed off, and there was nowhere for her to run. So then the problem became... Where would be the safest place to hide? <laughs> you mean... That's when she channeled me? All this time you thought you had been channeled by pearls. That's why it never occurred to you. That Maya's hiding place... Was you! No! No! Don't say that! You're saying that I, Dahlia Hawthorne, was played for a fool by that little whelp? Maya Faye killed herself, isn't it obvious? Objection! Sorry, but no, it would have been impossible for her to jump into the Eagle River. This was the only avenue of escape open to Maya. The only way that Maya could disappear from the inner temple. I, I don't believe you. A stupid little girl like that who has never been out in the real world. She could never have come up with a plan like that. Who could have ever given her such a brilliant idea? Well, me, of course. M Mia! M Mia Faye! It's been a long time, Dahlia Hawthorne. So it's true. It was you. Yes. Huh. There's something else. But what what are you doing here? That hair. It's pearls, right? 
tell me something, Dahlia. I want you to think back to that night one more time. You had just cornered Maya in the Inner Temple's garden. And then, in the final moments of the fight, you lost consciousness. Two dead spirits fighting it out in the courtroom. I was stabbed by Maya Faye. Actually, Maya lost consciousness at the same time as you. She did? Not terribly surprising since she was about to be killed. When she woke up, she was in the training hall. That's when Maya decided she needed help. So she channeled me. She explained in a memo the situation she was in. She asked me what I thought she, could, she should do. She did that? I can't believe it! Of course, I didn't have all the details, but one thing was perfectly clear. And that was? I knew that you couldn't be allowed to wander free. Free? What do you mean? It was erased against time, so I wrote down two things that Maya had to do. Channel Dahlia Hawthorne as soon as possible and lock herself in the sacred cavern until help, help arrived. So it was Maya who put that lock there. Yes, but why did you order her to do those two things? If she hadn't done it, Dahlia Hawthorne would have been channeled by someone else. By one Pearl Fay. Pearls? Yes, Pearl didn't properly understand the plan, so all she was trying to do was follow her mother Morgan Fay's instructions. If she had succeeded in channeling Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit, Things would have turned out very badly, to put it mildly. So that's how it was. Dahlia Hawthorne would have used the body of Pearl Fay to kill Maya at all costs. Y yes, it certainly sounds like that was the intent all along. How dare you! I, I won't forget this! Why not just admit it, Dahlia Hawthorne? Your little plan was nothing but a big failure. Yes, another failure to add to the pile of shame, wouldn't you say? What do you mean by another? Think about it, Dahlia. Remember all your past crimes? Not a single one of them was a success. They all ended in failure. What? How dare you? Eleven years ago. The fake kidnapping. Your very first crime. You got your hands on a two million dollar diamond, but... After Terry Falls escaped and went to meet with Valerie Hawthorne, the truth was exposed. Sh shut your mouth! That wasn't my fault! It was because of that stupid oaf of a prisoner and that squeakling of a policewoman! And then, one year later... You tried to kill me. Well... I'm still alive, but... You wound up killing someone else. As a result, you were sentenced to death. It's one stupid move after another for you. But it's no longer funny. You wipe that smug, happy-go-lucky smile off your face. And now this. You messed up again. You let Maya Faye escape. Even though she was right there in front of you. Mia Faye. Mia Faye. Mia Faye. Mia Faye. You. You spinster. I was supposed to kill Maya Faye like I swore I would. And if only you hadn't gotten this spiky haired jerk the guilty verdict. Then. The, the, did I read that right? I, it must have been not guilty verdict. I wouldn't have been hanged to death! Wait, I think I read that wrong. It's fine. True. But I think you finally understand, Dahlia Hawthorne. You will never defeat me. What? What did you say? Whether you're alive, dead, or somewhere in between, you will never defeat me. As long as I'm around, you're destined to lose for all eternity. It did say wrong in the text. Okay, cool. I thought it was just me. 
I remember what you said earlier in the trial. You said there was no way we could punish you. Because you were already dead. What about it? Then you said, even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. That's very true, Dahlia. And that's exactly the punishment you'll never be able to escape from. For all of eternity, you'll have to remain as Dahlia Hawthorne. A miserable, pathetic, weak creature who can never win at anything. And for you, there is no escape from that. No hope of freedom. Since the day you were ex executed, the narrow bridge that once stretched out in front of you has burned to a crisp. You... You... You're... Wrong! It... Can't... Be! How could I lose to the likes of you? <laughs> Mia throwing shade. It no longer matters. I don't care whether you win or lose anymore. The only thing I want is for you to come out of Maya's body right now. I'm not ready. Not ready to go. Nick, sis. Now then, I assume you are the real Iris. Yes, I was just rescued from the sacred cavern. I must say, you and your twin sister are indeed identical from what I can see. In any case, it appears that everything has finally been cleared up. Mr. Godot, what happened to Dahlia Hawthorne? I think my my controller is dying. If you ask me, Your Honor, it looks like she went back to the hell she came from. Hmm. It seems that Misty Fay wasn't the only victim of this crime. Maya Fay, as well as the young Pearl Fay, were also victims of this wicked and selfish plan. Yes, Your Honor. Where is the charger cable? I'm so busy. Oh no. Oh, all the mess. There we go. Is it long enough though? Eh, it's fine. The tragedy of Medium Valley has come to an end, it seems. It would be best for everyone if no further attempt was made to channel that spirit again. Um, your honor? Yes, what is it? About this whole spirit medium thing. It's almost weird how comfortable you seem to be with the concept now. Well, to be frank, my younger brother is quite judgmental. He often criticizes me for not studying hard enough. And that's why I made a concerted effort to study up on the Korean channeling technique. Well, we stand. We stand, the <laughs> man. Hey, isn't that the New Year's issue of Occult? I've seen quite a few things in my many years on the bench. And in all that time, I finally learned this one thing. Each case is different, and takes place in its own world, if you will. In order to fully understand that world, first we have to immerse ourselves in it completely. And that's where my brother and I used to differ. Hmm, I never thought of it that way. At any rate... It's time to pass judgment on the t on the case of Iris of Hasakura Temple. Objection. Sir, what is your problem now? You're a little too fast with that gavel, Your Honor. 
And what do you mean by that, Mr. Godot? This trial. It isn't over yet. That's what he means. M what? Trite. Remember what Miss Evil Spirit said in her testimony. Huh? Dahlia's testimony? Cut up with her in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out the dagger I got from the storeroom and... It's strange, but I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. I think... I think I was stabbed. Mrs. Dahlia Hawthorne was about to attack Maya. She was stabbed and killed by someone. Yes, that's right. The person that was ultimately killed was the spirit medium that channeled Dahlia. Elise Dunim. No, Misty Fay. But who killed her? We still don't know who did it. This isn't over? Unless someone else is found guilty, the accused is still on trial. We can't let her walk until there is evidence that proves her innocence. No way. But this court isn't prepared for any further testimony. Prosecution is ready to call our final witness. Final witness? This one will clear up the whole mystery. The mystery of who killed Misty Fay. Hmm, indeed. Is it really alright, Mr. Prosecutor? Of course it's alright, Madame Attorney. Very well then. Who is this final witness? Huh. Isn't it obvious? There's one person who saw the whole event and will put the final dagger in this case. S someone who saw the murder take place? The very person who saw her mother killed in front of her own eyes. I you... You mean Maya? You can't! She can't testify after what she's just been through! We need to find the truth. The prosecution calls Maya Faye to the witness stand. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's not really like an, um, like a surprise that Godot is actually, um, uh, Armando. What was his first name? It's not important. Anyways. Yeah, they're the same person. And I don't know. I don't know if they, like, say it, like, straight out. They do look identical. They're, like, wearing the same clothes, too, except for that the shirt is... Like, it's more of a turquoise than red. <laughs> so I don't really think it's a, it's a secret. But you know, people in this game are fucking dumb as shit. Different color shirt and hair. Yeah. Also the, the, the goggles thing. But first, we'll take a brief recess. We'll have to wait for Miss Faye to recover before summoning her. Once we receive the doctor's, doctor's permission, we will proceed with the trial. Hey, Trite, I've got something to say to you, so listen up. What is it? I don't think much of you as a lawyer. It's always the same with you. You somehow manage to just squeak by without even a faint understanding of the case. Some beautiful woman always seems to come dashing in at the last minute to save you. I you got some nerve. That's not going to happen this time. This time, you're going to have to do this by yourself. Nah, I'm gonna do this with a guide. <laughs> That's enough. This court is now in recess. I'm truly sorry about everything. You were working so hard to defend me. But I was missing all day, and we didn't even have a chance to talk. She's right. When I met Iris at the trading hall yesterday, they had already switched places, and Iris was inside the sacred cavern. I wanted to at least be in the defendant's box, in the defendant's box today, to root you on. Well, it wasn't your fault. You were locked up this whole time. There's something more important than that, though. I have to ask you, why did you help your sister out as much as you did? Huh? If you had tried to get help at the sacred cavern yesterday, you wouldn't have spent an entire day locked up in there. My sister, I felt sorry for her. She was abandoned by her mother and never got any love from her father either. Yes, but 
It was the same for you too, wasn't it? Yes, but at least I had Sister Bikini, who, had, who was like a mother to me. If only Dolly had come with me to Hasakura Temple. I always... I always loved her. Dolly was always so smart, so strong. She never complained about a thing. That's why I... That's why I promised her that I would help her. Are you talking about the fake kidnapping case 11 years ago? Yes, I... I wanted to be useful in to her in some way. But, as usual, I was too cowardly. At the last minute, I ran away. Because of that... I'm gonna... There you go. Dahlia's stepsister, Valerie, ended up... That was the case that wounded Mia so badly. But... Diego, that's his name. Diego Armando, that's his name. <laughs> but things didn't end there, of course. Some people suspected that my sister was involved in the murder. Some people? You must mean... Yes, two defense attorneys. Mia Faye and Diego Armando. <laughs> I remembered it before you said it. <laughs> After poisoning Mr. Armando, who was going, who was getting too close to learning the truth, Dahlia even tried to kill the person who had unknowingly, unknowingly hit the person poison for her. You. That's right. So, uh, remember in the case with Dahlia, like the first one. Uh, wait, which first one? The, in the game one or the after one? No, it's the, it's the, no, it's the, it's the, it's the memories one. No, not the Phoenix one, the other one. Because at that time, Phoenix was there at the courthouse. Right? Which is when he met Dahlia. And that is when uh, Diego took uh, or brought Dahlia down to the basement cafeteria and uh, she spiked his coffee. Poisoned his coffee rather. And uh, that is how he turned into Godot. Iris, there's one more thing that I have to ask you. Yes, what is it? But also the fact that Phoenix and Edgeworth were at the courthouse at the same time and none of them knew. On the night of the murder, the person that cleaned up the corpse of the victim, at least to Nim, was it... was it really you? Yes, it was me. That night, after I rang the lights out bell, I went back to my room. At around 10.30, I received a call on my cell phone. There's a problem. Come to the inner temple right away. Yes, he was studying art, but he was gonna drop out of that and study law instead. Which is why he was at the courthouse. I guess he was already studying law on the side or something, I don't know. I, I got on the snowmobile and headed to, for the inner temple, but... The path to the inner temple was cut off, right? Exactly. can't just leave the body here. So you've got to do this exactly as I say. Got it? It was me. I was the one that received her body. The murder weapon had been left in her body so she wouldn't bleed too much. The staff that Mystic Elise always held. I knew it. 
that the actual murder weapon was a staff. Yes, that's right. I brought the body back to Hasakura Temple on the snowmobile. But why? Why did you alter the body? I didn't want anyone to know the staff was the murder weapon. More, more chocolate. I didn't want to leave anything that would lead back to Miss Yafe. So I dressed her in a robe and stabbed her with shishto. I wiped the blood off the staff's blade and left it next to her on the ground. Iris, just tell me one last thing. Tell me the name of the person that called your cell phone. The real killer. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I can't do it. I can't say who did it. I... I see. Defendant! Y yes the judge is calling you. He wants to see you in his chambers. He has some questions about Dolly Hawthorne. All right. Well then, I'll see you later. There's something I want to tell you. Oh, um, okay. Something she wants to tell me? So it's true. Iris cooperated, cooperated with the real killer. Maybe even from the very beginning. Phoenix. Mia! Um, how is Maya doing? Physically, I'm not worried. She'll... Not worried. She'll recover completely. But emotionally, she's been hurt very badly by this case. I... I see. You don't mean... She's learned who at least the Nim really was? Yes, I went to the medical office and talked with her. I told her everything I knew. Why? Maya is stronger than you think. I knew she could take it. All of it. What do you mean by that? I want you to figure that answer out by yourself. The trial is about to restart. The real killer. Do you know who it is yet? Iris wouldn't tell me who called her. Still, I think that just maybe I know who it was. That night, the victim was called in the garden of the inner tem temple. And the criminal wasn't just there by accident. Which means... That the killer knew of Dahlia's plan from the very beginning. And one more thing. The victim was moved to Hasakura Temples, to the Hasakura Temple site by Pendulum. In other words, the criminal couldn't cross the bridge. That means they were stuck on the inner temple site for almost an entire day. Exactly. So the culprit was someone that wasn't in Hasakura Temple the following day. That's as much help as I can give you. The rest of the battle is yours to win. Or lose. Okay, I got it. Thank you, Mia. Finally, it's almost time to bring this case to an end. What exactly did Maya see anyway? And who was it that actually killed Misty Fay? Whoever it was, I have to prove it. Me, all by myself. Oh, I remember. That I remember. But the pendulum thing? Fucking... Forgot about that so hard. <laughs> yes. Okay, last... Last part! Last part! Last part! Last chapter! Let's go! Now then, before we proceed any further, I'm going to announce the results of the tests we had performed earlier. Tests? Yes, tests. On the bloody dagger that was found stuck in the pine tree. Oh yeah, that. I totally forgot about it. That's the weapon. That Maya Faye used when she fought with the victim. So what were the results? Was it the victim's blood or...? And due to time constraints, a full test wasn't possible. However, there was one thing we can say... There's one thing we can say with certainty. The blood that was on this dagger was not the victim's blood. And that is all. Now then, let's restart this trial. So it wasn't missed if... It wasn't missed this blood on the dagger. Then whose was it?
I'm sure both the defense and the prosecution know this, but this trial is rapidly coming to a close. Both sides will need to show some firm evidence with their claims. I understand, Your Honor. From what I've heard, the witness is dangerously weak, physically speaking. So let's finish this quickly. Agreed. Very well. Please bring in the last witness. Witness, please tell us your name and profession. Maya Fay. My profession is... Um... I'm the assistant manager at Wright & Cole offices. Maya. According to the magazine I have here, you're a spirit medium of the Kurain channeling technique. I... I'm frightened. The Fay clan... I don't want any more to do with it. Oh, Maya. The, pen, the pain the Fay bloodline causes must be unbearable. Very well. Now then, Miss Faye, when the event occurred, you were in the Garden of the Inner Temple. And you witnessed the moment of Miss Elise Dunim's murder. Is this correct? I, um, I didn't see any... Straighten up this instant, young lady. Huh? Pick your head up and speak clearly. There's always time for crying later. But, but, but I... Your mother was killed right in front of your eyes. There's nothing you can do to change that fact. How fucking harrowing. Honestly, like, she's seen her fucking sister die, and now she's also seen her mother die. Uh, this poor girl. Honestly. There's something you can do. You can finish this. You've been watching the whole thing, right? You've seen the witnesses come out. And you've seen us squeeze the truth out of them. She hasn't seen jack shit! Bitch! What part of... The ones channeling a spirit do not regain their conscience? Like... Yeah, she was possessed. She wasn't fucking... Able to be there. Fucking Gido. Now it's your turn. Let's hear your testimony. Or uh, maybe he means like in general. On the night of the crime, what exactly did you see happen? Witness, if you please. Yes, your honor. I was passing through the garden on the way to a spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly someone struck me over the head. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed, help me! And something warm splashed over me. It's when I lost consciousness. I find it funny how people just fucking pass out left and right. Hmm, so you were struck on the head. I suppose it must have been the staff. Maya, the person who hit you. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? I'm sorry, Nick. I just... I couldn't see. I don't know who it was. Maya, think hard. Sorry, Nick, but I really couldn't. Ha. Huh. Can't say it wasn't especially good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. It seems that it will be hard to determine the criminal through testimony alone. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please begin your cross-examination. women in corsets but like th the thing is that like corsets were made to be comfortable <laughs> so the the actors like fucking wear corsets for a day and are like i wasn't able to breathe <laughs> not saying they're lying but they just didn't wear it right <laughs> she doesn't look well at all They're amateurs, yeah. You think you screamed, but you're not sure. Listen, I was a, a complete wreck. It was dark and I couldn't see my attacker. 
Was it a man? A woman? An adult? A child? I had no idea. I was scared out of my wits. Believe me, my dear. I'm certain I would have soiled my robes. I thought this person might attack me, so I... So I... Anyway, I'm pretty sure I screamed. I, I thought that it was my last hope. Wow, it sounds like poor little Maya really was out of her mind. And I wonder what she meant by last hope. What do I do? Do I press her for more details? Wait a minute, Maya. What's this my last hope stuff? Um, what? What do you mean by your last hope? No, no, no. That's what you said. You said my last hope. Huh? What? I said what? Look, you were facing an attacker that you couldn't see. You screamed, right? You screamed, help me. Um, yeah. But you testified that you testified that you screamed that because you thought it was your last hope. Oh, well, you know, it's like, what do you do? What do you call it when it happens? Maya's not doing so well up there. Oh, yeah, um, I... Oh, that's right! I remember now. I was facing my attacker, but that's not who I was screaming at. What did you just say? Yeah, that's right. It was the person behind my attacker that I was yelling at. That's who I was screaming to for help. <gasps> what is it now? I messed up. I didn't... I didn't mean to let that slip out. Huh? Witness, are you absolutely sure of what you're saying? Behind the attacker, there was another person. Well, I am. Well, I... Uh, I meant to keep that part a secret. Mm -hmm. What have I done? Huh. It takes a ton of pressure to make a diamond. That's what I always say. Ton of pressure. You're in a court of law here. You can't make things up or try to hide things in this chamber. Witness! The information you just presented is vital to the case. I want you to add it to your testimony. Light of the stone lantern, you say, but... It wasn't lit. So there was a man standing behind your attacker. Um, yeah. Man. He's the killer. He stabbed her from behind. He's the one who killed Elise Dunim. Otherwise known as... Misty Faye, your mother. The killer! Maya. You know who killed your mother, don't you? Um... What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? To be frank, Your Honor, I think she is in shock and is quite confused. That's why she hasn't noticed a huge problem with her testimony. Uh, huh? What do you mean? What problem? Maya, on the night of the crime, that stone lantern was out of commission. Huh? What? It's true. There was no light anywhere in the garden that night. No! Order! Order in the court! M Mr. Godot, explain this! Add the pureness of milk to the perfect clear darkness of coffee. Stir. That is the state of the witness's mind right now. A cup of café au lait. Café au lait? Is that even legal? Mr. Trite's word, uh, words are the milk, and you are the spoon, Your Honor. I'm a spoon? I'm no spoony bard, I'll have you know. You must have noticed it too, Trite. This witness's mental state is highly unstable right now. It's not hard to understand why she would mistake, make a little mistake like that. Sorry, but that's not going to cut it. What did you say? If there truly was no light in the garden, then there's a fatal contradiction in the witness's last bit of testimony. Nick. May I? Recall the witness's test statement about her attacker. She said that she didn't know if it was a man or a woman, or an adult or a child. And yet, the witness could describe a person that was standing behind her attacker. And she quite clearly described him as a man. <laughs> In other words... That would ha 
have to mean that Maya actually saw our mystery person. Despite it being so dark that she couldn't see the face of her own attacker. No! Order! 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 What in the world does all this mean, Miss Wright? Are you saying Miss Face saw the real killer under pitch black conditions? Right. Do you have any idea what you're proposing? How could she have seen in the dark? There was no other light source at the scene. There are some things that you can only see in the dark, Mr. Godot. Maya, you did see who the killer was in the dark. And now, you're trying to cover for him. C cover For the man that killed her mother? There's only one conclusion I can draw from this. You know who this man is. Please, Nick. I don't know anything. Please, I'm begging you. Huh. You talk a good game, Trite. But let's see if you can walk the walk. It was pitch black, so what could the witness see? I'm calling your bluff. N no, Nick, don't. Please, stop. Maya is dead set on protecting this guy. The man who murdered Maya's long-lost mother. But I can't let him get away with it. I'm a lawyer, an officer of the court. I'm here to find the truth. All right, Mr. Wright. Time to show us what you've got. Who was this person that used to say Miss Face saw in the darkness? Oh shit. Because it was pitch black, Miss Faye was able to recognize the killer easily. I'm sure the court would like to see for itself how this is possible, yes? What? But, but how do you propose to show us something like that? It's easy. We just need to recreate the conditions of that night. Conditions? Your Honor, the defense officially requests that all the lights in this courtroom be turned off. Just like, kill the lights. <laughs> This is... but... but it can't be. Huh. Imagine that the court is as clever. <laughs> it was a nice bit of deduction, Trites. Well, everyone. This is the man Maya saw on the night of the murder. Order! 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 Prosecutor Godot, what is the meaning of this? Surely you must be shocked to hear yourself accused of such a thing. Why aren't you denying it? Huh. Your Honor, you're asking the wrong person. What do you mean by that? If you got a question, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. Well, Maya, how about it? What well, you saw that night? Was it three glowing red lights? Well, witness, answer the question. Y you're wrong. I, I never saw that. Maya. I thought the person that stabbed my mother was a man. For a totally different reason. What? Oh, witness, Mr. Ra Stop your chattering, your honor. Ch chattering? If it's worth asking, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. All right. Well then, let's continue with the testimony. Please tell us how you knew the killer was a man. Y yes, your honor. I didn't realize it until after I woke up, but... When I came to, I was just lying there on, on the training floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place had totally changed. The torches were lit, and the body was gone. And all of the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up too. Since the person did all that work alone, I just assumed it was a man. Hmm. So it was after the crime took place that the witness came to think the killer was a man. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I... No need to apologize. It's as Mr. Godot said. You're utterly exhausted. 
It's only natural that you would be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem too much of a stretch to assume that culprit was a man. Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Okay. Huh. The torches were lit. Yes, that's how I noticed that the whole scene had changed. I'm going to say it was the killer who lit the, tor lit the torches. I mean, who else could it be? The killer probably lit them, since it'd be impossible to do any cover-up work in the dark. However, if that's true, there's only one thing that still bothers me. Why did the killer go to the effort of moving the body? That's true, it's hard to see how that would be of any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be... The only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well, let me hear some more about the condition of the crime scene. All the snow around the lantern have been cleaned up too. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the killer cleaned up the snow? It did really, it did look really odd. And the snow was removed in an unnatural looking rectangular shape around around the lantern. There were a lot of shovels around the inner temple, but they're all really heavy, way too heavy for me to use. Sexism. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect evidence. Sexism. An odd fellow indeed, this killer. Why on earth would anyone want to take snow away? Well, there's one thing I can think of. Didn't you say that a lot of the victim's blood sprayed onto the snow? Y yeah The area I collapsed in ended up being splattered. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide the bloody snow. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Hmm, perhaps. However, there's something that's bothering me. If the killer just wanted to hide the snow with blood on it. And there was no need to remove that amount. That's true. He could have scooped up just the snow that was stained with blood. It looks like there are some mysteries behind this issue. But I think this will help explain them. Naturally, the killer must have done it, right? Yes, I think so. Why would the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something that the killer desperately wanted to hide. I... The truth is, when I saw the crime scene, I felt something. You did? Yes, I felt like the killer was hiding the evidence for me. For my sake. What? Hiding it for you? Everyone knew what, that I was the only one at the inner temple that night. If Sister Bikini had come back and looked at, the, looked at the garden... She may have thought that you had done it. No, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that's why the killer... Cleaned... Cleaned up the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened? Yes, I'm sure of it. Well, that's certainly an important piece of information. I want you to add that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. I think it was for my sake that the killer cleaned up the evidence of what happened. Objection! The body of Elise de Nim was carried all the way to Hasakura Temple's courtyard. Then at the garden, the real scene of the crime. The snow that we suspect was covered in blood was scooped up and removed. It's reasonable to, be to believe all this was done in an, in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However... There's still one matter that seems somewhat odd. Oh, and what would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Godot. It's the message written in blood on the lantern. It was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. <gasps> if the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from suspicion, then why didn't they wipe the writing off the lantern? Ah! Hey, you're right. Order, order, order! M but, M Mr. Wright, isn't it a fact that the killer was trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed, but it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove... To move the body and remove the bloody snow, then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing. But if that's the case, do you have an explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? 
Why would this killer move the body and remove all that snow? But then leave that bloody writing on the lantern. I don't know what the killer's plan was. But it's a fact that the killer left the writing in, on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Why did the killer leave the message written in blood on the lantern? The killer didn't notice it. Prosecutor Godot, earlier in this trial, you gave me some good advice. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that a crime had occurred there. If that's the case, they wouldn't have left the bloody the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. I just read it as bloody writing. <laughs> Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense. The torches were all lit and everything. There's no way any normal person would miss something as glaring as that. You're right. There is no way any normal person would. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have missed seeing the bloody writing altogether. And who would that be? Who is the person that could have failed to notice the bloody writing? Damn, we just... Mr. Godot, this is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. You can't see everything? Is that correct, Mr. Godot? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like to I would like the court to think back to the moment it was first presented. Th th this lantern. There's something written on it. But why? It's written in blood. Hmm, <laughs> nonsense. This lantern. It's as clean as a whistle. Mr. Godot, just admit it. There are certain colors you can't see, correct? You can't see red on a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. During the poisoning case at Très Bien. Oh, never mind, they're all connected anyways. <laughs> because I said earlier that, like, all the cases are connected. Except for, like, the restaurant case. This is the apron that the, 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 the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time, and somehow spilled coffee on. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Grudel. Why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a bloodstain. Is that why I stopped wearing red? No, he can see red, but he just can't see red on white. Which I guess makes sense. If you like wear like um a red filter. You know. And you look at red on white, it doesn't work. It's the same with like all colors actually. Like, I have, I have this case for my Switch. And on this side, it's white with, like, uh, cyan leaves. And I have this light up here. Hold on, wait. I mean, I wonder if I can actually, like, test it out right now. Right here, right now. I don't have it with red, but... Yeah, it's better than nothing, I guess. Woo, welcome to the darkness. It's kind of hard to see, I guess. Right now, I have blue lights on. If I turn them off... No, actually... Well, now I also have the lights from here. So maybe it won't actually work. Yeah, it probably won't work because of the light from... Oh, from that! Dumbass! So, maybe it won't work. I don't know. Because I've, I've seen it happen before, myself. We're just suddenly like... But I guess it's just like a bit too light here still. It works a bit. No, not quite though. Like, 
it's just really hard to like show, but I know, I know what happens. Yeah, you, here you can kind of see it there, like in the transition there, but it's like, you can see it even more in person. There, just suddenly it kind of disappears, you know? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's why. I need to turn on. Sometimes the leaves are just gone. Yeah, exactly. And it's exactly the same for Godot when he looks at red on a white background. And it makes sense. Anyways, back to the game now. <laughs> you can see the coffee on the white apron. But you couldn't see the ketchup because it was red. Huh. It's strange. In a black and white photo, those letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder, why am I the only one that can't see them? So then, Mr. Godot, are you admitting it? Are you admitting that you can't see the red writing on the lantern? It's because everything else is red, you know? So like, the red just fades into the, the other red. But I guess it would actually like depend on the shade of red. Hey Gramps, didn't you know? That's the reason why I don't drink red tea. I wasn't sure about it until now, but I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Godot is the murderer. Maybe, maybe he thinks he's still wearing the red shirt. <laughs> he just doesn't know he's wearing the cyan or turquoise one or what. Yeah, as long as it's the same color as like, yeah. Huh? What is amazing? Ruibos? Oh, red tea, okay. I don't really like tea. There has been like one tea that I really liked and it was this like German apple tea. It was really sweet and it was really good and I loved it so much. There also been some other teas, but like that was, that was my favorite and nothing has ever lived up to it. I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Godot is the murderer, but there's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. Mr. Godot, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Elise Dunim, also known as Miss Misty Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true, however, once again Mr. Wright has brought up a disquieting fact about you. Huh. Just make sure you don't fill out the indictment in red ink, Gramps. Come on, how does a little graffiti make me into the killer? Besides, it's not like it's my it's my name that's written there. I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich. Do go on, Trite. The answer is right there at the crime scene. In the snow. In the snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your honor, you said it yourself. If you wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not take out just that area? Yes, why didn't he take out just that area? Uh -huh. Could it be? Yes, the killer couldn't see the red blood that had seeped into the snow. So he had to remove all of the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. He would have been able to see just fine. It seems that once again this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Godot? Wait! Wait just a minute! Maya! What is it, witness? M Mr. Godot isn't the killer. After all, he didn't even come to the inner temple. Until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after the old bridge got fixed up. Objection. Maya. You can't testify to something like that. 
Why? What do you mean? I may not look at it. Huh? After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. She didn't? I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. Please, Your Honor, let me add to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. Maya, do you plan to cover for Godot no matter what the cost? If that's the case, then I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Huh. Nicely done, Trites. Very well. Let's hear the witness's testimony. Please tell us what happened at the inner temple after the murder. Yes, sir. After I woke up, I began channel channeling and my spirit left me, as it were. But little Pearly was there at the inner temple, too. Pearly was also stuck on the inner temple side at night. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the inner temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. Who is this Pearly? That's my little cousin, Pearl Fay. Hmm. So when did you hear about this? Oh, just a while ago, when I was in the medical office. I'm terribly sorry. But what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. What? Come on! Pearly would never tell a lie. She's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best things to say when you're under oath. Huh. The prosecution is no objection. We believe the witness. M Mr. Godot! Let's just move on to the cross-examination. If the defense has no objections... This is highly unusual, but... Well, Mr. Wright? Let's get this cross-examination started! Okay, I need to find the part. Uh. He, he cheered her up? That's what Pearly said. She said he was a very nice older gentleman. Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Godot. And here I was thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Ha. Huh. Cut it out. You're making me blush. This guy is really beginning to get on my nerves in more ways than one. The truth is, there aren't any that many places to look on the Ender Temple's side. The policemen were all busy going over the garden with fine-toothed combs. So I decided to carry out an, investi an investigation in my own way. Godot style. In, th in the same way? Oh no, I'm the same way. I like to hand down verdicts in my own way. Judge style. Hmm, maybe I should ask some questions. Phoenix style. You said that you conducted an investigation of your own. Did you find anything? It looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trites. After all, I did miss the bloody writing on the la lantern. Well I, did, well, I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, Goggles. The only thing I discovered was the beauty in the training hall. Beauty? Misty Fay, naturally. Chad in, clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Western tastes? Could you find a stranger way to describe gravy? So from there, you headed for the prep room. Wait a sec. What did Godot just say now? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. There is only one thing of, of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the inner temple when it happened. Otherwise... He couldn't have killed the least of him. Okay, as this. Mr. Godot, the first time you crossed Dusky Bridge and went into the Inner Temple was long before the murder took place. Why do 
didn't say that. Because he just made a one fatal slip up. The hanging scroll in the training hall. Hanging scroll? B but Mr. Godot is right. That scroll shows a picture of my mother. Maya, I know you know who it is, but there's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired, two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the training hall looked like this. What's that wonderfully delicious smell? Did he just bring it with him? <laughs> the morning after the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy was much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Godot, if you really hadn't seen the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that it was Misty Fay. Wait a minute, Nick! Yes? Take another look at the hanging scroll. Look, at the top. There's a crest there. Oh, that. It's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly. So if you know the meaning of the mark, then you could guess that it was a pic picture of Misty Fay on there. True, but Mr. Godot described what was underneath like this, clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Oh. Yes, it's, a, it's possible that he knew what the crest meant. However... He couldn't have known that she was wearing Japanese clothing. Mr. Godot, on the day of the murder. You were hiding at the inner temple long before the crime took place. Can I ask you just one little thing, Trite? What is it? This whole theory of yours. It all rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. That's right. Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak, uh, sneak, sneak onto the crime scene. God. Of course, Mr. Godot knew about the plan. Huh? What did you say? Is it really possible that another person knew of that plan? I mean, yeah, it was opened before. This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Fay authored the plan for her daughter's future. And these instructions were hidden somewhere in Fay Manor for a year. However, by the time Little Pearls find, found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Unsealed? Yes. The killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place at the inner temple. And you still insist this crafty killer is me. You bet I do. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right. Mr. Godot couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. If you really wanted to know, he had one great chance to find out. Y yes, and when was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Fay had told her daughter, Pearl, about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center. That would be the only time for someone to have learned where the where they were hidden. <laughs> Eavesdropping on a visit at, as a, as a, <laughs> on a visit at the detention center. Yes, it could be arranged if you were somewhere someone with easy access in and out of there. So dead wife card is a snitch. Like for example, a prosecutor such as Mr. Godot. He did it again. He was like. In time with the music, oh, it's it's so good. Order, order, order. <laughs> Mr. Godot, you're under fire again. This murder could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you. You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder. Humans are afraid of the dark. And yet, at the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness that is coffee. Um, sorry for always asking, but what does that mean? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped on a conversation during a jail visit where he learned of a hidden plan for a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in the inner temple and waited for the crime to occur. Then he ultimately took a person's life. And he did all of that just to protect this witness? That's right. If you're accusing me of this crime, 
I have to ask you. Why would I do this? This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. I've got no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. I am what you see. I am certainly not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. Hmm. And the killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for the lack of a better word. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness's life, his behavior is still a little too unnatural. However, you had a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Guido? An unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya. I guess you were doing your best to cover for Guido. For the same reason, huh? Okay, Trites. I'm all ears. Let's hear it. It's very simple. Maya Faye is a lot more than just a stranger to you. What's this? There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Faye together inextricably. There's a very good reason why Maya Faye's life is so precious to you. After all, she is Mia. F she is Mia Faye's only sister. Mia Faye. You once worked alongside her. That was when you were a defense attorney. Wait a second here. Mr. Godot is, is a defense attorney? With your honor's piercing, piercing intellect, you must have figured it out by now. The real name of this man who calls himself Godot. His real name is... Diego Armando. Isn't that right? The last time someone called me by that name was over six years ago. Diego Armando, that name rings a bell. It should, Your Honor. All of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. Mia Faye's first time in court, the tragic outcome left a deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheming de demoness in disguise. But in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, there was one man who reached out to help her. Diego Armando, a senior defense attorney at the office where Mia worked. It's my fault! It's my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself! Mia, you can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I was moved by her. The way she put all her faith in her clients, that pure sweet heart of hers. That's why I could never forgive Dahlia Hawthorne. Mia and I thoroughly investigated that fake kidnapping incident. Then one fateful day, Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It had been six months since the trial. We met in the courthouse cafeteria. Oh, it was after? Okay, interesting. Ah! I just remembered. Six years ago, right here in this courthouse, you were poisoned! Even I didn't see it coming. And they weren't in the courthouse at the same time. Oh, that's sad. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. Some newspaper at the time called it a murder. But very little information about the case was released to the press. But you weren't dead at all. No official reports ever actually called it a murder. I was just in a deep, deep coma. I see. My body shut down and my life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. That woman's poison did a real number on my central nervous system. I lost my sight and all of my hair turned white due to the damage it's, it caused. That's terrible. Apparently it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years had passed since I drank that poison brew. And I still drink coffee without a single fucking care in the world. Then one morning, my eyes flew open from the smell of a doctor's cup of coffee. Five years? You were asleep for five years? And the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia Faye was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, 
I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered. And the woman I loathed had been, had been sentenced to death. And the woman you loathed? The woman who had spiked my scalding hot coffee. Dahlia Hawthorne. Huh. Good old Mia. She didn't let me down. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. That's so sad. For someone like me. For someone who had slept away their best days. There were only two reasons left to live. And it was for those two reasons that I be decided to become a prosecutor. If I may ask, what were your two reasons to live? The first was you, Trites. Huh? M me If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Faye never would have died. Much less the way she did. I don't think they're directly connected, are they? cheese pie because I threw up an hour later. How the frick frack can you drink coffee if it put him in a deep fucking coma? Listen, don't question this man's, okay? Just fucking don't. You were the only one who was there to protect her. Maya was there first, you dumbass! But you let her die. It was all your fault. She was already fucking dead! I- It wasn't like that. I wanted to see for myself what kind of man you really were. So that is why you became a prosecutor? My other reason for living. She goes by the name of Maya Faye. Huh? Y you mean me? You were the only way I could make up for the sin of not saving Mia. One year ago, when the Kurain village incident was resolved, it was obvious that, it was Mo that Morgan Faye was planning something. Whatever her evil plan was, I was determined to stop it. My role as a prosecutor put me in the perfect position to do something about her. That's how you overheard Pearl's visit with Morgan at the, at the detention center. I knew that, that the time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could foil it. My goal was to outwit the plan. I thought if I could do that, I could keep that girl from being caught up in it. It makes sense. If Pearls had known that the act what well, that the actual purpose of the plan was to kill Maya, she never would have helped out. Finally, the day of the plan was drawing near. I contacted both of my accomplices. Accomplices? Iris of Hasakura Temple and Misty Fay. I especially needed the help of Iris. She was to take the fall in my back in my backup plan, in case we couldn't control Pearl Faye. But, but, how did you contact my mother? She had been missing for almost 20 years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean, officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? About the strong ties between the main family and the government. Now that you mention it, Mikini did say something to that effect. She said that the Master of Kurain had great authority. Even without her official position, Misty Faye still wielded great influence. The police have been keeping an eye on her movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as a prosecutor. So my mother was cooperating with you? Don't ever forget. No matter how far away from you she was, she never stopped thinking about you. Sh she was always... That's why I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you want to know how strong her resolve to protect you was, look at her staff. Her staff? The one with the sword in it? The day the plan was to be carried out arrived soon enough. We met for the first time at Hazakura Temple. That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then, just how far she was willing to go. She was ready to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Fay if necessary. Yes. Even if it meant paying the ultimate price. Mother! At night, the night of the crime, there was just one way to stop Morgan's evil plan. 
You mean pearls, don't you? We had to make sure she didn't channel Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Well, um... If you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. We thought we could prevent her from playing her part in Morgan's plan, but she never showed up. She was worried and followed me to the inner temple. That was the thing we were most afraid of. And that's why Misty Fay had to do the channeling herself. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne into her own body. What? What do you mean? If she channeled the spirit first, then Pearls wouldn't be able to do it herself. As master of Kurai, Misty Fay's power was supreme. So that's how it went down. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne so that Pearl Fay wouldn't be able to. Huh? Oh! What? Is this true? My role in the plan was to make sure no one was going to hurt Maya Fey. That's why I hid myself at the inner temple. Just in case you needed to be saved from Dahlia Hawthorne. Kiddo. Anyway, that's all I'm going to admit to, Trite. Huh? There's no doubt about it. You're a great defense attorney. But you're going to have to do the rest yourself. The background leading up to this incident has been laid bare. There's just one question remaining, Miss Wright, Mr. Wright. Who killed the victim? There are only two possible suspects right now. Maya Fay, And I'm sad to say, you, Mr. Godot. Well, Trite, if you're the real deal, then finish this thing once and for all. Show us beyond a shadow of doubt that you can finish this on your own. No, Nick, please don't. Maya. I, I heard the whole thing from my sister in the medical office. That's why, that's why I have to protect Mr. Godot. I can't do it. I can't testify against him. After all, he's the man who put his life on the line to protect Mia. And me too. Maya, I know that. Nick. But even so, it doesn't absolve him of his crime. Please, Maya, testify. Miss Bay, your testimony, please. This is the final testimony. Don't bother trying to hide anything, because I'll know. I want to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. I'm sure you're right. I'm ready now, Nick. All right, young lady. Tell us about the moments before you lost consciousness. What exactly happened at the time of the murder? Before it happened, I think I saw some red lights. Three of them. I thought I'd ask for help, but just then I was splattered with blood. She wasn't dead, though, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dahlia collapsed and I lost consciousness. These red lights. I thought you said you, did remem d you don't remember seeing them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but then they disappeared all of a sudden. Huh. Things break, right? Even the best of theories. Who was it that stabbed Misty Fay? Looks like you still can't prove it. Maya is telling the truth this time. I know it. The rest is up to me. Well then, Mr. Wright. Proceed with your final cross-examination of the witness. We're, we're, we're nearing the end now. What do you mean by just at that moment? Do you mean the moment when the red lights went out? Yes, that's right. The scream that you heard then was it Dahlia Hawthorne. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a man's voice. What? 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 what, what? So then, that scream came from the killer. That's gotta be it. Hmm. 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 I think... 
Nahoya Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. And then the killer let out a scream of pain, huh? After that, the killer stole the blade back and delivered the final blow. I didn't see that she had more to say, whatever. Well, Mr. Bright, it seems to make sense to me. It sounds like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. There's a contradiction. <laughs> Sorry to say this, but that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. And that makes sense. After all, my deductions are almost certainly never correct. At least he's aware. Remember the testimony she, she just gave before the killer let out a scream. Maya said she had already been splattered by the victim's blood. In other words, the blade and the staff had already been plunged into the victim. Is, is that right? She couldn't have struck back with the sword that was already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer to let out a scream must have been something other than the staff. You're, if you're so sure about that, then don't keep us waiting any longer, Trite. There's only one thing I can think, think of. It could have been used as a weapon here. If Dahlia Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff, what could she have used to strike back at the killer? Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. This dagger was found at the crime scene, stuck into a pine tree. Yes, the detective found that this morning and brought it to me. Dahlia Hawthorne stuck back, struck back at the killer with this. And she managed to wound him as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood on the dagger could have been from the victim. Have you forgotten that the blood has already been tested? Since we learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's blood. The killer must have a wound somewhere on his body. So you're saying the blood on this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. A DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond the shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Godot, it would prove that it's your blood. Nice theory, Trites. Order! Order in the court! Is this the end? Have I done it? Even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Huh. Let me ask you something, Trites. Let's just say that it turned out that I was, I was the killer. Do you really think I will be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found this morning by a detective and brought to me. There was already blood on it, correct? But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Y yes, well, what does that prove? Well, if I really were the killer, I could have washed the blade off and then planted another person's blood on it. L that's... can't be. In any case, there is one thing I can guarantee, Trites. That blood, it doesn't belong to me. Not a chance. What? In any event, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. All right then, witness. Continue your testimony. Wait a minute. What's the problem? Um, I... I know I probably shouldn't say this, but... There's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation. <laughs> Maya! This dagger! You said that it wounded the killer. That's right. But, 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 but if Mr. Godot had really been cut with a dagger, his clothes would be bloody or have a rip in them, right? Um, Maya, maybe we, maybe he just changed his clothes. That'll solve the con contradiction pretty easily. What are you talking about? It's not that simple at all. Remember, back to the day of the murder. Everyone was on the inner temples, that was on the inner temple side, got trapped there. Uh, th th that's right. And once the bridge was fixed, then the police headed for the inner temple. Mr. Godot was already there waiting for them. He never had a chance to change his clothes. Order. Order in the court. What the witness says it. Well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. But, 
But no one could have predicted the lightning strike that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone have brought a change of clothes? Uh -huh. Did the judge take Did the judge take smart pills during the last recess? Well then, maybe the killer took off his clothes before he committed the murder. That way he wouldn't get any blood on them. It's impossible, Trite. You know how cold it gets up there late at night. Eh. After a few minutes with no clothes on, you'll be frozen solid. Okay, maybe. <laughs> so that's all you got. I knew you weren't tough enough to finish this. Right now, if Mia Faye were here. If Mia Faye were here. She would have closed the book on this case already. If Mia Faye were here. So come on, Trite. Can you do it or not? How about it, Mr. Wright? You've accused Mr. Godot of being the killer. But can you prove it? Have you got even one piece of evidence? The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is, I have to prove it. That's the only choice I have. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. I can prove it. I'm going to bring your magnificent vengeance to fruition, just as you want it. Huh. That's good. A fighter till the bitter end, right? Since there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point. Why don't we go for the unlimited penalty? Okay. Sweet. Are you trying to pressure me, Mr. Godot? Because it doesn't matter to me. I've got the one piece of evidence I need. G give me a break. You've got nothing, Trite. So what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I've got to think outside the box and approach this from a different angle. All right, then. Mr. Wright, let's hear what you've got. There's one thing I've demonstrated in the previous cross-examination. The killer was wounded. That was proven by the blood on the dagger. B but... We decided it was impossible for him to have hidden such a wound. If he had been cut by a dagger, there should have been a blood stain on this on his clothing. There's one place. One place the killer could have hidden his wound. Oh, what did you say? Hidden? This is it. Our last stand. I need to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there were no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hid the wound. It's the end of the line. The final stop, Trite. Let's hear what you've got. Where is this location where you say the killer hid his wound? Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know is that you'll never be half the lawyer she was. Isn't that right, Trite? What was that just now? Mia? It, it can't be. You're living on. Through him? Even as we speak, you're still hiding in the wound. It's beneath your mask. During the fight, the red lights given off by the killer suddenly disappeared. I would be terrified of a butt naked Godot. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right, your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Godot, would you mind removing your mask? If you have a dagger wound under there somewhere. Then I'd say this whole case is solved. Just now, I saw her spirit in you. I never liked you. Six years ago, you helped the woman who put me to sleep by hiding her bottle of poison. To be fair, he did not fucking know. How was he supposed to know? And then, 
while I was sleeping. You let Mia die. But you didn't care. You just kept living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. What the fuck was he supposed to do? She was already dead. He fucking checked her body and she was dead. He even had the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. He blames Phoenix for everything. Sure does. I could never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Godot. But I was wrong about you. I knew it from the very beginning. The truth is... The only person I could never find in find it in my heart to forgive was me. Y you yourself? <laughs> my pants were wrinkled this morning, Phoenix. <laughs> I was the one that failed to protect Mia. Me and no one else. I tried to avert my eyes from the truth, to escape from my harshness, from the har harshness of reality. He finally realizes it. I just couldn't face Mia's death head on, so I ran. I hid behind a mask. I threw away my true name. I couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But you saved Maya! Yeah, that was my plan. Up until just now, anyway. What do you mean? Are you listening, Maya? If I had really wanted to save you, then there's one person that I should have gone and talked to right away. Who would that be? Are you talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother. But I closed my eyes to the most important men involved. Do you know why? The real reason? No, why? I suppose. I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I was just trying to salvage what's left of my own broken soul. I was trying to make up for the fact that I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. That's why I let you walk right into a situation that I knew was dangerous. Forgive me. Y you're wrong! You put your life on the line to save Maya! Was it really for Maya's sake? Even if- even I'm not really sure. What do you mean by that? At night, in the darkness of the garden, when I saw her silhouettes. Part of me must have known the truth. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay, or even that little girl. But I still picked up the blade. It was like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. Was I really motivated by the pure desire to protect Maya Fay? Or was it something else? Was it my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier? Could it have been simply a desire for revenge? And now, I don't know anything anymore. I did learn something today, however. I finally realized that I was the arrogant one. I was just chasing an illusion. A fantasy. The stupid fantasy of defeating you in the courtroom. You were the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from Mia's death. Instead, you picked up where she left off. As a true defender of the people. In that one moment, I understood everything. Mr. Godot. <laughs> it's nice to see that people make some real progress in court therapy. <laughs> And alright. I think you already know this, but if you don't, my name is Diego Armando. Mr. Armando, I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. Hmm. Thanks. It, your wound! It's bleeding! Huh. Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. Well, it does. It just doesn't on red. On white, I mean. Red on red. Yeah, it doesn't exist then. Though, actually, to be fair, if you just see red, technically red doesn't exist because you don't know what is actually red and what isn't, like, another color. 
So, I guess it makes sense. These must be my tears. And tears? Ever since I woke up from my coma. I think I've been waiting for this very moment. <laughs> Mr. Armando. You do well to remember this, Maya. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. <laughs> this time, it really is all over, isn't it? Defendant. Yes, Your Honor. Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, tampering with the body of the and the crime scene is a serious offense in itself. I understand, Your Honor. Miss Sir Armando explained that to me very carefully. I knew the risk and I willingly cooperated anyway. Very well. Before I hand down my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, there is one thing. I'd like to say something to Mr. Wright. I want to... I want to apologize to you. Apologize? To me? For what? For the case five years ago. Of course. I just remembered. Weren't you poisoned by your own lover? Not exactly, but yeah, something like that. Even now, five years later, I can hardly believe it. She was going to do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all that surprising. The two of you... You hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. Huh? We only met... Twice? The first time you met was on that fateful day. The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria of this very courthouse. The next time you met her was... Eight months later. You met her again on the day that she stole your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. N no way! It, it just... It can't be true! I mean, during our whole relationship, we were... For those eight months, the woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne wasn't actually my sister. Huh? It wasn't Dahlia? I hope one day you can forgive me. Beanie? You... You, you mean... That's right. I lied to you. For eight months. R but why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you the bottle that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she, as she possibly could. Because of the police investigation and their surveillance, she couldn't move about freely. So that's why you... My sister... From the beginning, she was prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst? She thought that you might have somehow discover the truth. That's why she was always ready to deal with you at a moment's notice. You mean she was ready to kill me, don't you? She already had so much to answer for. I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. And that's why you came to me. You came to get the bottle pendant back from me in her, in her place. But I couldn't get you to give it back. I failed at something even as simple as that. Eight months passed, and I still couldn't get it back from you. Finally, my sister couldn't wait any longer. She didn't consult me about her plans for you that day. It was the first time that that ha It was the first time that had ever happened. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until that day, you two were partners in crime, and she would confer with you. I think she must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you. If I had found out she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her. Even if it meant her life. Or mine. Iris. After spending those eight months by your side, my feelings towards you, they changed. I have something to say to you, too. Y yes You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believed in you.
How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years? Even I don't know. I'll tell you though. Right now. This is this one here. It's the greatest cup I think I ever had. Do you think so? Phoenix writes. Yeah. I think you're right. Oh, he called him Phoenix right, not trite. Oh my god. The purpose of this trial was to rule on the murder of the victim. At least a name. At some point, I expect it. I expect you will be tried for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Very well. On the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant not guilty. Yeah. Oh, damn, Edgeworth wins. Court is now adjourned. Oh my God. Oh, and then we have the credits. Mm. So I guess it's all over. The way everything ended. Was justice, justice really served? The man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison by my own hand. Of course justice was served. M Mia! I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. B but I couldn't save Mr. Armando. The man who cared so deeply for you. You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him in the only way possible. You mean, with that verdict. I think one day you'll understand too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. You were as good out there today as any defense attorney could ever hope to be. There's nothing more you can learn from me. M Mia! You've accomplished something I wasn't able to. I owe you a great deal. Thank you. Mia. I'm sure we'll meet again. Someday, Phoenix. I've handled lots of cases and seen a lot of things. And along this journey, I found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? I suppose today's case produced one possible answer. Nick! Maya! I guess it's just like my sis said. Mia? What did she say? That night when I channeled Mia to get her, her advice on what to do, this is what she wrote back in my notebook. Don't worry, Phoenix will save everyone in the end. But... Come on, cut it out with that gloomy face. Can't you see? Me, sis, and I'm sure Iris too. We owe you for everything you've done for us, Nick. Maya. How... How can you be so bright and chipper after all that's happened? You were brutally attacked. You even saw your mother murdered. Ouch! Francisca! Still as softy as always, Phoenix writes. Excellent work, right? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth? When did you get back? Oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edgeworth and Francisca have actually been helping me. Helping you? These two hadn't been there on the first day of the trial. The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. How? But... <coughs> I'm fine. But where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into a river and caught a nasty cold which forced him to sleep all day. Yes, he laid in bed, shivering from his fever, with Iris's hood pulled over his head. Oh, ouch. Talk about embarrassing, Nick. You definitely need more training. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. And you too, um, Francisca. Who this? I don't suppose. Ah, <laughs> I forgot about him. <laughs> There's room for me in this group hug, is there? I was like, gumshoe? Nah, he's not gumshoe. Pearls? No. <laughs> You also thought gumshoe? <laughs> uh. There's room for me in this group hug, is there? Oh, Larry! What's with the uh, longer than usual face? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of any use to anyone, not even once! I try to repress Larry as much as possible, same though. That's not true, right, Nick? What? You're asking me? 
Well, Nick, this is true. I've got a place in this world, right? Huh? Oh, um, yeah, of course. I knew it. Everyone would be better off if I were gone for good. N no, no, no. Um, I... Well, yeah, those portraits you painted. They were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? What? M me? Why are you making that face? Huh, Angie? Oh, well, um, yes, indeed. I certainly can't say that they lack resemblance. You really mean it? What about you, Francie? Did I draw you well, too? Ah, my beauty can't possibly be captured by a mere crayon. Mm -mm. Nevertheless, I recognize the effort you put into it, and that's worth something. So then you'll do it, like you promised? You're going to model for my next picture book, Francis Weepity Weep Trip? Don't get carried away. I love Francisco. Well, how about that? I guess painting portraits is the only thing I'm good at. The painting of Pearl was pretty darn good too, if you ask me. Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls? Where could she have gone? Normally she would have made a beeline for Maya. Oh, I'll go look for her. Be right back. Hey, Pearly! Right. You seem to be uncharacteristically puzzled. I suspect you are wondering how Maya can be so cheerful despite all that has happened. I yeah. To be honest, I can't understand it either. Francisca. That's right. She lost her father fairly recently as well. I think I understand how she feels. Maya is a much wiser person than she appears, and I think she realizes something. Now is exactly the time when she needs to be as strong as she can. What do you mean by now is exactly the time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded in this, by this incident. In fact, there was someone that was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for that person that Maya is trying her best not, not to cry. Someone who was hurt more deeply than Maya. Edgeworth, I think I'm starting to understand too. Ow! Then tell me, Phoenix Wright, who is Maya Faye being strong for? Poor Faye. Poor kid, after all. The reason that she worked so hard to follow the instructions was because she loved and believed in her mother, Morgan. It was for the good of the Fae clan. I'm sure she believed in every last word. She thought she wasn't doing it for Maya. That's why she was so happy. It shows how truly devoted she is to Maya. But it's a cruel irony that it was her ex exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Faye's mother was killed and Maya herself was put into the deepest peril imaginable. And that's exactly why Maya is putting on a brave face. She's doing it for Pearl's sake. Until she can see her smile again. Oh, hey, so this is where you all were. Well, looks like we've got quite a bunch of here. Ow! What was that for, sir? Sorry about that, Scruffy. My whip just seems to have a mind of its own. What's up, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you know, this and that. Anyway, congrats on your win. Let's go out tonight, pal. Dinner's on me. My salary's just sorta kinda gone down by a teeny weeny bit, but it's alright. I made reservations at a first class French restaurant tonight. <laughs> Pretty good work, Scruffy. That whip was your reward. Ma'am? <laughs> um, Detective Gumshoe? You said a first class French restaurant. You don't mean. Eh bien! Where else? I knew it. We're doomed. Come on, let's go, everyone. Can't keep Maggie waiting, pal. Hey! Oh no, hey, you, crybaby, you're invited too. Oh. Forget about me. Pearl and I will be at the loser shack eating pet potatoes. You know, Maya is taking an awfully long time to get back. She's still out looking for pearls. Oh, Maya, what's wrong? Nick, what do I do? Pearly! I can't find her anywhere. Huh? I'll bet she just went back home. That's all. I thought so too, so I called the village. But no one has heard from her. This has never happened before. As I figured, she has been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that has befallen you, Maya. But, but none of this was her fault. What? 
What should I do? Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, what is it, pal? Could you guys go on ahead? But, but what about you? My and I will. We'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick! Worry about us, Detective Gumshoe. We may be a little late, but we'll definitely be there. We have a lot of celebrating to, to do tonight, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, but you're the- Ugh. Very well, Phoenix Wright. We'll go on ahead. Won't keep us waiting, right? We won't. But- But where should we look? Where could Pearly have gone? Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think of that Pearls might have gone to. Sakura Temple. For Pearls, I bet this is a very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. What's this? You're all back again so soon? Sister Bikini? I thought we'd be eating mashed potatoes alone tonight. So, she's here. Pearly is here. She is in the training hall. Why don't you hurry along and go see her? Okay. Come sure is not complaining about the way- <laughs> Pearly's not here. Ah. Maya. The hanging scroll. Huh? Someone cleaned it off. Where the hell did they get it? I thought it was- I thought I had it. <laughs> Whatever. It's gotta be pearls. <laughs> Mystic Maya! Pearly! I- Why did you just leave like that? Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Yeah, the judge commented on smell. I feel like that may have just been like as like a, a joke in the game. Like it's not actually meant to be taken seriously. I swore, I swore that I would never trouble the two of you ever again. Because it's all my fault that Mystic Maya's mother. That's why you came here. It's the least I could do to pray for your happiness. You don't have to do that, Pearly. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Of course, I'm sad that my mother is gone, but how do I say this? I am still happy. You don't have to lie just to make me feel better. No, really. It's true. The only reason I'm still here it, at all is thanks to everyone who was there for me. <gasps> my sis, my mother, Mr. Armando, Nick, and you. If even one of you weren't here, I'm sure I wouldn't still be alive right now. That's why. I have to be strong. For all the people that were there for me when I needed them. That's all I can really do. Mystic Maya! I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of Mystic Misty. Sister Bikini! Your mother, Mystic Misty, was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you that what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Kurain... I don't have the right to face my daughter. But still, Maya is always in my thoughts. It's true. She'll always be with me until the day I die. Your spirit was with her, and that's why your mother was so strong. Even at the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me until the day I die, huh? There's a rule or something all masters are to follow, isn't there? You never take the charm off until the day you die. That's, that's the master's talisman. The thing that Misty kept by her heart and would never take off. It wasn't the container that was important. Rather, it was the contents. Th th that's... A photo? Huh? Mother... It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect their own lives. But what makes us human is that we fight for others. But who do you fight for? How hard must you fight? That's the true measure of what human life is worth. We defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly challenged by that question. Cute. Look, they broke it too. Even when the battle is over, 
and the bonds that connect us are severed. We always return, time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearls, Mr. Armando, and Maya's mother too. I learned that from I learned that from all of them. Well, shall we get going? Everyone is waiting. This is a day to remember, a day when a lot of things were finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate what we've overcome today. But, but, I, I still can't. Oh, go on, sweetie. You can come back for training anytime. Okay. All right, I'm going to make a brand new start too. Sister Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. I know, and I won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare reservations for three when you come back. <laughs> Alright, we're going to have a great feast today, Pearly. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya. I, I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. Um, you know, there's one thing I don't get and probably don't want to, but... What is it, Nick? Reservations for training is fine and all, but why for three? Come on, what do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time you can train al right alongside us. Huh? I'll be waiting for you. Sister Bikini will take special care of you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It'll be great, Nick. We're going to do the special course, naturally. Huh? 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 That's a great idea. After all, Mr. Nick, you'd do anything for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you? Even walk on hot coals, right? We'll have a nice big meal right before we come next time, right, Nick? You know, I was wondering if I can say just one little thing. Sure, of course you can. Oh, I love this part. I can't wait to hear it. I'm getting goosebumps too. Well then, here goes nothing. I never say that sentence again, Sister Bikini. <laughs> oh my god. I'll really have to work extra hard now. Master of Kurai and I'm the officer, office manager of Raiden Co. Law Offices. And I have to be a good big sister to Pearly and Nick too. Well, as long as I'm not locked up or captured or something like that. So it's true! Mr. Nick really is Mystic Maya's knight in shining armor! He went through with the special course all the way to the end! Actually, I heard there's a legendary extra special ultra course here too. I think I'll surprise the two of them by making them a secret reservation. Pearls, please, no. <laughs> Maggie bought me a brand new coat as a present, pal. I feel 10 years younger. I'll never take it off. Yes, but somehow you just don't seem the same. I guess a dirty, shabby old overcoat is more... Just more detective-like, sir. Don't worry about it. In the name of love, a man will soil himself silly. Mr. Wright, I am once again in your debt. Thanks to you, the treasures of Kurang exhibit was a great success. I even got to see Miss Von Karma, who I hadn't seen for almost a year. She taught me how to use a whip and said that I must show you and what I've learned. <laughs> Ma'am? <laughs> hey, remember when they just didn't make her a lesbian in the anime? Desi and I started a company called Mask the Mask Consulting. Dedicated to stopping the evil plans of all the criminals in the city. Our motto is cut it out, please! Pretty cute, huh? Well, we also sell plans to the criminals as a kind of side business. I wonder if that's okay. Sometimes I think maybe we're the worst criminals. Yeah, that's like such fucking bullshit. I wanted to show my appreciation to Mr. Wright for exterminating Don Ty Tigre, so I lent him $500,000 and a tea set. A special thick tea, one I mixed with my own two hands. I bet he's drinking it now. Win through compromise. I 
I'm just old and in the way. A wrinkly, grumpy clown, clown knows the ways of flesh. At least that's what I thought. But my grandkids had a birthday party for me the other day. Talk about embarrassing. S 69 years old and I cried like a baby with a dirty diaper. As usual, we have an abundance of work to do. We've hired a new programmer to replace Glen Elg. I do hope every everyone will get along. His name is Adamada. Soon as I heard his name, I knew our brain circuits would align perfectly. No, let's make them sisters. That was so fucking weird. My, my, my. More reporters. Since the murder... We've made so much money, I hardly know what to do. I think the magazines like like us because I provide such a nice visual. Especially in spring. I can hardly wait for Iris to come back. <laughs> You've turned into such a respectable man, Beanie. It was so sweet of you and everyone else to come and visit me here the other day. Of course I was happy that you constantly had your eyes on me, but... I felt kind of bad when the little one slapped you so hard you got a nosebleed. <laughs> You're like jealous on Edgeworth's behalf. <laughs> What's this? I'm back from a long and tiring vacation and no one's here to greet me. I guess while I was gone, my little whippers never budded quick, and now I've got no one. What kind of lonely, crazy security room is this supposed to be anyway? What kind? What that with all the flashing lights and switches? I feel like some sort of space alien. Now that I'm going, what am I going to? Okay, whatever. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Out. <laughs> there it is. The trilogy is over. And some of these characters you won't see for a long, long time. Oh, wait, I'm dumb. Finally found something to do. Princess Whippity Whip Trip is gonna turn the artwork. Okay, something else. I can't. Self centered, lazy, antisocial. I'm an artist. A really good portrait artist. I'm not a loser after all. Good for you, Larry. Sorry. <laughs> nice. It's it's easier to say the Japanese one faster because it's it's better than That's it. Because it's not like it's 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 the Japanese onomatopoeia, so it just doesn't make sense in English, which is why they changed it. That's it. I want to say no more Ace Attorney, but that that's a lie. <laughs> There will be way more Ace Attorney. We still have... How many games? 
We have a lot of games to go, like we're not nearly finished. We have three more in the main series, but we're not gonna do those quite yet. We have two more before that. Yeah, that too, but I want to save that for the last. Though technically, in like uh, the timeline, it the Apollo, no, the Apollo, I say, the uh, Professor Layton one actually comes after the trilogy. But because we are gonna miss some of these characters so much in the coming games. I want to save that for last, also because I haven't played that one yet. And uh, playing it for the first time on stream sounds really fun. So I want to like work up to that. So yeah, I'm uh, not sure exactly when I'm gonna start playing investigations. I'm not gonna start today, that's for sure. It's already 12. Spent six hours. I am so glad I cut this episode in two. It would have been way too long otherwise. But I was right, right? It was like nine hours. It would have been like a day stream. Yeah, I would have been sitting here for the entire day. Also, the fact that I'm using a cheat. Cheat, cheat. I was against it at first, but now I'm not actually that against it. And it really helps too. I remember I really struggled with getting into investigations at first. That was just because it was like really new. It was like new characters that I hadn't seen before and just... Okay. But like, the thing that you spend like the most time with is to like talk to everyone. And in trials, when you have to press like everything to like find something that you can like pinpoint, if you can't pinpoint it from the get-go. God, you spend so much time. Like, when I had to like, uh, press everything. And I literally had to do it to like proceed. Oh god, that was awful. I'm not sure if I'm gonna... I might do this... Not tomorrow. I need a tiny break. <laughs> so... Monday, maybe? And I don't know, like, how long these are. Hold on, wait, let me... Take a look. Well... Hmm, I don't remember. We sped through that trilogy so fucking fast. It was like less than a week per game. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so tired now. So, wait. Yeah, for some reason. I I, I thought I, I noticed that, like, last time. But, um... So, you know, like, the 3DS games, like, Dual Destinies and The Spirit of Justice. For whatever reason, they're rated mature. <laughs> like, ages 15 and up. <laughs> like, the lowest here is 12 plus. Which is, like, 15 up, 16 plus. Or mature. What? Yeah, I was like, uh, what? It's not really that bad. It's it's not really that much different. Wait, what about the first one? No, the first one is teen. Age is 7 plus. 12 and up. It depends on, like, the rating system, of course, but, like, yeah. Justice for all, I assume it's the same. That's all teen. And trials and tribulations. 
Also, ages 12 and up in teen. They don't say the F word. They do say piss, though, in one of them. <laughs> so, Apollo Justice. Also teen. No, all ages. Parental guidance. Ages 12 plus. Interesting. No, wait, it's, it's only... It's only dual destinies that's 16 up. Well, actually, Spirit of Justice also 16 up, but... But, like, that one's not as high as the one that comes before it. Dual Destinies is the one... <laughs> Everyone is just like, this is mature. This is ages 15 and up, 16 and up, okay, 12, 12 up. That's, that's like, the lowest they'll go. And then Spirit of Justice, then you have, like, ages 12 and up, and then teen, ages 16 plus. But it's not, like, mature. <laughs> I don't know what... What happened? They don't say the F word. I don't know why it has that rating. Really? A ragdoll physics or death in a game? Hmm, interesting. What about the Layton crossover? That one is also like ages 12 and up, teen, 12 plus. Digact and Saibon also 12 up. Digact and Saibon 2. Doesn't exist apparently. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Though I am excited when we get to the 3DS games because you're gonna be like, oh, what the fuck? I know I was because I was just kind of blown away by like the. How am I even gonna say this? Like, not the detail, but like the budget, maybe. I don't know. But I don't. I don't want to say like anything. My mouth is. My lips are sealed. Needs to be at least 16 in order to survive the sass. Actually, that may be why. I just thought of something. It's not really that much of a spoiler, but it's like there's something that just like it's cool once you like find out about it. Also, um, I can say that there will be no Phoenix Wright in the Investigations games, unfortunately. I mean, there are like, you can kind of see him sometimes in the background. Which is... Yeah, I know. That's okay though. Edgeworth will be talking about him from time to time. <laughs> because how couldn't he? <laughs> no, I mean like when they're like out solving cases you can like sometimes walk to like certain areas and then you can like see <coughs> phoenix in the background you just like that stuff like that i remember i cried the last time because it's only once in each game by the way It's okay, he's still there in spirit.
Oh yeah, they're they're great. Like I said, I just had like a, a hard time like getting into it at first because it's just so different. And there are like new characters that you like have no idea about. Of course, there are like some characters that will be returning. I won't, won't say which ones, but I will say that some of the characters will be returning. So, yeah. I'm also interested to see like how long I will spend on each case. I guess I'll just have to find out. My lips are sealed, my lips are sealed. I remember the second game felt like it lasted forever. No, it technically it didn't, but it was like all the all the cases, all the episodes just Pretty much like was just a continuation of the same story. Anyways, I'm rambling. Oh my god, I am so excited though. So Monday, huh? Maybe anyways. Who knows, maybe I'll fucking cave in tomorrow. Just like, okay, I'll start, let's start. <laughs> I don't know, it depends. Yeah, rest is important. <laughs> yeah, true. I also really gotta take care of myself. Considering it's something I really struggle with at the moment. It'd be like that sometimes, I guess. Oh, by the way, uh, just because I want to show off a bit, hold on. I haven't really like decided on what to actually do about the layout quite yet. What did I just do? That apparently. But. If we go here, I have already set up here, and uh, if I go, uh, yeah, it's this one. So this is what it's gonna look like, I guess. Though I'm not really sure about like the background and stuff yet. I want to do, do like something else. But I'm not really sure what. Ooh. Spoilers? Not really any spoilers here, it's just like the star screen. Ah. Stream spoilers? What do you mean? Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> ah, yes, but for how the stream could be laid out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's literally just like the 
the courtroom background, but I, I don't know. I want to do something else. I guess I can always change it, so it's like not really that big of a deal. Images on uh, maybe I already have it here. Actually, have it like downloaded to my computer because I've, I've been on what's it called? one I guess I have like fine. this but like in 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 Edgeworth form I guess and I wanted to use that maybe though I don't really know I'll figure it out So I gotta fix the the chat a bit. It just seems a bit strange. I can make it like more like the one that I have here. Like Yeah, I'm sure it will turn out great too. Just <sighs> So much. Also, um just a warning, since it's uh, it's, a, it's 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 not it's not a ROM. Nintendo is not a ROM or anything. It's <laughs> the sound will probably be a bit fucked up at times, but you know we will we will survive. Also, I can't decide like 100% not a ROM. <laughs> We do not condone condone rounds in this house, therefore we would never use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh -uh. <sighs> well, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I should go to sleep too. Mm hmm. No, knowing me, I'm probably gonna continue reading more. <laughs> Not in Mitsutoshi. <laughs> like the depraved human being I am. Oh my god. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna start in the investigation, the first investigations game. 
on Monday. At whatever fucking time I feel like. Though not like too late. I usually start these like between like 4.30 and 6. Usually, of course, there are some some exceptions, I guess. Okay, well. <laughs> uh, well, good night. And, uh, yeah, maybe we can watch some more anime tomorrow or something. I don't know. This is like. I'm not busy streaming or anything, like... Let me know if you want it. <laughs> yes. I would love to. Hell yeah! Okay, cool. Well, see you tomorrow then. Bye.